tale Well there's a place I've come to know well Led by a man A man named Sty He's full of stories He is quite a guy Sit around the campfire And hear him tell his tale Some may be able To relate to him quite well We're all just people Looking for a place to go Well, Sty has made one And it is quite a show Come meet Sty If you're feeling lonely, come and make a friend. If you need a story, on Star you can depend. His voice is soothing like a lullaby. Sometimes he brings a tear to my eye. Sit around the campfire and hear him tell his tale. Hi, folks. Hey, 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 happy Sunday. I hope you're having a good Sunday. I'm having a good Sunday, so you should have a good Sunday. Yeah. I'm going to shout these people that came out here in the chat. Kathy Gahan, she's always first, you know. Yeah. She says she's hanging out laundry. Love fresh off the line, and I'll be back. Oh, I tell you what, growing up as a kid, there's nothing like the smell of the clothes when they come off of a clothesline out in the yard. Oh, they smelled so good. Even as a boy, my, my mother would say, would you do me a favor and go get the clothes off the line? Well, yeah, you're damn right. I'll go out there and get the clothes off the line. I love that smell. I love that smell. But my main job was my mother come to the conclusion she can go out there, just pull a clothespin, stick it back on the line, throw that in the basket, throw that in the basket. When she's done, all these clothespins are out there on the line. Well, we didn't leave them out because the dang squirrels would chew them up. They'd climb that clothesline, they'd chew on her clothespins. So she wanted those collected all after she does laundry. Well, that was my chore. I went out there with a ice cream pail and get all the clothespins for her every day she was doing laundry every day but yes you're right there ain't nothing like that fresh smell of that fresh laundry there's alexander with old country homesteading great to see you, alexander beastly ironworks it is awesome oh it's so good to see you my friend we don't get to see each other that often so it's always great to see him Metal music, of course. He jumps in with food right away. Today's menu will be simple. Buttery mashed potatoes on slices of bread. Really? That sounds like you're Irish in the Victorian days. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go there. The, uh, Beastly Ironworks is saying, hey, Uncle Stite, if you're up to something new, I'll play soft blues while you tell your Sunday story. <laughs> if you want to just play a little bit for us, I'd appreciate that. I don't do the Sunday sty stories anymore. It's just we all hang out here at the sty shack and catch up with each other and see what's look, you know, what's going on, what's going on. Yeah. But boy, I'd love to hear you play some soft blues. <laughs> I'd love, you know, let's We'll come back to that. There's Marine Mom. Hey, all beautiful people. Much love. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody say hello back to Marine Mom. 
Marie Mountain says, beard looking really good. Got rid of all that garbage underneath and on the sides. It's just a goatee and mustache now. And it's growing in slowly but surely. Yeah. Lori, great to see you. Lori saying, hello, Stye. Don't know how long I'll be staying around, but I'm here for now. Just the fact you stopped in, Lori, that's great. That is so good. Yes, thank you for being here. There's Blake Hurst yelling, hey, Stye. Um, Kathy Kahan says, got most hung, got most of her laundry out hung. Yeah. There's Justin Anderson. Absolutely. It ain't a Sunday without Justin being here. Yeah. Everybody's saying hi to each other. I love seeing it. That's what this is about. That's what Sundays are about. The um, metal music. I remember wooden clothespins of the heydays. They lasted 50 years. No kidding. You know, you had those with the spring on them. You know, they just bite down on the clothes on the line. And then you had those that just had the two legs on them and you squeeze it over. You put your clothes over the line and you squeeze it over the clothes in the line. Well, those that just had the two legs on them, oh my God, they paint them up as dolls and all kinds of stuff. And people were stealing those in the 1970s and 80s. People were actually going in people's yards and stealing those old-fashioned, really old-fashioned clothespins. My mother, that's why she, she always said, bring them in the house, bring them in the house, because she didn't want to lose a single clothespin. Yeah. Um, Lori's saying there's six of us right now with COVID, two separate houses away. We all got it. Holy smokes. I haven't heard of anybody. That's the first I've heard, actually, of anybody contracting COVID lately. Um, it's been months and months. Um, even at the clinics that I go to. Um, yeah. My cancer clinic said that. I asked them, I said, well... They're bumping up the whole COVID thing again. And they told me, be rest assured, we're not bringing back mask mandates in our clinics unless the federal government forces us. So I'll go with the clinic. I didn't wear a mask all through that first bout of COVID. I didn't. I didn't wear a mask. I didn't wear a mask all that summer of 2021. I was diagnosed with cancer spring of 22. Went the whole year without wearing a mask. <coughs> I haven't worn a mask in 2023 at all. Back in 2022, for a big part of that year, they mandated here, a state mandate, that all clinics, anything medical, you had to wear a mask to be in that facility. So I'd have to put it on to go in the facility, but because I've got terminal cancer, they said, it's your choice. Once you're in your exam room, take it off if you want. It's your choice. And so they were good about it. Um, the... Yeah. Whoops. Those clothespins, they don't last long. No. They just pop. <laughs> there you go. One of my favorite songs is That's My Church. I should play it. It'll demonetize the video but though <laughs> yeah. but it's one of my favorite songs and it's about 
cranking up the radio in your vehicle and just go, just go, just get away from everything and everybody. There's, there's church for you. But I see it as me. Just get out in the woods somewhere next to some running water or, or not my running water. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull. I got somebody in the basement. I'm tired of waiting to pull her up. You people are talking so much out in the chat today. Here she is. Hey, Gemma. Hey. Good hey. <clears throat> to see you, girl. You too. <clears throat> so, um, How's everybody uh, doing? I'm doing really good. They changed my whole routine. Well, not really. They What they did was... I still have the same chemo treatment. In fact, I got chemo tomorrow morning. And yeah. And but last time, 2 weeks ago. So I get my treatment every 2 weeks, but yeah. 2 2 weeks ago, my doctor said, "You know, your quality of life sucks. You got no energy." Um and the um Uh, hey, Justin, um, Marine Mom. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I did see Marine Mom on the COVID that, for one thing, and that's this came from one of my doctors, is that they've reclassified most of the flus, common flus, as COVID. So you're going to see a lot higher COVID numbers because they're diagnosing you as having COVID, but you actually just have the same common flu that was here before COVID. So, and which isn't surprising because COVID has always been with us. They said, in yes, fact, it's COVID part the, is it's part of the flu family. Yeah. They said COVID is the oldest known virus out there that that's the oldest known to yeah. have existed and it's the common cold it's the common cold but there's variants of that common cold that get worse yeah. and worse and worse and and those that's where our flus come from are all these variants of covid and if you look up yeah. all those flus most of them start out as covid and then they've got a designating number attached to yep. it. Yeah, so it's not COVID is nothing new. It's just it's just an old thing that's been well, and I believe them. It's been modified by people. Yeah. And it got it and it got and it got loose. It yep. got loose from them and we it's paid done the price. as a way to control population. It, it yeah. it's been that's been fat for a long time. It was done to control population because there's too many people and it was a way to slow down the growth of both the US, the UK and Europe. It was it was done to slow down the population. It's been admitted by the World Health Organization and the US and UK government have all now come together to It's it's yeah. funny. It's <laughs> funny, isn't it, Jim, how they'll fess up to that. They'll fess up to it. They'll say, Yeah, it was because of this and this. And then all of a sudden yep. they'll turn around and say, oh, you misunderstood what we said. We didn't really mean that. No, we and then they come back and they go, but then really we did. And then they'll go, oh, no, we didn't mean that. And back and forth, back and forth. Bullshit. I don't want to hear it. Yep. I don't want to hear it. Um, nope. All they've proven to us is even if they're they tell us the truth, we don't believe them. They're not to be the, trusted because they're all biased and have their own agenda. Yeah. And they don't care about people who are vulnerable, sorry to say it. They don't. They don't they don't care about people who are terminally ill or disabled or mentally disabled. They don't care because we are seen as the weaker than less less than class, even though we're not. And it's an excuse and them just go, Oh well, these people don't understand. They they won't get it and I'm like, We're not Dumb. Don't talk to us like we're idiots because we're right. not. You know, 
I had someone say to me, well, all these people that are against our teachers, they don't understand. Those teachers have been taught to be professionals. They're teachers. Yep. That doesn't, they weren't taught to be good people or bad people. They were taught to teach what you taught them. They yep. so so don't tell me every teacher out there <laughs> is there with good intent. Not every teacher is there with good intent. I don't give a shit what kind of education. I don't have to be it. They they even went so far as to say, so a parent is going to tell a teacher how they should teach their kids. They're not a teacher. They're just a parent. Oh, piss me off. Wait a minute. <laughs> I homeschooled my children, and when I decided to put them in the public system, my kids, all four of them, were one full year ahead of their age grade. And the yeah. public school said we're holding two of them back. They didn't hold the two youngest ones back, but they made the two older ones be held back. I said, why are you making them go to the same grade of their age when their actual education level is a year beyond that. And they said, because they should be with kids their own age. I said, it's only a year's difference. I said, my kids are gonna end up not learning a thing for a year. And sure yeah. enough, both of those kids, they come home from school and I'd ask them, how was school today? Boring as usual, we're just learning the same crap we already learned. You know, they're teaching us the same thing you taught us last year. Oh, you're bored with it, huh? I told the school they'd be bored with it. And, yeah, that it's, it was so ridiculous, so ridiculous. Um, yeah. Mr. Fulton. Hello, Uncle Sky. I got big news today. Our Hamilton County Special Olympics. Hi, Lori. We are called the Rocking Rookies. <laughs> A good name. <laughs> and we won both games. First place, ribbon. And now we are headed to state in two weeks. Well, congrats. Well, Marine Mom's yelling it out in the chat. Congratulations there, Fulton. Congratulations, Great. Mr. Fulton. Great, good for you, good for you. Keeps you active, keeps you active. I, Absolutely. you know, people with with um, disabilities, um, they need that, they need that more. They need people to organize things that get them out and let them be active yeah. and get the fresh air and, and have good gameplay together and yeah they need that they need it it's it's it's, 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 it's about inclusion <laughs> and right i'm very lucky that i've had especially recently i've got a really big opportunity coming up on the <clears throat> 15th of september and i never thought this opportunity would come for me at all and about a week ago i received an email completely out of the blue wasn't expecting it wasn't looking for it nothing and i happened to log into my emails and i just done a stream and, and i got a message after my stream saying Gemma, check your email and i'm like what do you mean check my email so i logged into my email just sort of maybe have a message or donation or whatever uh -huh. and um no my local member of parliament and his office contacted me and i've been requested summoned to be a keynote speaker at a disability meeting as the, one of the main speakers because they want someone with lived experience with disability that's what the uk classifies as hidden which is uh -huh. so i've been requested to be the head speaker on the table um, wow. on the 15th of september so i've got to write a script and all that fun stuff so that's going to be fun <laughs> sure sure sounds like it yeah, I'm kind of nervous though because they they messaged me through my YouTube channel comment section, so it's it was kind of weird. They're like, "Can you check your email?" I was like, "Yeah, I can check my email." And then I see like this three paragraph email, and I'm like, "What on earth is this?" 
I thought it was a joke to begin with. I was like, uh, ha ha, very funny. And then uh-huh. I had to confirm the email with someone who I know. And she's like, Gemma, that's not a joke. That's a legit email. And I was like, oops. I just I just accused the person of being a scammer in my chat. <clears throat> <laughs> so I had to write to write an email. I was really I, I was shocked. I thought it was a complete joke. And it turns out it wasn't. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, I'm quite excited about that. It's gonna be really there's me plus like I've been told a minimum of thirty other professionals that are going to be summoned to this meeting it's meant to be a big profile meeting with local media and all this stuff there so it's going to be getting uh-huh. filmed and which we go into my channel it will be getting uploaded i've re asked permission for my part of it to be recorded and uploaded they've said yeah it's all good so that's going to be uploaded hopefully on the 15th or 16th of september i'm, I'm waiting for them to send me the um the consent form and stuff, but yeah, it's going to be getting uploaded so you guys can watch it cool. after it's been done. So that's neat. And I've just got my voice back as well. I've been ill for like the last five days with a sickness spell. My voice disappeared, so I've literally just got my voice back like yesterday. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so I've been being really rotten, <laughs> which is why no content's been up on my channel apart from yesterday. And I released I suppose, a yeah. being sick vlog, which, yeah, which got put up yesterday. The um, yeah, you gotta watch your health, though. You gotta, yeah, gotta make sure you're staying fit. You know, that's why Gemma hasn't been around. Everyone's been wondering why Gemma's disappeared. It's because I spent five days on my couch, behind me, literally sleeping. I've done nothing apart from sleep and watch TV for five days. It's kind of sucked. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, Beastly Ironworks. Um, you want to play a little blues for us? I'll send you the link. Oh, you want cool. the link? Yeah. Um, That'd be cool. Let's see here. This will only take me a Yeah, Marie, Mum, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Like, you know, these people are the people that I've been trying to reach for like six, seven years. And finally, someone's actually taking an interest and actually wants me to be at a meeting. And, you know, it's a big opportunity. So hopefully I don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Now I'm gonna set I'm gonna put this link in the chat. So Beasley Iron Ironworks, keep your eyes open, grab that link, hit that link and come on up. But this is just for Beasley Ironworks, okay guys? And we'll leave that up there until he connects, and then I'll take it back down. But that that yeah awesome awesome i was i was fortunate <laughs> last weekend after my stream my stream last weekend i said at two at, at yeah. the two hour mark i gotta shut her down i got family coming blah 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 well it ended up being 10 of them showed up i got seating for six wow. and so 10 of them showed up. Now, I'm going to try to show you um, who these people were. Um, <coughs> there it is. Excuse me. <laughs> the- oh. That's my fam family. We're all given my daughters behind the camera. There's not, okay, I've got in the front row, that whole front row, the five girls out front, they're all granddaughters of mine. Wow. Up on the left, that's 
a grandson of mine, and next to him is my other grandson and his wife and their little baby, Atlas, who is my great-grandson. Great and then, of course, you can recognize the old fart in the middle. But, but oh, everybody, not old. Every, everybody was pretty concerned when they heard that that many of their group was showing up. Well, nine of my grandkids were there. Or wait a minute, not nine, seven. No? Yeah. Eight. Eight of my grandkids yeah. were there. <clears throat> She's, I've got 11 just with her family. So wow. there's three of them that were missing there. Um, yeah, so, so boy, did I have a tribe in my house. Holy God. I, I thought, imagine. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I can handle it, you know, and, and um, the being part of a big family, though, is a blessing in a way because I've I've always known how lucky I am being part of a big family. Like my on my dad's side, I have sixteen cousins on my dad's side, and then I have another fifteen on my mum's side. So I've known to always I've always been part of a big family. So I've never been used to having only a small number. I've always right. been used to being one of many kids. <laughs> running around. Mr. Fulton, I'm not pulling you up. I said that link is for Beastly Ironworks only right now. Yeah, that's we said it's for Beastly, yeah. I made it perfectly clear to everybody. That don't yep, show up did. in the basement don't show up in the basement unless I invited you. That's actually rude. You yeah, know. you made it perfectly clear, yep. Yeah. Uh, I don't go to people's channels and then they tell me this is the way it's going to be on the channel and then not follow what they want. Check this guy out. <laughs> MT Roads Runner, buddy. It is so good to see you. How's hey, it Beasley. going, Beasley? All right, brother. Playing a little blues today, you know, Sunday, drinking. Can't call it day drinking if you don't start in the morning. That's right. Where in the world is Sam? I don't know where Samantha's at. I don't know where she's at. I don't know. I did talk to her yesterday. It's, it's been quite a spell since we convinced her to do any singing on my channel. So I'd like to get my paws on her. For other reasons than singing, but, but singing wow. too. <laughs> That's incredible. You look really good though, Uncle Stai. Well, I'm holding my own. You know... If I go by what the doctors told me, I've got about 11 months left. And I'm going to try to beat that by another dozen, I think. Well, I hope the hell you do. Yeah, I, I, I keep fighting it, man. I can't handle the damn stairs anymore, so we're all like, boy, boy, help me get all set up downstairs. I've got um, not a true hospital bed. It's just an adjustable bed. You know, you raise your legs and you can sit the back up. It's all, it's all on a remote control. Hey, Kiwi! That has been a long time since we've seen Kiwi, too. Yeah, he's a good dude. Kiwi's been with me a long time. He's supported me for a long time. Yeah, Kiwi's been a long, 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 long time.
Hey, Woods. Hey, Woods. Hey, Woods, go now. <coughs> oh, my gosh, Kiwi. Yes, Everything's going to be okay, bud. Yeah. Is everything okay? Glad to hear that they removed it. Now, your prognosis is good, I hope. Everything is well. Yeah, I got in a little spat with a family member yesterday. And he went storming out of here all pissed off. Bent on it. He was giving me 101 reasons why I'm dying of cancer. I told him, guess what? You can shut the hell up because I don't fucking care right now. I said, it's a little too late to fucking worry about it. He told me I got to change my goddamn diet. He says, you're eating all this processed food. And I said, well, I told him, I said, then get your ass over here and fix it for me. I said, you try it with what I got down to 156 pounds. I said, if I stand in that kitchen more than 15 minutes, man, I better find somewhere to set my ass. I said, so I'm not going to be in there fixing raw vegetables, making sure everything is nutritious for something that ain't going to help me. It's too fucking late. Okay. I would have kept the diet my mom and pop me had me on when I was growing up as a little kid all my life. If I would have known any better. He doesn't realize either. There were big blocks in our life. I mean, we everything we ate was natural. Very little out of the can or out of the box. You know? Oh, that's great, Kiwi. Love hearing that. Love hearing that. See, I was telling Gemma, but I lost track. Right, I, I got... <laughs> Holy hell, show myself. Hold on. Oh. Oops. Yeah, he's got a call. He knocked he's himself off. Yeah, he's got a call. Um. Also, what, what people don't realize is it's not just about <clears throat> diet for people with cancer. It's a Cancer is often genetic. It's in the family genes. I've had a lot of people in my family who have had cancer. It's a genetic now, thing. It gets passed down. Now, I have a sister, had a sister. She's gone now. That she was riddled with cancer. It went through her whole started out in her pelvis and it went into her organs, her lungs, you know, and she would get hounded by people. What kind of diet did you eat? What? And you must have smoked a lot or you must have drank a lot. She never smoked or drank in her fucking life. I mean, as far as what she was her lifestyle and what she was eating and drinking and not smoking i mean her lifestyle was perfect that way but she was riddled with cancer now you tell me how she caught it you know because the organs her cancer was attacking you can take so many things to what might have triggered her cancer but once you've got that cancer, what caused it doesn't fucking matter anymore. Don't, don't tell me what probably caused my cancer. 
because it doesn't matter anymore. There's no fixing it. So, and don't give me this bullshit. I'll fix it for you. I had one individual that was insistent that they could cure my cancer. I said, you sound like a witch doctor or a medicine doctor in the old West. Drink this snake oil. It'll cure you. I said, fuck off. I don't want to hear it from you. I've got an awesome cancer team and they're taking good care of me and i'll tell you folks the way i was going i wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that cancer team they're keeping me on my feet as long as they possibly can and so i was saying earlier i get chemo every two weeks and when i get my chemo they give me this big dose of steroids right it's so yeah. that it's so that my body can, what it does is it helps my body tolerate the chemo. Yeah. Well, the doctor said your quality <clears throat> sucks. You're, you know, you're just, you're kind of moping around. You just, you yeah. have no energy at all. And he says, I realize you don't have the muscle mass or the strength to do much, but you don't even have the energy to want to. And I said, yeah, that's just life with the treatments, you know. And he goes, I can fix that. I can fix that. He says, so he puts me on the same steroid I get on day one when I get my chemo. I'm on that same steroid for four days in a row after that. Okay, so last week for four days after my treatment, I took those steroids. And I felt like I had no side symptoms, side effects at all last week. None this week. Just yesterday afternoon and evening is when I started feeling like I just don't have a lot of energy, you know. And this morning I got up and I could tell I'm moving slower. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the wind is out of my sails. And then I realized... The steroids wore off, okay? Yeah. So I take the steroids for the first week. I'm great all week, and I'm great all of the next week except the last day or two. Tomorrow I see them again, and I get my steroids again. If it gives me another two weeks like I had this last two weeks, bingo. It's dies one happy camper. That means Sty gets to take a take about a that's a 400 mile round trip down to see my daughter and all 11 of the grandkids. Oh, so that'd be cool. Take a road trip and spend two, three days down there. I'm going to stay in a motel down there. And, and then after that trip, two weeks later, if that trip goes well, which I think it will, then I'm going to make a trip down to Minneapolis, St. Paul, which is, um, that's five hours of driving both ways where I'm going, um, and visit my only, well, actually, she's the only living person other than me from my original family, my mom, pop, two sisters, okay. and my brother. She's she's the last one after me. And so I got to get down and see her. And I've got some things from my pop that we want to put in a local historical society down there. Okay. Hey, Nick Jones, great to see you. Um, Oh, wow. I haven't seen him in a long time. Hey, Nick. Yeah, Nick. Good old Nick. He was up here a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, thanks, Marine Mom. I am. I'm blessed with the team I've got. They're so damn caring. They're so, yeah. They really do give a shit. Um,
the yeah marine mom about the smoking thing it's like i told my youngest boy yesterday i can show him all kinds of people that smoked from their teenage years all the way up until they passed away and they were in their 80s and 90s when they passed away and they didn't pass away from cancer they had a heart attack but they smoked their whole lives i'm one of those i started smoking at 12 years old i was smoking a pack a day by the time i was 14. and i've been a minimum of a pack a day ever since now think about that i'm 66 years old so um for 54 years i've been smoking and I just got cancer last year. So I guess you can smoke for 53 years and not have to worry about it, right? Well, that's bullshit because everybody's different. Yeah. I've, known, I've known people that only smoked in a maximum, a full just one year out of their whole life and they're in their 70s and they get lung cancer. And they wanted to blame a year from 50, 60 years ago is the reason they got their cancer. I'm sorry, I'm not buying that bullshit. Everybody wants to look for the reason instead yeah. of just accepting the fact that, yeah, these bad things happen to us. Yep. Life. As fair. you know, my, my, my Aunt June died of cancer. She's been gone right. eight years next month. And, you know, it was very sudden with her. It started with a headache. It started with a cough. And we just thought she had a kind of sickness bug. Then she kept complaining of stomach pain. We were like, hold on a minute. And she said, like, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Didn't think nothing of it. And then when she actually went to the hospital in the end, she was coughing up blood. That's when they started finding it. And she, by then, she'd already had, they said that she had two or three tumors that were active. And then it just spread and spread. And, yeah, she did. She she bet it three times, and she got it a fourth time, and that's when she passed away. But it was it it grew back and grew back and grew back. Some people's bodies just can't handle it. Unfortunately, my auntie couldn't. It just ravaged her, and the end right. it was just really really quick. Right, right. She was only six when she died. So that was crazy. She died really. Got kicked out for nothing, bastards. Oh, heck, I've been kicked out of places for nothing. <laughs> I, hey, at least I thought it was. How you doing, brother? You doing all right? Yeah, I'm getting by. I'm getting by. I, you know, That's good. Good, it, good, good. Day at a time, you know, and I, just, I try to make the most out of every damn day. The, hey, Gemma, you're looking beautiful as always. Yeah, Gemma, she Thank Gemma is you, always Gemma. It's good to see you. Oh, it's excellent to see you too. Uh, although I don't really say too much in the in the shadows, you know, I'm always watching, always around, you know. All right. And uh, yeah, loving you guys. Yeah, I know there's guys like you who are, who are lurking. I know that Sty looks a lot of my streams, and yeah, I'll get a few com yeah. comments. Oh, emails later on, and, and people they're like, Gemma, we were watching you. I was like, Yeah, I know. I know there's people who don't be active in my stream, and they're like, Yeah, we were watching you. I was like, Yeah, why don't you come say hello to me? Sometimes it's nice to have a different name in the chat. Yeah. Hey, Kiwi, how's it going? Hey, sorry, how are you doing? Yo, hey, hey, hey. Uh, um. Well, if you want to hear my story, I'll tell it to you. If you don't, that doesn't bother me either, but it's a hell of a story to hear. So, Well, yeah, I'm interested. Okay. Are you ready for this whirlwind tour of my new life? Because <laughs> I'm talking a lot clearer. I'm not walking around in circles anymore. I think I had this tumor in my head for about eight years. My wife... She's sitting right beside me now, and she's still buzzing, and I'm buzzing, and she doesn't know what the hell's happened to the old Craig, but the new Craig looks a wee bit fucking iffy, if you know what I mean. Like, 
Uh-huh. But, ooh. but anyway, um, what happened was I, I was probably two weeks ago now, two weeks ago last Friday, um, I went for a trip down to pick up some water barrels that were going cheap for rainwater. And I did a big trip. I picked up the trailer, went another two hours drive, picked these things up, drove home, dumped them off, took the trailer back to Gore, came back, and I rested. And it was a big, big day. And then in the evening, I started spewing, and I kept on spewing and spewing and spewing and spewing and spewing. And then I went to bed, took a bucket with me, and that's the last I remember. The next time I woke up was when I was in hospital. And that oh was boy. six days later. Wow. Six days later. And from what I understand, what yeah, Shiv's told me, sweet. she said three days. I think it was Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then the Tuesday lunchtime, she came home because Rachel said that I wasn't fit looking too good and I was talking shit. So she bundled me in the car, took me to A&E in Gore. They put me into an induced coma. They set me up ready for a helicopter trip to Dunedin Hospital, and then I was in surgery for four hours. They figured out it was my pituitary glands. Um, it was bleeding, it was swollen, and they took 95% of my pituitary gland away uh, through my nose. There. And just before I woke up from surgery in um, intensive care, I vividly remember being in this huge, massive, big warehouse building and all these people were playing thrash metal and throwing pellets on fires and that. And I was like bloody Sonic the Hedgehog or a berserker and I was going, I was trying to get all the fires out and I I beat them all to the ground and I got the fire out and just before I went, a voice says, welcome back, Mr. Yarko. Oh, shit. It was the nurse. <laughs> it was intensive care nurse. And then 15 minutes after that, Shiv and Rachel walked in and with a big smile on their face. And I'd been gone for six days. I don't know where I've been, oh. but I, I've, I've got no more pain in my body. I can lift my shoulders, like my arms up around like this. I can do all this. And um, it, it, I feel a million dollars. 20 years, Wonderful. 30 years younger. Wonderful. Why that is crazy. Hang on a minute. I got, I, got, I got a phone call. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, isn't it, folks? I mean, love it. Love it. Hey, Vegas <laughs> stuff, Donna. Donna, great to see you. Um, Guani. Hey, Guani. All right. I'm back again. That was a phone call. Sorry. Things are happening. Hey, Kitty. I got to give Kitty a shout out. Hello, Morning. Kitty. Hi, Kitty. Yeah. His, so, has anyone heard of, his has anyone heard how, how, anyone heard how Ginger's getting on? I am so not up to date with folks right now. I'm um, right. If you're not up to date, I'm fucking well out of date, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I Sunday, oh, just, Sunday Sundays I, right it, it, now are my are my social media days, and yeah, the week yeah. my phone, I'll get every day 150, 200 messages. You know, something on Facebook, yeah. something new on YouTube, and all that. And the thing is, is if if I'm awake and if I've got an ounce of energy, I'm usually busy doing something. And so I end up just swiping and swiping and swiping and swiping because I don't have time. I just don't. And I've got to be (laughs) careful because if I get stuck on the social media, I'll spend hours on it. And then Mm -hmm. I'll realize my whole damn day is gone. And I don't have many days left. So, damn it. You know, I I yeah. love everybody out there, but I, you know, I have to enjoy what I can out of every single day. So, but, I'm not so trying, I, trying to ignore people. I just can't yeah. touch, 
Let's keep up. <laughs> well, Sly, um, I'm so full of fucking energy at the moment. It's unbelievable. And I've, I've been given this gift. So I'm going to share some of my stuff to you. <laughs> there you go. No, I, it's, you know what I mean? Like, I'm... I'm see you, sweetie. Have a good day at work. Um, it's just amazing. And I'm sorry to hear that you, you've got cancer, mate, because I've lost my grandfather, my grandmother, my two cousins, two aunties, and it's in the family as well. So like Jim has said, fucking, yes, eating processed food might not help your body, but all the fresh stuff that you eat counteracts that anyway. So, you know, but yeah. I, I, I get sick and tired of hearing all these people talking about global warming and all this bullshit. It's just money wow. making fucking crap. And oh, you got cancer for this and this and that. That's this that yeah. reason. You, you got cancer. You got cancer because you're fucking unlucky. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the same here, man. It's it's absolutely stupid. What? I'm so sick of people hearing about how they're eating plastic. I got it. I get it. I got it. Hey guys, check this guy out, man. I mean, Woods is great. <laughs> the my old man's dustman. He wears this one's hat. Oh, well, look at that handsome young man! Wow. <laughs> I'll drink to that all day long. Hey. <laughs> Woods is the man. Yeah, he's a little froze up there. I think, but, I think he's yeah. frozen. And not cut. It's he's okay. Frozen, frozen hey, up. hey, hey. As long as he stays like that, he's all good for the rest of the journey. <laughs> Unlike the rest of us, we're all burning well, he's, slowly. He's, he's, he's head's moving. I can, well, I can see him moving his head him. like this, but the rest of him... Is frozen, yeah. but his, his head's moving. But the rest of his body isn't. It's just his head's moving right. and going like that. But the rest of his body. Hey, sorry. Um, I'm sorry to be a pain in the ass, but I've got to go and get these two 10 meter poles off this trailer because I'm on a mission from God. If, as like the Blues Brothers said, um, shit's <sighs> happening around here now, and I haven't done anything around the farm for eight years because this bloody pituitary's had this tumor on it, and I've just been slowly going downhill. My wife said I was just about a week away from getting a divorce. So there we go. Oh, yeah. Now, so um, I've I got to shoot you, away, and I'll, I'll, I'll come. Like I'll come back. I tell you what, brother, you, you just be, pace yourself and work. I your know. Way, wait, work your way back up to that hundred and ten percent. There you are. All right, I see you now. Yep, yeah, I know. It's just, Can you guys everyone's see telling me to now? slow down, but I. I, well, I can't I, do anything anyway because there's nothing well, here to do anything with, if you know what I mean. Well, well, that's it. <laughs> Man, don't slow down. That's the worst thing you can do is slow down. Believe you me, I would, I'm I would, I would love to have you slowing down is the worst thing you can do. Just saying. I'm just He's, saying. Okay. You do what you can do. <laughs> that's tell it. Your, tell yeah. yourself that you're going to do what, well, you can, what you can do. Well, it's quite yeah. funny you should say that because I've been given a challenge to play the guitar, learn to play the guitar, and I can't play the guitar, so there you go. You know, what's sad is I bought a dulcimer and a hobro. A lot of people don't know what a hobro is. I don't have it. A dobro? A hobro, I think, is oh. a stick with two or three strings on it. A, a cigar a box guitar, isn't it? Well, uh it's... It's, you mean a dobro? Mr. Kiwi, you're welcome on no, my channel. No, 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 guys. But, okay, listen, listen up, and I'll give you a little lesson here on what a hobro is. A dobro. It's called a dobro. No, it is not. <laughs> Back again. No, it is not. This is a hobro. Oh. Oh. Okay. Never. All right. Yeah. 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 No, no. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, it's only got four yeah. strings on it, right? And you that's why the wide strap, you wear it over your around your neck. You yeah. can hang it at your waist or play it on your lap and you use that's a right. slide. You and use, you a, use slide. a slide. And that's right. You can strum or pick with it. And yeah. and it's 
all it is is it's what the Appalachians call a string stick yep. or a strum stick. And I bought Amanda, or Amanda, uh, Samantha Lee, I bought her a strum stick, okay? Nice. And now this has been willed to Samantha Lee, this beauty. Very along, nice. Along with my lap dulcimer, along with my mandolin. I can't play anymore. I can't, I can't chord at all. I can, I'm not going to because I broke a string a couple of weeks ago. Oh, no. I haven't replaced oh, no. it. But, but I can still play this with the slide, but I can play for about 15 minutes and then just be, and yeah, but But I'm all three of those instruments are going to um, are going to Samantha Lee. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I got the hobro and the mandolin ready to pack. I got a big guitar box or an acoustic that that those two instruments will fit in for shipping. That's I, crazy. I just have to personalize each instrument a little bit and then I pack them and they're off to her. And then this fella gets shipped separately on his own. But, um, man, I really honestly, Uncle Stai, I got to tell you, really honestly, I hate, I hate to hear about your demise, man, and your wills and your this and your that. I hate to hear about it. I really do. Like, hey. No. When my when, when my dad was alive, that guy, he was my superhero. He was my superman. And I learned everything from him, from drywall to electrical to building a house to whatever, to working on vehicles, to custom painting vehicles, um, whatever. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I look at you, and you kind of really honestly remind me of my dad. And uh, here I go again, you know. And uh, it really, really sucks. Losing all your demise, my friend. Yeah, I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. But <laughs> you know, and you know, when I was diagnosed a year ago, January. So you yep. think about that. You, you think about that. Uh, well, no, last January. Um, is when I was given my death sentence, you know. But uh, I've had a lot of time to contemplate, you know, and reminisce. And, and I lost my pop nine days before my 12th birthday. Hmm. And Happy birthday. Yeah. Just saying. And, and, well, but if I think about it, in 12 years, what I learned from that man, amazing. Crazy, right? Amazing. Yeah. And yeah. the same with my grandfather. Um, I was I was 11 when I lost him. And most of my outdoor skills by 11 years old, I had acquired from my grandfather and my pop. And, wow. And... Problem, I look back at that, and the problem at that time was lost my grandfather totally. None of us were ready for that shit. I mean, the doctors had given, they had removed a couple of non malignant yeah. growth, and they said, Yeah, give him three days in the hospital, he's out of here, giving him a hundred percent. 100% bill of health and, and he, he, escaped, <laughs> he escaped the hospital and they called my pop. My pop was the chief of police at the time. He goes flying to that next town where my grandfather was in the hospital, but now he's not. He's out there somewhere. My dad knew where to find him. He goes out there, old country road, and there's grandpa walking down the damn road 
<laughs> in one of those house uh, hospital gowns with no robe. So his ass <laughs> is <hanging> out the back. <laughs> and he's walking down that road. He's going home. He's getting whistles from behind. Yeah. And so my, <laughs> my pop gets him in the car and my grandfather told him, don't don't make me go to the hospital because I'll never come back. And he didn't. He died, yep. passed away that night. Working. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah, to hear that, man. Working, Woods. I, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. But then my pop, same way there. Um, the my baby. pop took his, <laughs> took his own life. Yeah, Nobody's seen it coming. That's I, can crazy. I can't see you guys. Yeah, I can hear you. Well, we we can hear you just fine, okay. son. We can hear you. We can hear I can you. See you. I can see you just fine. Oh, you're, look at, too. you're looking okay it. for a dead guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Bandable outdoor voice. Damn it! You know, hey. you know, hey, I see, hey. I, I I see him wearing that damn hat, and. <laughs> And this here, this, this, good. this here is my favorite hat. <laughs> guess what? I can only wear that son of a bitch with a do rag on now, because <laughs> because I lost so damn much weight. Even my head lost weight. I put that son of a bitch on without a do rag. <laughs> it's down over my ears and my eyes. I can't see. Oh right. lord! Good thing it's got mesh How in it because it, it, it gets down, you. rests on my nose. I can look out the mesh, you know. But, but Uncle Stye, I think uh, I think I promised you some blues, did I not? Some soft blues in the background while you told your Sunday story, right? Yeah, but that's the way my stories are told. Is do little, little do you here. have a Sunday story ready? No, I don't do the Stye story Sundays anymore. Yeah, I read that, but do you have something ready that you can tell, you know, whilst I'm playing soft blues in the background? Oh, hell, I don't know. Oh, you got something. You, you make me feel like I should grab all my gear, drag it out on the porch, sit in a goddamn wooden yes, rock, sir. and grab my corn yes. cob pipe. And, yes, and, sir, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, listen, you know, listen, 7 a.m. my time, I start drinking bourbon. This is what I start drinking. Seven o'clock this morning. Hey, Nick. Yeah, you start. Okay. What's up, Nick? Yeah, Jimmy. That's what I start drinking. Right. Seven o'clock this morning. Then I switch to wine. So, <laughs> I am in the mood to play some soft blues as Come you on, tell man. your <laughs> Sunday afternoon story. I got no story on mine. Yeah, Marine yeah, Mom says, you're them out. Them on a spot. A story. Yeah. I got no story yeah. in mind. Marine Mom's telling you off at BC. She said, you're putting him on the spot. Yeah, well, exactly. That's what I do. That's what I do. Listen. The, 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 if the I thing cannot... is, we, 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 we need to be respectful of Stye because if he hasn't got a story to tell, he hasn't got one ready, we can't just expect him to come up with a story out of thin air. I, I already he, got... He I've already posted over 200, Every, 250 Every, stories. I mean, everybody expects me to come up with a blues lick out of the blue. Out of the blue. <laughs> out of the blue. <laughs> oh, no. Uncle what? Sly. Uncle Sly, you, you, you know I love you, man. And we, oh, we've yeah. known each other for a long time. And uh, you, you know what? That. Um, that that Bowie knife that you wanted, um, I've decided to name that United We Stand Together because of the way that the world is going. Yeah, it's absolutely gone to crap. Let's face it. Yeah. You know, there's still people driving around with masks on by themselves. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't even get that. That's like laying in your bed with a condom on, and you know. By yourself. <laughs> now, <laughs> now that, that, that's, we just don't get it. Now that's anyway. funny. That's funny. About a about a week ago, I was at Walmart, <laughs> and there's this clown. He's wearing this damn mask, and he's driving <laughs> his car, and he's got all his windows up. You know. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. 
and it's it's eighty some degrees out, and he's got all his windows <laughs> up. And I can tell I can tell by the age age of the car. I really doubt the air is working. And he parks and he's walking into Walmart, and I'm just standing out front having a smoke. And I pointed at him. I started laughing. <laughs> And these two guys walk up behind me and they go, what are you laughing at? And I, I said, that guy there. I, I kept pointing. <laughs> I ended up with about nine people standing there because the one guy asked me, what's so funny about him? I said, he just pulled in here wearing his mask all by himself in the car with all the windows up. And I said, he's probably wearing oh that mask. He's probably wearing a bad mask because he probably ain't taking a bath in a week, you know. Oh, I said, my God. Why is there no other reason for it? And nobody, I don't see anybody else wearing one. What? Maybe, maybe he's got some weird kind of disease or something. I don't know. I, but, I, but, I, but I, the guy I, was, I looked seen. like he was in his 20s, you know. Oh, sure, I have seen have the mask this whole time, and I won't. And when people told me off, for not wearing them one, I'm like, mind your own business. By the end of the day, I have autism. I'm not wearing one. <laughs> yeah, yeah two that's it. Security guards. One of them went to assault me, and I actually got a letter from my local MP and the police. I went to complain, and no. since then, the security guards don't dare come near me now. I'm like, don't even come near me. Don't touch me. Don't say anything to me. And if I go shopping now, they're like, oh, are you alright? I'm like, leave me alone. I just, I'm yeah. looking like they have it. Yes, ma'am. Well, the, these yes, nine pe these nine people standing around me laughing at the guy too. The guy makes a beeline right for me because I'm the one point. He comes up to me and he goes, "What do you think so funny?" I said, "You wearing a mask." I said, "And especially in the car when you're all by yourself and you got the windows up." Yes. And, and he goes, "He goes, a man at your age." should be concerned about getting COVID. I said, uh, no. I, I said, you know what? I said, guess what? All your arguments about COVID, none of them matter to me because I got stage four terminal cancer. What's COVID going to do? Fucking kill me? <laughs> <laughs> I got he, didn't know, he didn't know what the fuck to say to that. And I go, come I on, nothing. think about it. Man, think about it. I said, no, and then, no. and then he, thought, he it it reared up his temper, so he thought thought he'd get pissy with me. And I, I told him, I said, hey, didn't you hear me? I got stage four terminal cancer. Shit, and that was the time for the blues. And if I, I ever heard it. And Just I told him, it. I I told Just him, I said, it. not only do I have terminal cancer, but I also own a nine mil. And you're just the kind of asshole that I could take out. I could shoot your ass. And I'd stand, I'd throw the gun on you, and I'd stand there and say, I did it. I did it. And they could throw my, throw my ass in jail, get me in front of the judge, and the judge would say, how do you plea? I'd say, guilty is sin. Guilty is sin. Well, you can get death penalty for that. Well, give it to me then. I just be cockier than shit. They give me the death penalty. I thank all of them. I thank them all. Because guess what? People that die of cancer don't die pleasantly. But the death penalty, Jesus, they try to fix me. I get three, three hops in a cot. So I die. At their expense, and I even get to pick my last meal, and then they're gonna strap me on the same kind of bed they got in the damn operating room. I've been on enough of them already. It's not that bad. Give me a couple of IDs, and they'll say, put them down. The first drug they give you is the one that knocks you out like you're going into surgery. And guess what? That's the one surgery you just don't wake up from. Why the fuck do these murderers get it better than the cancer people dying of cancer? 
And I, I looked at that guy and I said, so don't go to my fucking butt. I might decide to take that easy way out. Oh, so you're threatening me. I said, no, I'm just that close to making myself a promise to die in peace. So don't, don't, don't push my buttons. He goes, he goes, you're scary. And he starts walking into Walmart. All nine of the people started clapping. I looked at them and I said, you're not so They said, no, you're right. <laughs> what do you have to lose? And say it the way it is. I said, you're damn right. You're damn right. Just like the woman when I went into the hospital, she comes up to me and she's going to put an ID in. She goes, before I do anything with you, I have to let you know that I'm a transgender. I looked at her and I go, huh, good job. And she go, I go, and why did you have to tell me that? And she goes, well, you should have the right to know because a lot of people, they don't like transgenders doing things for them. I said, are you good at putting an IV in? She goes, actually, I'm really good at putting IVs in. I said, then I don't give a fuck if you're the purple goddamn gorilla. Put my fucking IV in and never bring up your gender again. Just do your goddamn job. <laughs> she put the ID in and she walked out baffled. She come back in that room 20 minutes later just before they wheeled me off surgery and apologized. And I said, what are you apologizing for? And she says, you're right. And I said... Well, of course I'm right. I came here for medical care. I didn't come here to find out if they use puppies or nurses or, or I, I don't give a shit what you are. And let all I give a shit about is what you're qualified to do. I mean, if you ain't good at putting an ID in, get me somebody else. But if you're good at putting an ID in, shit, you can have two. Heads, I don't give a shit. Just set her straight. She goes, so in other words, you don't like transgender. I never said that. I never said whether I do or don't. That's my personal business. None of your concern whether I do or don't. I said, so don't, don't come to me looking for a negative response. I'm not here to talk to transgenders. I'm here to get an IV put in my fucking arm so I can go to surgery. She got it. She figured it out. He, he, he's a he. He's a he that dresses up really good as a she. You know? He was faking it pretty good. He was faking it pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and I would have never known that that he was a transgender. I wouldn't have known that. I don't need to know that. I ain't looking for a woman at the hospital just before I go into surgery. Oh, ain't you a dish? Can we meet up at the pub tomorrow night? Oh, fuck. Just be, be honest with yourself and be honest with the world. That's all that matters. So how is Nicholas Jones doing? Who the fuck are you calling Nicholas? Well, if you had a white beard and a red hat, you look like Santa Claus. <laughs> well, I'm doing all right, stuff. <laughs> That's good. That's good. You shouldn't smoke that. You're gonna die. Oh, don't you fucking stop. I loved it when my doctor when I told my doctor now I suppose my primary doctor I told her now I suppose you're gonna really be hounding me about quitting smoking. 
She goes, it'll never come up again. She says, I'll never mention it again. Smoke all you want. She says, smoke all you want. They won't let me drink, though. Well, they tell me I'm not allowed to drink. Uh, I, I was pissed last night. I found out that oxycodone and Jack Daniels don't mix well. Yeah. Oxy, oxy and some good THC don't mix well either. Yeah. Yeah. I get a kick out of it, man. If I wanted to buy myself, say, a quarter ounce here in Wisconsin, you couldn't find anybody around here as many quarter ounce anywhere. But I can drive over the Wisconsin Michigan line, which is 45 minutes away, go right to one of their retailers. I can buy all the weed and all the edibles I want. And they don't, they, they look at my ID, they don't even say, Well, you can't have that one. Not gonna say that. Just off you go with your bag. Well, yeah. The, but get caught with it in Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Marine Mom. Yeah. Alcohol in the meds. They don't mean so. uh, um, I found that some of them, some of the meds just made you help. The alcohol jacks you up a bit. And the two with each other. And I'm a happy drunk, usually. I'm just a happy drunk. And I found out mix that alcohol with oxy and then it gets like a zombie drunk. <laughs> yeah. The, I did tell my doctor I get near the end, but I can still do some basic things. I'm going to go off my meds for a whole fucking week. Then I'm going to sit here and drink my ass silly. Yeah. I'm going to have myself one good and get some, drink my self silly. So, um, He says, if it makes your ass happy, you bet. That's why I got the best cancer. Not going anywhere yet, darling. Not going anywhere yet. No, actually, we got this hospital bed put in. It's in the living room. Now we got these two recliners that are attached together. A chair my hospital bed, and I got a couple of folding here. That's it for seating around it. Because I won't let anybody steal my studio chair out of the studio here for in the living room. Um, no, Guani, I haven't heard of John Tippin. It sounds familiar, but I don't think I have. But that damn hospital bed is so I didn't I don't have to be going up and down these damn stairs two, three times a day. Oh, I just go up there. Just a single trip, you know. Because yeah. I'm sleeping in my living room. Well, I wish I could turn. You'll see it. You'll see it someday anyhow. The day will come where I'm stuck in my bed 90% of the day. I'll be sleeping right from that damn bed. But... Yeah, I got a. The whole bed's done in camo, and and it's covered with with a with an plush American flag, pro with a big eagle on it, and, and nobody knows it's a goddamn hospital bed. They see it, they go, "What the hell is that?" 
I tell them it's the best fucking recliner you can buy, man. <laughs> How many recliners can you get in? And this one, I hit one button. I got the back straight up. I got the face. And I, my TV's mounted way up the wall now. And I'm watching something on TV, and then I go, I need a nap. Cut the TV off, hit one button. Yeah. And that bed flattens itself out to the spot I like to sleep in. It's already pro I programmed it to... I want my head this high, my feet that high when I sleep. I just hit one button and it puts the bed right there. I can sleep. Then I wake up, take an hour's nap, just hit a couple of buttons. Bed's popped right back up and I'm on TV again. Best damn recliner in the world. Oh, where am I here? There we go. Welcome back, Kiwi. I gotta throw this up for him for a moment. There we go, Kiwi. Stoy, can I share can I share a poem with you? Well sure you can. Hey Kiwi. Yeah. You don't. You don't have to be doing that. Kiwi, crap, kiwi. damn! You got kiwi, yourself to take you care of, it. bud. This poem I actually wrote for Star. This, this. Go ahead, Gemma. Back. I haven't actually shared it with Star yet. Destiny and different things that we read it go ahead oh. hey Gawani yeah Joe Kippen oh, oh. hey Kiwi oh. <clears throat> I apologize I've got a six month old puppy that thinks he's two years old <laughs> no, no. Oh, you want? Okay. Maybe he wants to go to the toilet. Maybe. They might come that I'm barking this, like this that when I, I got to go. Hey, scum TV. TV. Well, this here is the other thing. Put everything into perspective. And I think people well, need to listen up to. Okay, Emma, we'll to give you the floor. We'll give you the floor. We'll this, pull off this, to the side. So this this poem's called A Whole New World and I I wrote this poem about three months ago for Sky and I've kind of been keeping it private and due to what we've been talking about, I thought, you know what, it's about time that I shared it with everybody, including Sky. So um I hope everyone enjoys it. It says I can show you the world, a world that's shining and shimmering. Open your eyes and look into the ride of your world into your world through an endless sight of endless things to see see it's like a shining star you've come so far you've traveled a whole new world of many wonders wonders and seeing a new point of view point of view through people's eyes you can't go back to where you used to be you can show other people the world well well when nobody can tell you no or what to do you have a place you've never known You've known a whole new world tumbling through life, yet you've seen so many things. Life is a surprise to see. Surprise every day you've come so far in a world that doesn't accept change or difference. Change or difference because they believe in being fixed or needing to be cured. We don't need to be fixed or cured. We need to be educated in this whole new world that we live in. Accept people for being different. 
accept the world that there is a whole new world out there there's a whole new journey for you and me mm -hmm. says a lot says a lot yeah good good well good, done girl. good job but, good job but and 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 rebuttal to all that is you can you can lead a horse to you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Right. If right. you know what I mean. So. Damn right. It's 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 that 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 poem's only for those that really want to fucking listen, and 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 switch on or what's going on around the world. You know what I mean. So yeah, well that, done, Gemma. See, Gemma, what you do with something like that poem is you're planting Thank seed. You. Is all you're doing. That's, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and the seed you're planting is someone to open yeah, their me mind. Yeah, uh, I write all my poems. I've actually got a folder underneath my laptop here. I've written over 300 poems in about five years that I've been writing. I've written about 300 yeah. poems. There. They're actually in this big buffy folder. I'll show you. Hold on. This folder here. Yeah. Is actually that's, full. That's I can't fit no more in there. There's over, there's over two hundred and sixty poems in here that I've yeah, written. Full. Trying to get them it's actually stacked yeah. full. I literally, it's literally bursting. I can't. The 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 literal the clips are literally starting to break. Here, I'm I'm having to force them to keep shut. So it's, they're they're literally all handwritten. I handwrite all my poems. I keep them filed. They're all dated and timed in time order. So they're literally all got date time written on them. So I know when I wrote them and what the topic was. Oh, hey, okay. hey, Gemma. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say, Gemma, uh, is, is it time for you to go down to Wix's and get another book? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go pick up a new book. <laughs> I need to write one first, Kiwi. I'm, I'm actually working no, with no, someone on no, YouTube the, keep, who's actually helped a new, me put a book together. A new, a new book to fill with poems is what he's saying. Yeah. No, you, you need to go and get yourself oh, a new yeah, blank yeah. one to fill out again. If, if one's chock a block, it's time to get yeah. yourself another one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I need to get, I need to get a new uh I need to get a new folder. Yeah, I need to be into doing that because this folder is actually starting to break on me. So oh. I need to get another one. Yeah. But, yeah. No, oh, I'll so just I, take I do a look. It's kind of my my therapy. I use it as a way to escape yeah. from my um my yeah. autism. A lot of the time, I use it as a way to self cope. You bet. Like, I've sat on the phone with Stein. I've sat there writing poems with him whilst I'm on the phone with him. I'm like, and I'm sitting there doodling. So what are you doing? I'm like writing and then by the time I got off the phone I'm like look I did this and I've literally written a poem on a phone call with him it's just how my mind works I guess I was yeah. at the I was at the cancer one the cancer center one day I'm just sitting in the waiting room and there was this older gal and I could tell she's there for cancer treatments but she's got this young gal with oh, good her night, Nick. and good night Nick thanks for being here bud the, See you but I was sitting just kitty corner to a woman. I noticed that young girls that sketching, and oh my God, could she an artist? And especially a pencil, was just sketching away. And the older gal looked at me. And she goes, oh, I see you're looking at. Me. And I said, yeah. And she goes. Pencils and charcoal are, are her fidget toys. And I go, they're her fidget toys. And she goes, yeah, she says she's autistic. And and that's what keeps her stable out in public is having wow. her sketch pad and something, a writing instrument to sketch with. And she said, I can tell her moods if all I've got for her to write with is a pen, she's real anxious. <laughs> she's just not yeah. comfortable. But if I hand her a pencil, she's much better. If I hand her some charcoals, 
she's in heaven <laughs> and she's smiling at everybody in Saskatchewan. I go, that do you realize how awesome that I said, and her artwork is to die for. And that gal turned and looked at me and she goes, Well, thank you. And she just went right back to sketching. And those were the only two words I heard out of her. And I talked yeah. with nice. here it was her grandmother she was with. I talked to her grandmother for almost a half an hour, but those were the only two words I heard out of that young gal at all was, well, thank well, three words, well, thank you. And that was so cool. That was so cool to see how her grandmother had a good understanding of what she was dealing with and came up with her sketching as yeah that's her fidget toy for when she's out in the public is the sketch and her her pad was a nice big pad you could tell it's kind of worn she's been using it quite often and and her artwork was awesome i was going to ask can you sell me something in that book <laughs> but i thought that i might i might trigger her that's mine <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's fine <laughs> it, it, oh, yeah autistic oh people autistic people feel threatened <laughs> by that's fine. Things. you know if they're approached in a oh my god a, i'm so sorry too quickly or anything like that <laughs> that can trigger them you know and i I was glad I didn't all of a sudden start talk, talking to her about buying her pictures, you know, because uh, I don't know her well enough. If I got to know her, then I wouldn't be like that. But, oh my God, that first time visit, I didn't know. I didn't want to go there and then trigger her somehow, you know. <laughs> she was fun. having a good day. I, mean, I didn't want to be the guy that wrecked it, you know. Other yeah. people don't, don't the, think of it. The, 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 thing, the thing is, she probably would have appreciated the compliment and probably the fact that someone took her artwork that seriously. The thing is, when you approach a autistic person's face, it can be seen as either intimidating or, or we can feel a bit under threat. Sometimes with me, I'm out in public and this happened the other day. I was with my sister and we were at the store. And this woman obviously saw I was in a bit of distress and she went to approach me and get in my face. My sister luckily jumped in before I saw the woman. Yeah. Wow. Close to me. My sister's like, I suggest you back off now. Because if you don't, right. my sister's yeah. going to swear at you and make an idiot of herself in the, in the store. Just back off. Leave, yeah. leave, leave her alone. Everything will be so cool if you leave her alone. Yeah. And my sister, <laughs> She's younger than me. My sister's 31. And my sister's like, I'm telling you now, if you don't listen to me, you're going to end up getting either sworn at, hit, or abused. And the shop worker was like, well, she can't do that. And my sister's like, well, I'm warning you now. Go away and it won't happen. Get in her face again. Wow. Be so and my sister's like, now I've told you three times. Go away. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 after the third time, you just told them to say, just just say fuck off. And if yeah. they get offended, yeah, so they'll fuck off thing, anyway. She's like, so, yeah, yeah. Like, my sister stays alone. Go away. She, she's packing her bag. She's not doing any harm to anyone. She's minding her own business. She's not throwing her parts on or anything. Just leave her be. She wants to get out of the shop. And this woman you know, kept going and going yeah. and going. My face was now go away. And yeah. I end up dropping my bags right. into the outside of the store and the threw them down like that and the woman's like oh temper tantrum my sister's like no she's had a meltdown now will you f off she's like my sister yeah. had a meltdown that you've caused because she got in her face yeah. it, it, it's a classic face, example so. it, it's a classic yeah. example of what what part of fuck off don't you understand right <laughs> <laughs> I was completely fine, and then she kept coming back and coming back and coming back in my face. I'm like, really? Does she not know to... Clearly, I had my autism lanyard on, so she knew, obviously, that it's I was disabled. Dr. Smith. So I'm like, why would you do that? You clearly know I was trying to mind my own business. I'm trying to shop and get out, 
and still you, you come back and you come back and you come back in my face. I'm thinking, mm. she had a death <laughs> wish. On, she, had, she had a death <laughs> wish. That's what she had. I I love it now in my situation when yep. people they, when when they start telling me about whatever issue they're trying to start an argument over, and I yeah. just keep stopping them and saying. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't give yeah. a f I don't care. Yeah, how, I yeah, how fucking thick are you? you? Hey, how fucking thick I are you? <laughs> I got a bunch of college students out front of the post office, and I'm walking by having a smoke, and my truck's parked right by it where they're standing out there. And and I said, well, hey, hey. Sam. Yeah. Yeah, Sam's I see here, Samantha's Sam. here. Yeah, Samantha. Hi, Sam. Oh, Sam is finally here. Yeah. Oh, uh, Lord have mercy. So, <laughs> so there's my sweetheart. But but they started ripping on me. I mean, I'm a yeah, little, yeah. I was using my walk and my my walk. I call it my walking stick. It's not like a cane. It's for hiking, but that's what I use. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I'm, I'm walking, try, trying to get to my damn truck, and I got to walk through all these young kids from the college out here. Well, the scale starts in on me about me smoking in the public, all the secondhand smoke and this and that. And I kept blowing it away. Oh my god! And I kept moving around, figuring out where's the wind, where's the wind come. And here, now, oh, it <laughs> so it's blowing at her, you know. And she kept doing this dance to get away from my smoke. Well, I like dance partners, so I danced with her, you know. <laughs> you know, so wow. we, and then she's telling me, she goes, were you heading for that big truck? And I go, yeah, that's my truck. And she Watch goes, do you realize how much? CO2 that thing's putting in the atmosphere. I said, do you realize how much it costs me to put that in the atmosphere? I oh, said, my God, dude. This is where the blues need to come into play. I said, I, 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 I thought spent, you didn't do any more I let, stories. I, I let that son of a bitch run down to a 16th of the tank, and I pulled in and thought, ah, fill her up. $142 later... <laughs> And I, I'm like, okay, $142 later, son of a bitch. I'm going to enjoy that $142. I'm going to go for the hell of it. Well, she's telling me you should only use a truck like that if you're moving something. I said, no, no, no. I should use that truck every freaking day I can because it's my truck. It's my I'm truck. Trying. I, I should yeah. be able to use it for any reason I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, but the thing is, so you don't have to explain your own actions to some twat. Right, but I was having you know what I mean? a group of them, and I wanted to try to get them all going on this. Yeah. And so yeah. one of them popped up with, you have no concern about climate change at all? No. I said, as long as it doesn't change within 24 hours, I yeah. don't give a shit. Because if it, changes, right. <laughs> if it changes overnight, if I wake up and there's two feet of fucking snow out there, I got an hour and a half of digging in the attic and get all my winter gear out, putting my summer gear away. And then my luck, the fucking weather would change in another 12 hours. But I, exactly. I said, it's okay. uh, uh, you don't do that. So I, I don't know. I'm not worried about what the weather changes, you know, the climate changes. He goes, yeah. but what about the future? I said, fuck the future. You think I'm going to be here to enjoy it? That, that's no, your no, fucking no. problem, not mine. <laughs> all of it, they all started kind of yelling at me. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. All of you. First of all, I don't care. 
I don't care. If there was a comet coming, I'd be standing out here and you'd say, we only have 10 hours before it hits us. And I go, I don't fucking care. Because I don't. I don't fucking care if I pollute here right now. I don't fucking care. There's no way for me to get out there. I want to go. I gotta pollute a little bit of air. Fuck you. Yeah. I'm going out there. I'm going out there yeah. because I don't care about your future. You do what you need to do, and I'll do what I need. If you want it better for your kids, you do if they want it better for their kids. You know, but one of these generations is going to end up saying, fuck them, fuck them all. Yeah. We want to be happy again. Yeah. I'd rather be but, happy and not worry about the goddamn future. But oh, let me hear something. Yeah, let's do the bars. Well, yeah. go. Get your fucking ass out of here. We don't need you anyway. I mean... Yeah. Do, you, do you hear something fucking ironic, Sty? Sure. Right. Here in New Zealand, three quarters of the country is a national park, so they're not allowed to touch the trees or cut them down or anything, right? right. Wow. And the stupid fucking government has just made a deal with BlackRock for, for the $2 billion investment into our little country with 5 million people, and they're planting all un un unfarmable land and fucking trees to counteract the fucking global warming bullshit and wow. we we could fucking everybody in this country could burn fucking old diesels with fucked injectors for another fucking million years and with all the trees that are here to start with it wouldn't make a fucking ounce of difference you know what I mean no the air here is so clear. It's, it's so fresh. It's yeah. like Colorado. It's probably like Montana and, and Canada and that. It's just, but it's all fucking money making for these other twats that are making the rules. Yeah. That's yeah, all yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all it is. And, and we're going to pay for it. We're, we're going to pay for their decisions. So fuck it's, off. It's, That's it's all I say. Fuck off. Because you know what? Canada is burning like crazy because Trudeau is setting all the fires mm. through Canada. Uh, That's British right. Columbia, yeah, I forgot. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I forgot about that. That's you did uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You don't know. Hey, no, no, no worries, mate. No worries. Uh, but it's the same thing here in Canada. Like fucking, they're well, they're putting Canada down to build all these 15 minute cities. Yeah, and then and, and yeah. I'm sorry because fucking our old Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and Trudeau and fucking Christopher Luxon and Hipkins and all the other fuckers are all part of this fucking who bullshit. Yeah. Uh -huh. So... 100%. What the fuck? I reckon it's time for us people to stand up and say fucking power to the people. You twats that we employ oh. to look after us, you can all fuck, fuck off. Go and find an no. island somewhere and fucking no. fight amongst yourselves. No. One thing... Brother, I yeah. am with you 100% because... Me, me personally, like we, we had our truck convoy and they were all like, okay, yeah. let's be civil and let's, you know, let's do this quietly and let's do this civilly and, you know, let's talk to them. And no, the, the time work. Done the fucking work. Quietly is done. The step on yeah. their, step on their heads, step on their throats, make them choke on their own blood is done. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's time to. It, you it, know, it, I got, to, to kill some people and be done with it. Yep. I, I had fun. I had I had fun because I went before the Montana legislature because I am so they, sorry. They yeah, no, I loved it. <laughs> I, I worked I worked in that whole arena of politics yeah. for twenty seven yeah. years and and I went out during my the core of my career, I was in Washington, D.C. every month, 12 times a year. And I'm so sorry. Pound, pounding, pounding, oh, shit. I got shit done, though. When I got there, I was helping Native American tribes. And, and, yeah. And, and nice. they were madder than hell at me when I got up there to the podium at a, at a congressional hearing and started spouting off about the Eight billion dollars that 
they cannot find that the Bureau of Indian Affairs is supposed to have in trust for the Native American tribes in America. There's eight, they send in eight, Ukraine. Eight, eight billion dollars missing. And I said, well, wait a minute, nothing is, you can lose something, but that doesn't mean it will never be found. I said, so if you lost that money, you did an audit to find out that the money's missing. Why aren't you do now doing a forensic audit to find out where is it? Oh, well, you know, that that would cost us millions of dollars. I said, I'll contract myself out to you and I'll get a, I'll hire my own team and I'll do the forensic audit for you and I'll do it for $1 million. You don't have to spend 13, 14 million. Just pay me a million and I'll have, I'll have an answer for you within a year as to, who put that money in their pocket? Because I guarantee you, it ain't sitting in the U.S. Treasury somewhere. Holy shit, they escorted me right the hell out of there. They wouldn't let yeah. me even let me talk to the fucking press. The Washington Post wanted to interview me, and they broke the interview up. Basically, they took me right off the premises. But I was good at doing that shit. But out in Montana, we got in this argument about the forest land, right? And I went to the Montana legislature and I said, you know, the Forest Service wants to go into all of these big cuts that have been done and do a control burn in those cuts. Burn it all up. Don't leave that splash land there. Burn it all up. And those legislators were telling me, they said, well, there's such a risk of that fire getting on. I said, you know what's at risk is all that land. Do you want to go in there and hand plant at all those millions of acres? Or do you want Mother Nature to plant it for you? Burn that freaking ground because that's the only way jack pine will. You can harvest jack pine seed is by burning it. I said, so if you don't let that ground burn, you not only are leaving a huge fire hazard behind, but the forest can't replenish itself because that was all jack pine and now it can't grow again because you won't let it burn. So what do they do? Two years after I leave Montana, oh, we got to start doing some controlled burns. And I, I told friends here in Wisconsin, I said, a little, they're, they're a doll, dollar short and a day late. Sure as shit. They had wildfires that well, it was about five years after that. They had wildfires they couldn't deal with. And I said, hey, I warned you. I warned you, fuckers. You won't listen to nobody. No. And he said, how do you know that? I said, well, buddy of mine it's had a... It's called fucking life. It's buddy called of life, Mike. Right. Yeah, it's, I mean, they've only been logging that territory for the last 150 years. So... Don't tell me they haven't learned something from it. And one thing they learned is Jack Pine will not, will not reproduce on that land unless there's a fire to open those cones up. They got, yeah. It's got to burn. It's got to burn. And you control that burn. It's a planned burn. You can do it. I worked with the National it. Forest Service, and we did here in Wisconsin. I, I worked with the recreation department, and we we burned all of our campgrounds except for three of them in 2021 and 2022. We go in, burn the whole damn campground, all the brush, everything, burn it on every campsite. Every it's all burnt, burn it all, and we had all kinds of people. Oh my gosh, it, they're nasty. They look nasty. Well, that was in oh, just, that was in April. They were bitching about that, but by Fourth of July, when everybody's camping, they go, "That's the big, first big weekend, boys." That Fourth of July, yeah. they're going, "Exactly, oh, my God, the campgrounds are beautiful. Look at how the grass came back, and the undergrowth is so low, and we can see through the forest." And, because we did control burns, and you don't, we don't have to worry about campers burning up. 
You should have seen when we lit this bitch on fire. If you were camping here, you're dead. Yep. But we, we prevented you from dying, plus we saved our campground. Look at how beautiful it is. Oh, fuck yep. no. They don't want to listen to us. No. So, um, I, no, the, the, these, these, these people that get arsy with other people that know what they're doing, they're just uneducated people, so you just ignore them. Don't even answer them. You just fucking ignore them and they go away. That's it. You know yeah. what I mean? You just... just I, I apologize, Sty, because my brain is fucking flicking over 20 million times an hour at the moment, and I'm back to what I used to be. I can talk a lot better. I'm a lot clearer. Um, my brain's thinking I got no pain in my body and life's good and, and as you can see the bloody weather. Oh yeah. It's a beautiful in the morning. Look at that. Look, see? The beautiful. sun's just coming up over the hill. And <laughs> Our sun's just getting ready to go down. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And and my, my new car arrives today. I, this is gonna be funny because I'm I'm 130 kilograms, which is what? What's 130 kilograms about? Fuck! What's that? 130 kilograms, 260 pound, I suppose I am, and I'm six foot two. I've lost a bit of weight, and I'm a big bloke, and I'm buying a smart car, one of those plus twos, four plus twos. I'm going to paint it up with uh, yellow and black with mad kiwi oil. I'm going to go tripping around visiting people. You I'm going to get my channel back up, up and running again. I've just been letting it do nothing. I can't. I couldn't have been bothered. But now, I'm sorry. I'm talking really fast, and, and, and I'm, I'm off. No. You know, sorry, people, man. people to see, places to go, fucking rah rah rah. You know what I mean? So, and, I, and I'm fucking, I'm fucking sorry that you've got cancer, mate. You know, we all come into the world. We all go out of the world. And the thing oh, is. No. But here I am sitting here with a brand new life ahead of me. Yeah. And, and right. here you are fucking right. living the last last few months, and it's fucking – it fucks right. me off. It really does. <laughs> sure. See, and well. that's, that's it is I went through a – oh, by the way, that's a picture of my front yard looking out my front picture window right here off my studio. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, we got good weather today. It's only – it's only 65 degrees <laughs> Fahrenheit. And, and pretty, it's cool and light breeze. And, yeah. But, the, um, but yeah, you know, and I, I tell you what, I, I got people that are upset with me because I'm working on, and next couple of weeks I'll be working on it a little bit more. But, I'm doing a farewell video. Yeah. Oh. Well, well but it, every, every, everybody should organize something like that anyway, just in case. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you don't know yeah. if you're going to walk in front of a bus. Everybody's you know? pissed off at me and saying, oh, we can't watch something like that. And I well, said, it, right? well, you probably well, camped in one sitting because the fucker will probably be four hours long. <laughs> but, but but I'm going to tell you, everybody in the world, yeah. what I was. Yep. Yeah. What was my part in what we have, you know? Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. And, and I got all sure. the right world to say farewell to everybody I know. Absolutely you have. Absolutely. Even and, though and you don't have don't to know and and just let them know that hey and I've had people say, well you make it sound like you wish you could die. I said I don't no, want to die. Man. I I want to live another sixty six years, but do you think that's gonna fucking happen? It ain't gonna happen Probably not. to anybody. Uh, yeah, but um, lived to be a hundred thirty years old. So, so you don't, you don't I, have to you don't you don't have to justify your actions to anybody, Stye, because they're your actions. Yeah. They're not anybody else's. You know what That's I mean? Right. Yeah. And, and people that say, "Oh, Stye, you you shouldn't be doing that." They're selfish people because they don't want you to die. But 
You know what I mean? You're you're organising your life to suit your life as it is now. It could change tomorrow. We don't know. Yeah, but so, it's yeah. there. It's there to play at whatever memorial or whatever. You know, like just piss off and let me do it. You know, you're wasting yeah. my time. And and it's like anything <laughs> else we do: the live streams, the videos. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. That's right. Piss off. <laughs> But I love it. I've had a couple complainers in the past. They said, oh, I sat through your whole video, and I didn't like it. Or they say, I sat through a full four-hour live stream, and I didn't like it. Well, what the fuck? How long did it take for you to figure out you didn't like it? Right? <laughs> it took you the whole goddamn four-hour stream. Yeah figure out you didn't like it. How well, fucking I'm, goddamn thick are you? <laughs> yeah. I, tell you what, I, I know if I like something or not. Within a minute. Yeah. yeah that's it right. Don't, yeah. It, it don't take long. It don't take long. The, you know, and there's things where I might not like it at first and I say, but I'm going to give it a chance because it seems to have yeah. potential. And then find out, shit, I'm stuck, glad I stuck around. And then there's other times where I said, yeah, I should have left when I first felt like it. I'm done. And I'm out. <laughs> well, yeah. well, I love it when people want to bitch because it's just like the guy or gal, it doesn't matter who they are, sit in a fucking restaurant. They order off of a menu. So they picked what they want. They get it. They eat 90% of it. Oh, he had a drop. Okay, but they eat 90% of that meal. Then they call the waitress over and they say, that's the worst meal I've ever had. Well, how many bites did it fucking take for you to figure out you didn't like it? That's right. Well, I am not paying for it because I didn't enjoy it. Oh, the hell you're not paying for it. You ate it. That's if right. you sat there and but, kept eating it, I, I ran a pizza joint. Yeah. Almost 50 years ago. But yeah. I ran a pizza joint and Jesus Christ, it's 48 years ago. <laughs> but I'd have customers come to me and say, I want my money back. I didn't I don't like this pizza. And I'd look at half the fucking pizza's gone. And I'd say, how many are in your party? Well, it's just me. You ate half the fucking pizza. The goddamn pizza weighs four pounds. You ate as much as you possibly could. And then now That's you want right. your money back. Yeah. It happened. I'll, pay, I'll, I'll take it home for breakfast the next day because it's tasty. Damn right. Damn right. <laughs> they just wanted a freebie. Yeah, and Exactly. And, yeah. and people yeah. like that, people and like I, that are the people that are fucking this world. And, and I loved it back in that day. That was 1975. Mm -hmm. 75 and 76. Or it was 74 and 75, one of them, too. But 75 was the key year. But people were shocked at me because if a customer come up to me and they go, they go, well, I didn't like the pizza, and I look, and I go, well, you ate damn near the whole thing. You're paying for it. If you're going to make me pay for this, I ain't never coming back here again. I said, thank God. Get the fuck out of here and don't ever come yeah. back because I'll make goddamn sure that I make you even a worse pizza next time you come. <laughs> I love it. I don't want, I don't want you as a customer. Because my loyal customers, they'd like to take you out back and walk the hell out of you. But, exactly. So why why should I have you with them? They don't. The majority, yeah. nobody else is bitching but you. So go away and never come back, you some bitch. Yeah. And yeah. I, I've had people go away and then come back a week later, all apologetic. I'm hungry. All apologetic yeah. and and 
I shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have said that, blah, blah, blah. I'd really like to be able to order four pizzas. We have a lot of people that thought, oh, well, guess what? There ain't another fucking pizza joint for 30 miles from here, so good luck. Yeah. Go buy some frozen pizzas, you cocksucker. I th told you, don't. you promised me you weren't ever coming back. So you broke two promises. Get the fuck out of here. Get out yeah. of here. And the, um, you sent me an email, eh? Uh huh. Guani sent me an email. Uh, oh, we had a slight frost here this morning, so it's about, I don't know, it's probably about three degrees centigrade here at the moment. Uh, <laughs> there it is. But anyway, my posts arrived on the back of the truck and he undid the straps and they just rolled clean off the trailer onto the ground, no hassle. He rolled up his straps and he's gone. I paid him the hundred bucks and, and that was all done in about five minutes. It was really good. Cool. So I got That's two nice. two hundred foot. I got two two ten meter poles. What's that? Thirty foot to go under the old jail shed. The lifter off the ground, and uh, we're going to rebuild it for a studio for my wife's artwork and that. So um, yeah, we're, we're so you're gonna going to lift it up. Going to lift yeah, it up. Lift it off the ground. It's been sitting on the yeah. ground for nine years. Going to put new foundation under it and then set it yeah. back up. Yeah. Awesome. Good for yep. you. Good for you. See, I've got Ooh. little projects I want to get done. And now that yep. my doctor has kind of switched things around and I'm feeling better every day, I yep. seem to feel better. I can't wait this coming week. I'm going to mow the lawn and do a little bit of brush work out here. I got a ton of brush work to do. Get the old yep. fire pit fired up and burn for two, three nights and days just to burn some of this yep. shit. Um, yes, Guani, I got it. I'll take a look at it after the stream. Uh, I promise you. I read I read your message, but I didn't click the link. Uh, I'll go in and check it out after after the stream tonight. But um, but I told the doc. I said I got so much that I want to do just because I want my yard to look good. I said. There ain't nothing harder on a dying man than to walk out and not be able to enjoy his yard, you know? That's right. I said, oh, if I can't get out to the woods, I want to get out my fucking yard and, yes. and my backyard is what needs all the work. The front mm -hmm. and the sides of the house are nice, but I haven't got the back done and there's so much to do. My my boy running water, he, he he bought me a brand new electric log splitter that works like a million bucks. That thing's sweet. I haven't since he bought it, I used it three times. And then my cancer treatments were killing me. I haven't touched it since. And it's sitting out there all covered up. And I'm like, I'm dragging that son of a bitch out and using it. I've already got a bunch of wood already bucked up from two years ago. I just all I gotta do is split it. And I haven't got anything out there that's not easy for me to pick up. And I got I got a I cut a piece of wood, perfect height, stool. I can sit there, grab those chunks of wood, throw them on there, split them. I never I don't all the splitting, I don't have to get up. I just sit on my ass and split wood as long as I can. And once the wood's all gone, fuck it. Now I pull the electric chainsaw out and I buzz me up a bunch more, another pile. And so I told the doc, I said, if this new routine works, I'll, um, I'll definitely be a happy man because I'll have my backyard done and all those brush piles eliminated. The 
Native Kutza. Hey, Native. Sweetheart. It's good to see you, girl. Good to see you. You know Native, don't you, Kiwi? Oh, you're muted. Kiwi, somehow you got muted. I've, I've, I've been in a bad place for quite a few years, and I've just been ticking along, existing, and now after this medical event, I've come back a, a, a brand new person, and I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm buzzing, and it pisses me off that you're, you're buzzing, but you can't buzz as much as I'm buzzing, if you know what I mean, so. Yeah, but um, I, I love it, because you, what you've got going on for you right now is awesome. It's second like chance. I, it, second chance. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I told my doctor that's the one thing with my cancer, because he he's he's just flat out honest with me, with me, and that's why that boy is my favorite man. Man, he just yeah. he's there. He's there for me. He come right out and yeah. asked. He said, he said, what are your biggest fears about coming to the end? I said, only one, and that's this. Yeah. If I start losing this, shit. Oops, we yeah. gave him too much morphine. He died. Get rid of me, because yeah. if I lose this, I ain't worth shit. You might as well consider me dead, even if I could live exactly. for three, four months, but not have but, my wits to me. I said, but, I I want my wits to me. And he said, well, eventually you do just before you pass. You're going to have things that are odd. They'll even seem at times odd to you. You'll start to hallucinate towards the end. You'll see dead people. You'll see people that you knew that are gone. And you'll be talking sure. about You'll be talking with them, but you can talk to anybody else in the room too. Clear That's as right. Well. But you think those dead people are there too? He says, "Would yeah. you want me to put you under for that?" And I said, "Well, no, that'd be cool. There's some people I want to have a conversation with, and there's some of them that we have arguments that we have never solved. So resolved. Yeah, so right. I, I'd oh. like to argue with a couple of them." And I said, "So that kind of goofy, I don't care about. It's where I start forgetting my family." Yeah, and, no. and 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 that's exactly what's happened to me. Like I've I've been disassociated with my father for ten years, and he's eighty next year. And I went round on Friday just before lunch, and I said to Rachel, "Can you drive me round to Mum and Dad's?" And I'm, then I'll take you to lunch after that. I said, "I really need to talk to Dad." So I went around. I made up with my father after ten years not talking to him. Everything's tickety boo again. Um, I've, I'm going around making up all the other fucking stupid fucking enemy type things, you know, like yeah. we've disagreed on the same thing and one has their opinion and, and we've split apart, but I'm going to go back and rekindle it all um, just to piss, piss off a few people that have been sitting back watching fucking rubbing their hands together thinking, ah, uh -huh, he's fucked up again, but I'm going to uh -huh. go and fix that. Right. And, and, and throw it back in their face. So then it's their problem again. So yes, I'm not a nasty yes. person or a vindictive person, but it sounds like it. But, but, I'm, but, just gonna fix, but no. I'm just going to fix things that were broken, if you know what I mean. That's, so. oh, that's repairing burnt bridges. That's what, that's right. what it is. And mm -hmm. I've repaired several burnt bridges over the last year. Um, I met a gal yesterday, run into her at Walmart. We're at the checkout together i saw her and i go kelly and she turns and she looks and she goes oh my god Ty, it's you i go yeah and i go i could tell by the look on her face i said oh you got the word eh she goes yeah my sister told me about it well her sister and i we've had several long conversations before this but I did think her sister and her, I, they were pretty estranged. They didn't talk a lot before. They must have come back together and worked things out. But, yeah. oh, my God, she was all over me like flies on shit. Gives me a big hug. 
<laughs> yep, yep. I know. And, it's, and it's, it's funny, isn't it? And, it? and she's breaking down and crying. Yeah. Oh. I told her, no, 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 no. I said, put a smile on your damn face. That's right. I said, I said, that's one of the hardest things for somebody that got the news I got is mm -hmm. watching other people suffer mm. more than I am. That's right. And 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 I, I understand wholeheartedly. Like and yeah. when we left after we chatted, when we left, she said she's really pissed at her ex brother in law and I told her, I said, well, I said, why are you pissed at him? And she said, well, Mikey and everybody disowns. All of your old friends disowned you when you divorced your wife. They believed every word she had to say that was nasty about you. And she said, and I asked all of them, and she says, especially my brother-in-law, Mikey, you were buddies for 25 years. Did everything together. Yeah. And she says, I asked them flat out, how can you walk away from something like that? A relationship you had for 25 years, and you guys probably only butted heads once or twice though, in 25 years. Mm -hmm. And Mikey said, well, I believe his ex-wife before I, I you know she's convinced me that he wasn't the person i thought he was and she said when i asked him all of the times you were in his home and involved personally in their personal life and they came to you for help you went running right to him for for the sty for help all the time she said if anything other than what you saw for 25 years changed your mind, didn't you stop for a minute and think this has got to be bullshit because it's not what I experienced? It's, 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 it's like eating a pizza and then bringing it back and saying, I don't like this. Yeah, 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 right, right. <laughs> you <know what>? exactly. <laughs> well, you like that enough to eat one or two slices, but... Yeah. And, and that's exactly what it was, is our friendship was good and it was tight and close all the time. Best of friends, you know. Yeah. But after the divorce, the wife just wanted, she was, wanted, to, be, wanted to be vindictive. So she mm -hmm. went to all of our mutual close friends. And bullshitted. And, and made sure to alienate me. To make sure yeah. that give them some reason to not like me. Now I but, do have a friend that was a friend of mine for sixty-one years. We met in kindergarten. We were best friends by the time we were in the third grade, and we remained best friends through our whole life. He will not talk to me. He won't talk through a text. I actually sent him old school snail mail. I wrote a fucking letter and put a stamp on yeah. him, mailed it to him. His yeah. son contacts me to apologize for his father's actions. And I said, well, it's both your father and your mother because I knew her for only about four years less time than I knew him. And yeah. and we were always friends, always friends. Never could think of a time we wouldn't stop everything to go help each other. And yeah. he said, no. He says, your wife convinced them that your whole life was, it's all made up, it's all bullshit. And I said, how they were intimately involved in our lives. So they're full of shit too then, right? So Absolutely. Any, anything before my divorce 
is all bullshit on both sides because you're saying these things never happened, but yet they happened to all four of us, both couples, yeah. at the same time yeah. as in place. But yet, even though she convinced them that was all bullshit, it's like it's, it's, a, it's a classic. They're could they're convinced then that they're full of shit too. That that, that like, they got screws loose, and I, it's like, so why won't he talk to me? Because his wife was so tight with my ex-wife. His wife told him, "If you ever, if I ever find out you ever speak, even speak to Sty again," she said. We will be divorced within a year," she said. "You are not allowed to talk, even talk to the man. If you see him walking down the street, you get to the other side of the street. You're not to come in contact or talk to him whatsoever." So I, don't, I haven't got a clue what my ex-wife told these people. Mm -hmm. I, I have, I've confronted a couple of them and said, "Hey, what is, what did my ex-wife say?" Um, and the uh, And nobody will give me any no. details. They just said no. it's, not, it's not nice. And I said, well, why not? The, um, the, oh, Kuta. Did, Did you accidentally hide Marine Mom's messages? Um, because, because, yeah, Marine Mom is, she's a good viewer. <laughs> Oh, Marine Mum, yeah, yeah, she she welcomed me in when I first came in, but I haven't been in for eight months, nine, ten months or something, so, yeah. so Marine Mum, completely... all, all of her messages were deleted, and it says really? by, by Native Kutsa, and I can't believe Native Kutsa would delete her messages. Uh, um... God. Oh, she says, sorry, I didn't mean to band it. You are banned, LOL. <laughs> oh, Marine Mom, if you don't know who Bandit is, that's Native Kutz's dog. And Bandit is a little bandit. Yeah, yeah. He didn't even know it was touched. Oh, Marine Mom. Yeah, we'll we'll take we'll take care of that stuff. Um, so. Um, Oh, here I yeah, and I'm I'm all thumbs on my mouses today. I run a couple of mouses. Um, yeah, I do this in fact with her. That so. Um, the uh, all, all I can say to people is like. After my little fucking experience of not being here and then coming back, like if someone turns a switch off and then I, they turn the switch back on again and they reset me, and I, I I'm just itching to be able to drive again because they because I went in through my nose to operate on my head, oh. and they've given me a 28 day driving ban just to make sure I'm okay. But if I had to cut a hole in my skull, it would have been 18 months driving ban. So. I'm just itching to get out there and, and, and share the, share the world share to the world the new me if you know what I mean like go and visit people and, and patch up old rifts and just enjoy life because I've been given a second chance and yeah. doesn't and, does, and, doesn't and, it, and, like a light comes on that where all of a sudden you say oh my god there's so many things that if I don't act on them I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss that's all that. That's exactly right, mate. That's exactly right. I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to go do all the things that I've wanted to do um, and, and see people I've wanted to see and, and go and enjoy their lives as well as them enjoying my life, if you know what I mean. And that's 
It's like I, an epiphany, isn't yeah. it? It's an epiphany. Yeah. I, and I and, tell I tell people now I've gotten really into the habit of telling. They'll say, "Oh, thanks, I for taking the time to let me come and visit you." And this, thing. I'll go. You can thank me all you want, but it don't matter. Yeah. My thank you to you because I'm selfish. I'm selfish. Yeah. I want to see you. <laughs> That's right. And then anyway, you took you you took the time out of your day to come and see me anyway. So yeah. you don't have to thank me for taking the time to come and see you. You've yeah. already done that. Right. I. Yeah, there's no I, need to apologize. I, I'm just thankful that you know. I'm just thankful that God, God will, and we were able to get together now. Yeah, that we had yeah. the chance that we could both get together now, and so <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't. You don't need to thank me because I am very, very. That's right. Selfish when it comes to yeah, I love. I love hearing from people. Um, I, and I used that, to, I used to, yeah. That's like, oh, yeah. I had someone very gratefully donated a couple hundred, I'll just mess up, a couple hundred dollars to me. And I checked. There it is in the account. So I went to the ATM and I drew a hundred bucks off to go do a little shopping with it. Yep. So I was I was at the dollar store, and there was a gal that was having the cashier back off of the transaction four items because she didn't have enough cash. Have enough money. Yeah. Yeah. And it came to like $18 or something. She only had 15. And I, I got my bags. I was right in front of her and I already checked out and I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm standing at the end of the counter. And I told the gal at the cash register, I said, ring those four items up. Let her have those. I'll cover it. I'll make sure it's covered. And that gal goes, are you crazy? The gal that's buying the things. She goes, are you crazy? Um, she says, you don't have to do that. That's with tax, almost four and a half dollars. I said, yeah, I do. I said, guess what? I'm covering it with money somebody gave me. <laughs> yeah. And, and and the other thing is that you say to them, "Where I'm going, you don't need cash." <laughs> and and, and the, ca the cashier says to her, "Well, that'll be eighteen dollars and seventy some cents or something." And I go, "Here you go," and I hand the cashier a twenty. And I said, "I got to get going. Just give the change to her." And I headed out the door. <laughs> yeah. And but I had somebody. That knows me quite well. Said, Sty, that money was for you to do something that you enjoy. I said, You don't think I that's it. good? <laughs> I said, Felt great. Felt yeah. like great. It's called, it's called paying it forward. Paying it forward. And that girl come out of that store. I'm sitting in my truck. She come out of that store and she's looking all around. I could tell she was looking to see if I was still in the parking lot and where I was sitting at. It would be hard for her to find me. And I just thought, yeah, that's good. She just, yeah. and she walked over, got in her car, and off she drove. And I thought, yeah. yeah. Have a good day. I, probably everybody in that line could have afforded to flip the, at least yeah. the difference, you know, the $4 difference. I've always done that, Stoy. I've yeah. always done that. If someone's struggling for cash at the end of the day at the counter and I'm picking my stuff up, I just I just throw ten bucks to cover it and I walk out the store. And that's all yeah. I do. Yeah. I don't have I don't have time. Don't I don't need to receive. No. There you go. Yep. Covered yep. and walk out. Yep. And, and then you stand there dumbfounded. What do I do? What do I do? 
when, yeah, I worked, no, no, no. when I was the manager of that Dollar Tree, I had this guy and gal come up to the cash register one time, and it, and they were regular customers in there two, three times a week. And, yeah. and so they knew me, you know, just as customer manager relation kind of thing. And um, yeah, we can still see you, Marine Mom. <laughs> you're, you're good now. I made you a moderator, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> that fixes that but, problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be tough. Mods, yeah. deleting mods. Yeah, that's something. That's a taboo thing. But, but so these two are. They walk out, and we've known each other now for three years. Damn near three years. And the guy, his wife's taking all the shit out of their cart. The guy walks around, so he's in front of me, and he's staring at me, and I'm smiling at him. I go, you need something? Can I help you with something? And he goes, I'm tired of keeping my tongue tied. And his wife goes, no, don't. And he goes, why in the fuck do you smile at everybody that comes to this store? And I go, what? And he goes, so boy, I'm in fucking school. He, he says, I've seen some of the biggest assholes come in here and you smile at them. And you treat them so good. And, but they're the biggest <laughs> asshole. And I said, well, they're not such an asshole when they leave, though, are they? No. He goes, no. I have never really paid attention to that. I said, no, you can see the personality change almost instantly. And I said, I learned that from my granddad, who was one ornery old bastard boy. As <laughs> ornery and mean as that old boy could be, he smiled. Yeah. He smiled at everybody, and he told me back in the early 1960s, "Boy, when you co communicate with anybody, you walk up to anybody, put a smile on your face." And I can remember asking him, Grandpa, why would I do that, even if it's somebody I don't like? He says, because it might be the only fucking smile they get that day. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're an asshole, the world knows you are. Nobody's going to smile at you. But if you're the one that smiles at them, you smile at an asshole, nine out of ten times, all of a sudden, you're that asshole's hero. Nobody better say anything bad about Sty. <laughs> but but the other thing, all, too. All you did was smile at them, and it gave them some personal worth. It made them That's right. feel like. I must be a little important to this guy for him to smile at me and treat me so nice even though I'm a jerk, you know, and, and that's it. It's smart plant. Throwing a smile on somebody is just planting the seed. Hey, cheer up, man. Cheer up. Yeah. Life is, might be bad, but it can get better. You know, it can get better. You can put a smile on your face. Being a manager of a Dollar Tree, ain't, that ain't sweet. That ain't a, yeah, I was no. I'm only making thousand dollars a week. <laughs> I mean, they didn't pay us shit. It was a mm. miserable job, too. They expected us to do a ton of shit. But yeah. I always smiled about it because I don't have to be there. I chose to be yeah. there. I took yeah. that job. So, so. And 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 the, the other thing, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to teach you anything new, Sty, but I don't normally call people assholes because... Assholes are useful if you don't shit, you die. Uh, yeah. You get yeah. me? Yeah, definitely. Um, the, if, if, if people are assholes, it's their problem. It's no one else's problem. They're the one with the problem. And and I've learned that through life, being driving trucks for 30-odd years and meeting thousands and thousands and thousands of people from all over the world. And... Now I've had a second chance at life for me being almost divorced, 
I was just sitting in the chair. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to meet people. I didn't want to drive anywhere. I didn't want to do anything to having a spewing fit, going to bed. The light went out. The light went on. I was in hospital, and my life had changed around 160 degrees or yeah. 360 degrees, and 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 I disappeared for six days. And, and it's like yeah. it's like I said to my wife. I says it's it's like somebody on the other side has squirreled me away in a shed and they've rebuilt my chassis, put new running gear in me, put a new engine in me and sent me out. And now I'm a resto mod and I can take on Ferraris. You there know what I mean? Go. There you go. Now, I'll and, tell and you. And that's how I feel. I tell you, Kiwi, I can relate so well. When I had my open heart surgery back in 2016. Yep. The ticker was bad enough. They told me you got a 50-50 chance of surviving the surgery. Yep. I said, that ain't so good. And they said, no, it ain't. They said, you're not in good shape. And they said, but we're going to get in there and we're going to look at everything and do whatever we can to patch your heart yeah. up. And I said, okay. So I said goodbye to my kids. <laughs> mm. I thought I was biting the dust that day, you know. But I knew well, it was going to I, I knew it was going to happen while I was unconscious. So, yeah, life is going to be whatever life deals to us. So I said, okay, let's do it. I recovered yeah. so fast. Five days, counting the day of surgery. Five days is all I spent in the hospital. They shot me out of there, and I recovered yeah. so fast. But holy God! Yeah, that move out of the way. I'm coming that, through. <laughs> that, that, that helped turn my life quite a ways around, right? Yeah. That's the yeah. only, you know, that's that's not that long ago. We're only talking yeah. six years ago, but um, seven years now. Yeah. Yeah. But but the thing is, is I talked to that heart surgeon. It'd be well, it was before I had my surgery, which was last a year ago. Yeah, it's been a, a year. Christ, and, I've missed out on so much of your life. Year, I, 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 I feel guilty. Oh, you don't have to feel guilty. But, but yeah, I, it's been a year and a month since I had that surgery. Well, so, but before that surgery, these cardiologists, three of them, checking me out because they knew my heart history and all that. You know what? Because they didn't, they were afraid I wouldn't survive the cancer surgery because of my heart. So they're really yeah. checking out. They get a hold of my surgeon that did the all the bypasses and shit. She calls me and she says, I just want to do a follow-up. And I said, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And she said, well, are, are you smoking still? I said, yeah. She goes, damn, you told me you wouldn't quit smoking. I said, no. You told me I couldn't smoke anymore and I couldn't drink anymore. I promise you, I haven't smoked any more than I usually do, and I haven't drank any more than I usually did. That's right. <laughs> and she just laughed, and she goes, but you got to worry about your heart. And I said, not anymore. I said, you did a good job, Doc, doing an re engine rebuild, you know. You rebuilt yeah. that engine. And that's how it just lasts me the last six years, not a single heart sy symptom in six years. And mm. I made it through the worst surgery I could ever imagine going through. Oh, and and that's off to you. That's off to you, sir. <laughs> that, I know yeah, all my, about open heart surgery. Fucking you have to chill your bloody body down to bloody ice temperature and the blood's just ticking over and it's just not a nice place to be. When I came out of surgery, see, I went to the Mayo Hospital, and the Mayo did the surgery way down southern Minnesota, and 
the Mayo Clinic. They were involved with my cancer yeah. treatments and everything. But um, they, I don't recommend anybody go to the Mayo Hospital. Go to their clinic. But if you got to go to the hospital, go find a surgeon that works out of a different hospital because the Mayo Hospital yeah. is what they call a learning hospital. Everybody you deal with, they're all interns. They have an accredited doctor running the whole show, but the people hands-on are all interns. They got the worst bedside manner in the world, and everything you tell them is wrong with you, and, or that you need help with like yep. pain management or something they have to get they then they have to go through like two three different doctors before anything's going to happen to you well no i just need you to up the pain med so i'm not in fucking pain well when i they didn't they don't have icus there your bedroom the, the room you're in yeah yeah there are no shared rooms in that hospital either you get in that room and that whole room is set up and they can do surgery on you right in that damn room. They got the big old light up on the ceiling that you pull down and everything. And yeah, I mean, it's nuts. You get in there and you yeah. go, holy shit, I'm in the ICU. Oh, no, you're in your room. This is where you'll be for the next week. What? Yeah. And you wake up and I start looking around and I'm going, holy shit. And the nurse heard me. It's like a meat processing plant. The, the nurse's desk is right in your room. Mm. And she's sitting there doing paperwork. And then she heard me say, holy shit. And she goes, oh, you're awake. And she gets up and goes walking over to the bed. And I go to kind of sit up because the small of my back was hurt bad. And go to try to sit up. She goes, oh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't be doing nothing. Don't move. Ask us to help you move. And I go, I can do it. And she goes, no, you don't realize everything that you're hooked up to that you could accidentally disconnect. And I started looking at myself and I'm going, what in the fuck? I got two tubes. I got one out of the abdomen. I got one out of the rib cage. I've got a feeding tube because I can't eat solids. They removed half my esophagus and 20% of my stomach. So I can't eat solids. Oh, kiwi mopped a button. But so they, they told me, um, they told me, they said, well, you have a lot of tubes sticking out of you and you got several IVs in you. I looked. They had two IVs in each arm. That's four IVs. I had two IV poles. Bags of shit all over the place. And I was catheterized. Never been catheterized before in my life. Thank God they did that when I was knocked out because I would have knocked somebody out. Plus, they had an epidermal in the back in my spine connected to an IV that was giving trickles of pain med directly in the spinal column to deaden everything from my shoulders down as much as possible. Well, I find out from my surgeon that if they did work it, they had me on four different pain meds. They had me on fentanyl, the one, the epidermal, morphine, and I'll be damned if I can remember that fourth one. But so they got me on four different pain meds, and I hurt like a son of a bitch. I hurt so bad. Never hurt like that. Never hurt like that. And I'm high tolerance of pain. I didn't, yeah, fuck cut myself so what I don't give a shit right to the bone I don't give a shit uh, I'll go down to the doctor and let him stitch it up you know pain tolerance has always been way up there I can handle the 
all kinds of pain. Not even, well, I, I say not anymore, but I know the pain's bad. They have me on oxycodone and gabapentin. Gabapentin it gets rid of the nerve pain from the neuropathy in my hands and my feet caused by the chemotherapy. That helps a little bit. It doesn't help a lot, but it helps a little bit. I know it does because I skipped it for four days. And then that pain really kicked in, went back on it, it lowered it to where it's tolerable. The oxys, the oxycodone, doctor's amazed. He says, by this stage where I'm at now, he thought for sure I'd be taking 30 milligrams up to six times a day. I take 15 milligrams, one five milligram tablet in the afternoon. I took one before the stream. That gets me through sitting here for however long I go. <laughs> and then, uh, then they, the other one is when I go to bed at night, I pop two. 10 milligrams within 45 minutes, the pain is relieved enough where I can sleep. And the doctor says, you're allowed at this stage of the game, your prescription is for 10 milligrams six times a day. And you're only taking 15 milligrams and you're splitting that up into two times a day. What are you doing? I said, that's all I need. He goes, but you gotta be in pain. I said, yeah. So, so what? Pain, you live with pain. And you only take something to cover it up, to help cover it up when you can't take the pain anymore. That's why I only take three tablets a day of five milligrams each, instead of taking six tablets a day of 10 milligrams each. So, um, yeah, just the needles and tubes and stuff, yikes. That's, that's it is, My experience in the Mayo Hospital, one week, I was there seven days, not counting surgery, but the seven days after surgery that I was there. When they discharged me, I was in a lot of pain that day, but they cut all your pain meds off, of course. The day I left, well, it wasn't the day I left, it was they started about an hour and a half before they actually wheeled me out of my room to send me home. They removed all of the tubes, the catheter, the abdominal tube and the chest tube. Put these big dressings on every, I already got these big dressings all the way up the front of me where they opened me up and all the way around my right rib cage almost to my back, a big dressing there because of the, they have to open up your rib cage too. And they, they change those dressings every day. And that last day they changed them that morning and they would be, they would need to be changed the following morning, but I will be home, right? They didn't give me any post care instruction at all. How to get rid of, how do I remove these and how do I replace them? What do I use to replace them? No, I didn't get that. I didn't get that information. I, 
I was in so much pain during that week in the hospital. I even told this dietitian that all of a sudden she thinks she's the freaking doctor and she's going to give me orders. I told my nurse that was in the room while well, this dietitian was in there. I said, does that big picture window over there open? I'm on the eighth floor and a beautiful view out there. I could look from the bed and see outside. I said, does that big picture window open? She goes, well, yeah, it cranks open. It swings to the side. She said, but we don't open them because it's so much way up here on the upper floors. So much wind blows through. It just blows things around. It's just so much wind. And I said, oh, it must have a screen. She goes, yeah, it's got a screen. Um, the, um, oh, I see old country homesteadings back. He was out at the range today. Couldn't miss out on some shooting, especially with hunting coming soon. You lucky bugger. Yes, you bet. I totally understand. Um, but, but I... Oh, depression is real, is in the house. Good to see ya. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The, but I I said, well, if that cranks open, do me a favor. Go crank that mugger all the way open. She goes, why? I said, just crank it all the way open and take that big screen out of the window. She goes, well, that I can't do that. I said, but it is just a screen, right? She goes, yeah, it's just a screen. And I said, tell that dietitian to back away a little bit because me and all these containers and tubes that I'm on, we're going to Peter Pan out that fucking window. I'm going to jump out that goddamn window. She goes, no, you're not. It's eight stories up. That would kill you. I said, exactly. But I'd never have to listen to that woman again in my life. I'd be so happy heading for the ground. Well, that, I guess that upset the dietitian. She, the nurse told me afterwards, she said, oh, she had tears running down her face. <laughs> she left the room. My nurse calmed me down, gave me a little extra pain meds. Actually, she gave me a sedative. I know, I know what she did. It wasn't pain med, it was a sedative. Because all of a sudden I'm drowsier than shit. Didn't care. Yeah, it was said of it. The next day, I find out that the hospital put her on paid medical leave, which they would pay up to 30 days of paid medical leave. I thought, boy, that's pretty cool. But why is she getting that? Well, because they had to do a psyche eval on her after that incident. And she wouldn't be coming back to the hospital. She won't be working there. And they said it was because of her bedside manner that it would have never escalated to me wanting to jump out the damn window if she would have kept her mouth shut and quit thinking she's in charge and not my doctors. Um, but little did they know. I, The minute I saw that big picture one, though, I wanted to jump out of that some bitch day one. And I wanted to jump out that window every day of that week. Then I came home here all alone. Thank God my daughter and my granddaughter-in-law and my grandson, they got me home. That's a four-hour drive. And they got me home. But they had to get back home, too. My daughter, she had seven of her kids still at home. And she had to get back home. 
she had a little granddaughter with her and that poor little thing she's got she's got worse than me she's got it worse than me she'll live she'll live a very difficult life she has a rare disease called white sutton's disease it affects neurological neurological function um, they didn't think she would walk oh shit they were wrong she doesn't just walk she runs but she trips over everything because she's got vision problems she can't see things that are below her eyes so she'll trip over things anything that's laying there can be plain as real to anybody but she trips over it because she doesn't see it. She doesn't see down there unless she tips her head forward and looks down. She doesn't see down there. So it's look at the ground or look in front of you when you walk. It's tough to do. Her head's like this all the time. Well, she's tube fed. I went through tube feeding for three months. And to me, that was pure hell. And they know they'll never tube feed me ever again, ever again. It's not happening. The only way they could get away with tube feeding me was would be to knock me out, to put the tube in. And then I just wouldn't eat again. They because And I wouldn't do nothing with it. I'd either starve to death or somebody else feed me through that too. I'll never touch it. I'll never touch that equipment ever again. They sent me home with this pump. No IV pole. They just sent me home with the pump. Some cartons of liquid food. A few food bags for the setup. Enough to last about a week or so. With no, no instruction other on and off on that machine. They said it's all preset for what you're supposed to get. And you learn everything in the packet we give you. They give me this packet. Now, I'm so miserable that I want to spend 90% of my time with my head supported back and my eyes closed sitting in a recliner in pain. But they want me to read these packets about how to take care of my tube feeding, how to manage my dressings, how to manage my pain meds. All these instructions and step by step by step. Did they give me the information? Yes. Did they make sure I was going to be able to read it all and be clear as a bell on it and without any hands-on helping me out? Oh, you got to do this or do that? None of that. I didn't get any of that. They just sent me home. I wasn't even home 24 hours and I was in the hospital, in the hospital at the emergency room because my food line compacted and backed up and I couldn't get it to unclog. I followed all the instructions, couldn't get it to unclog. So I spent two hours, well, no, actually it was three hours total in the emergency room while those nurses worked on it for two hours and they finally got the clog broke loose. But the nurse had figured out how to get that clog broke loose. I love her to death. <laughs> Real Coca-Cola. It's got to be name brand, Coca-Cola. That stuff you put in the big syringe, stick in the end of the tube, pump that stuff against that clog. Within 15 minutes, she goes right through. That was awesome. But all I had to look forward to for the next three months is eating this, well, not eating, being fed, this liquid stuff that smells like horse shit when you open the container and it's getting pumped right into my small intestine nowhere near my stomach 
I wasn't allowed to sip water. I couldn't take an ice chip and put it in my mouth and just suck on a nice cold ice chip for a while. Not allowed. Can't put anything in your mouth that you're going to swallow other than your own saliva in your mouth. Hey, Nabol, it's good to see you, bud. Awesome. Yeah, hey, hey. But so I come home, and for the first week I was home. Well, I wasn't even home 48 hours, and I called my youngest boy up, told him, get over here. And he goes, well, how soon do you need me over there? I said, the minute you get off work, you come straight here. Okay. He gets here, and I got all my firearms by the door. And I said, you take those firearms, get them out of the house. He goes, why? And I said, just hang on to them. And when I say bring them back, you best bring them back. He says, oh, yeah, I'll bring them back right away when you want them. But why? And I said, if I'm going to live through this, those got to get out of here. Oh, he figured it out. He figured it out real quick. Um, you bet, Justin. Enjoy. Enjoy your dinner. His sister and girls made dinner. Yeah. Go get your dinner. But it was terrible. It was terrible. Um, so I did, what I didn't like is contemplating ending my life when my life was already ending. It's just it's going to take a lot longer. It was getting beyond the pain. The pain did a lot to me. Being in that hospital was equal. I mean, in the hospital in the first week home, they were two and the same. I mean, identical. The emotional, mental state, um, it was bad. It was just bad. Um, nobody wants to go through that shit. Nobody wants to go through that shit. I had a veteran one day, so down by the post office, that him and I were chatting out on the sidewalk. Well, he's technically a disabled vet. He took three rounds. One was in the leg, one was in the abdomen, and one was in his left arm. He said the leg and the left arm he didn't think was going to be such a big deal when they told him that he's going into surgery and they're going to remove the rounds. And they said, but the biggest concern is it's the one in the abdomen. They said, tore them up pretty good. They got to stitch them and test them back together and stuff. And I said, oh, my God. He says, yeah. He said, they had to do surgery on the leg because it was a compound fracture. He said, actually, the leg hurt the worst out of all three spots. And he said, it took a while. But he said, my leg came back about 50%. The pain, that's what he's dealing with the most is the pain. And I said, probably scarred you up pretty good with that surgery on your abdomen. He grabbed his T-shirt, pulls it up. He goes, there you go. That looks nasty, don't it? Nice, clean cut. I pulled my shirt up and showed him. And he looked at me from here, right about where my shirt collar is, just below it, right here. <laughs> right about here. All the way down. And he kept looking all the way down. And he goes, he goes, um, how far did this, does that go below your belt? I said, oh, about that far. 
He just shook his head. And I turned around, kept my shirt up, turned around, showed him the right side here. It's a little deformed where the scar is. It's got a kind of a long lump along the scar. That's from a huge hematoma I had. I couldn't put my right arm down for about a month and a half, two months, because of the swelling of that hematoma along the scar. And he's looking me over, and I said, that's enough. I said, that's enough. we're in the public, you know. I put my shirt down. To have a veteran tell me that getting shot three times, having to go through abdominal surgery and surgery on his leg, he said, I'd let him do that to me three more times before I'd let anybody do what they did to you. <laughs> he goes, what did they do cutting you up like that? And I said, well, they removed a little over half of my esophagus and the top 20% of my stomach. He just shook his head and he said, that's freaking insane, insane. And it made me feel different. It really did to have this veteran got shot three times, went through all that. And thinking about the misery he went through. He was in the hospital longer than I was. 20, 22 days, I think he said. And it was mainly because of his leg. First week was because of the abdominal, and second, the couple weeks after that was because of his leg. But um, when he heard my story of the surgery, he goes, "Fuck no, fuck no! I'd rather get shot again." I didn't like hearing that. I didn't like hearing that. Uh, I still feel that if a veteran takes any kind of wound in active duty, now I have to be sure that I say that because that's an opinion I have that a lot of folks in the military and I don't agree. But if he's in active duty, and he was wounded and injured. I'm not talking about, oh, he broke his ankle jumping off of a piece of heavy equipment. Or he broke his wrist when he fell down carrying too many pots and pans in the kitchen. Well, was he in active duty? in a firing zone? Was he at risk of being shot or blown up? No, he was here in the US. But he's a wounded veteran. No, he's not. I'm sorry, he's not. I've seen too many. I've seen way too many. And I always thought, those guys that take a round, they're taking it for all of us. So that makes the pain a little more, a little harder, as far as I'm concerned. Everything I went through, I went through because I was sick, not because I was out there defending the nation. So couldn't convince him he'd rather get shot again and go through what I did. It's bad that a person would have to experience things like that to come to such a conclusion, you know. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, um, yeah, Marine Mom, what don't kill you makes you stronger. You know, and that's, that's the thing is, 
it might not make you physically stronger, but boy, it makes you mentally and morally stronger. If it don't kill you, it'll change your life and put you on a new track, put you on a new track. Um, I'm a firm believer of that. I believe I'm on a whole new track. I'm still the same old style with a couple of improvements, you know. I won't be here as long as I had hoped, but yeah, all of this misery. I I have to say, Samantha and, Je and Gemma, those two gals, they pulled this old boy out of that ditch, out of that. I was stuck in a ditch, man. I was, I would have died sooner if it wasn't for those two gals helping me crawl out of that damn ditch. Um, I just got wild here one day and got a hold of them and we had a, we had a closed Facebook chat, the three of us. And I was able to fess up to them about how I felt, what I was feeling where it was going and not going. I didn't have anybody I could tell. I didn't have anybody I could say it to. Not without hurting them. Nobody wants to hear somebody that wants to Peter Pan out of an eight story building, you know. People don't want to hear that. They don't need to hear it. It hurts people to hear that shit. But those two gals, they wouldn't, they wouldn't take no for an answer. It was, we want to know, Stein, what is going on? How are you? How are you feeling? So I fessed up, told them where I was at, and they gave me, they gave me all the support I needed, pulled myself right out of that damn ditch. And it's been rough up and down since then. But like Mar Marine Mom saying, that's great, just don't go back into it. Yeah, don't get back in that ditch. You're right, you're right. And there are some things within my control that'll help ensure that I never go back in that ditch, never get that deep into just not wanting to be here. And I haven't had one of those kind of days ever since I talked to the gals that day. I've stayed away from that damn ditch. Kept my eyes open for that ditch too. Oh, 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 there's that ditch. Don't head down there. No. Once you get in there, you can't get out. And because that's yeah, yeah, you're going down in the ditch without a shovel. There ain't no way out unless uh, you work at it and shovel your way out. And it helps to have a couple friends helping to shovel right along with you. Uh, um, and that's it, Marine Mom. Why? And they asked the key question. Marine Mom saying it hurts you worse holding it in. Thank God for them for listening. <coughs> Excuse me. That was the worst for me because I was always the sounding board my whole life. You got a problem? People would tell other people, oh, you got that's a bad problem. You should go talk to Sty. He'll help you out somehow. Um, I was the sounding board and the one that I was willing to step up and help someone out if they're down and out. Not just physically, but just being a presence and being willing to listen and then Give them a hand, help them up and back on their feet. I was not a taker. 
if I had problems, they were my problems. I didn't share with anybody what my problems were. They were mine. I'll deal with them. But if you've got a problem you can't deal with, come, go ahead, come to me. I'll see what I can do. I'll try to help you out. Now it's turned around the other way. Everybody wants to help me. Now I got one thing I can say. Our government can kiss my ass and I don't, I'm not looking for any more support from my government. I dealt with two branches of the Social Security Administration the last two months. Well, the one, been dealing with them for four months. Nothing. I can't even get responses on them. And it's getting to the point, one of the issues, if it doesn't get resolved, it's going to cost me $200 a month out of my Social Security. But yet, I don't hear from them. Nothing. No progress, nothing. I did their application the way they wanted it and everything. Do I hear anything about it? Nothing. So, the other agency, what happened there, it started with the grassroots agency here in town. Someone told me, contact this person. Boy, they can help you out, man. Especially with these governmental programs. I get a hold of her. Oh, yeah. You can this and this and this and this. And they'll probably give you this, this, and this, and this to help you out. Sounds good. Now, how do I jump through those hoops? Oh, well, you contact this organization. Contact those people. So I contact them, and I said, I'm calling about applying for this and this and this. And they go, oh, we can send you out a packet that explains what programs are available. I said, well, that's right online. But I don't don't understand which ones apply to me and which ones don't. I don't want to waste my time either. I ain't got a lot of time, so why waste it? Oh no, we'll highlight the ones you need to deal with. And what you do is when you get this packet, first thing you do is you call such and such a number. I wrote that number down. And then you go through that packet and you apply for this program and that one. And this one. I said, are you kidding me? No, no, that's, that's what you need to do. So they send me this packet and that some bitch is about that thick. It's got to be close to 50, 60 pages to it. And I'm going through it plus all of these other little inserts that are in this packet. I'm more confused than I was before I didn't know anything. <laughs> so they called me the other day and they said, oh, oh, well, we're going to have so-and-so get a hold of you. And they can come right to your home and walk you through this. I said, that's cool. I said, they were going to do that initially, but we just talked on the phone. But if I got them right here in person, I can ask them, okay, well, I got to do this, I got to do this. That's two weeks ago. They're supposed to call me. I don't need to call them. They'll call me to squeeze me in. Haven't heard a word. Two weeks. Well, I had a windfall. I sold the adventure trailer and 
my generator. Those got some last minute needs covered. And now I'm holding on to any funds that I get off sales of things that I have. And when they do contact me, I'm going to tell them, spank you very much, but you can kiss my ass. I ain't dealing with your government programs anymore and hang up on them because I'm done with them. I'm done with them. Um, hey, Mr. Fulton. Me devil. Governments want nothing from you apart from taxes as long as you don't want anything back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nothing's free. You got to pay for it one way or the other. And I figure the amount of time and effort that goes into getting denial letters constantly. Well, I just take a big chunk of my bucket list money and spend it on my needs and the hell with the government. I'm done with them. The, um, uh, old country homesteading is heading out to do some log dragon. Saw up some logs and split. Got a bunch of dead windfalls from the last storm blocking the trail in the forest. Yeah, you betcha there, Alexander. The, um, there's certain fellows that if they're closer to me, I'd say, come on over and borrow that electric splitter. Bet you're going to like it. But that's like I said, running water bought that. That's his. And that generator he bought from me will run it without a problem. So he actually he's in good shape. If he wants to take the splitter with him, go out in the woods, cut some dead wood down, buck it up. He can split the wood right on the site too. Yeah. Well, congrats there, me devil. That is good news. That's good news. I hope all goes well for you, buddy. That's, you know, I take care of yourself. Yeah, later, Alexander. Be safe out there working. You ain't got a heck of a lot of daylight left. Work hard, but work safe, right? Uh, um, yeah, I'll be wrapping it up soon here, too. Um, I had a fairly good breakfast this morning, but I haven't had any lunch, so dinner's going to taste good. I'm going to have to whip me up some dinner. The, yeah, I decided take the effort and I fried my son. I got those frozen rectangular hash browns. I throw one of them in the oven and while that bugger's cooking in the oven, I made two sausage patties, fried them up, and fried me up two eggs over easy. Put the sausage patties on that rectangular hash brown, put my two eggs over the top of it, and had at it. Oh, and I had nine grain. <laughs> my youngest boy, that's a big long discussion there we're not going there but this nine grain wheat bread it it's 
good, but I won't go buy it again. Yeah. Uh, um, I had two slices of that toast. I toasted it in butter and cherry jelly on it. And I ate all of it. This is a good size breakfast for me. It was a pretty good size breakfast. Um, only problem is, is I got dishes to take care of now. Pots and pans and utensils. I use paper plates and plastic silverware. <laughs> so I don't have to do dishes and silverware often. There are still things I use glass but plates and stuff the like for, but not much. Hey, Kenneth Beers, Irish nachos for dinner. That sounds pretty good. Yes, Marine Mom, I ate it all, all of it. Look at here. <laughs> How you doing? Just as I'm thinking of calling it a day, look at you. My, <laughs> my sweetheart oh, shows where you up. I should turn down so I could get on without it, you know, being loud. <laughs> Squeak it on us. I was all I was all confused when all those deletes. Came up. I was all confused. I thought, first of all, I don't know how the hell you can delete them all. I, I still didn't get my tablet out, and I have my tablet sitting out here. Uh, I was actually in the kitchen. I heard you say something on the TV. I uh huh. <laughs> I had my phone in there. Sure. Damn it! No. No. <laughs> no, she's actually gone on my on my tab on my computer she's yeah. walked on all keys and shit and yeah she, she like blocked Deidre one of my my best people <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Deidre's like crazy thing happened I was in passed out on the couch yeah um I, I got blocked <laughs> teaching animals how to be moderators now that's <laughs> <laughs> and Bandit Dodo was to Mother Nature's daughter who had just made me a scarf. I was doing a box opening for her. Um, she made me a scarf. She crocheted me a scarf because I, I taught, her, taught, oh. her how to, taught her how to crochet while she was here. So she made me a scarf and I was box opening and Bandit stepped on the phone and timed her out. <laughs> I timed her out, huh? Yeah. Hey, Matt, how are you? Of all people hey, to time out, the person that made me the scarf. <laughs> Well, now you guys got me wanting to hang on for a little over a half hour and just round it off at a four-hour stream. <laughs> Don't say I, you want. I have to say, I have to say, I'm just feeling hungry. Otherwise, I'm feeling good, you know. I'm so, that too. I got pizza in there. I brought home from work. Yeah, I, I running through my mind what the heck I want to have for dinner here. I bought uh, the record player today. You so bought a record player? So I can buy play my vinyls in the house. I'm the one out in the cabin is just huge. It's a great big old stereo that I use. And it won't play 78s, so I bought a record player that plays 78s. <laughs> really? Yes. Cool. Oh yes, my it's god. It's expensive, but no, this one was only like forty, forty four dollars, I think. Well, no, no. I I was gonna say it's expensive. If I could swing that, I I would ship to you all of my seventy eights. <laughs> I've got an awesome collection of seventy eights. Come pick them up. I, I had all of the. I don't have them now. I ended up selling them, but I had all the Vogue records, all the picture records, every picture record they've ever made. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's got the old that's old portable man that's sweet i guess you can actually hook it up to your bluetooth speakers and stuff so yeah it's wait I'm gonna it's, get got it the, it's got the old capabilities with the <laughs> new technology that's yeah. cool <laughs> that's cool i've got if i can get to it before it's too late um I do have one I'll send to you. Oh, 
that's a true collectible. Uh, that, there she is. She's looking at it too. Go somewhere. No. I've got a. Give me a baby. Not I've you. got an original World War Two Andrew's sister's boogie woogie bugle boy. Seven. <laughs> That's worth about six hundred bucks right now. Holy cow! Or the I one record I got a cracked one that needs to be repaired, and that one's worth about two hundred bucks, even though it's cracked. Fixing those cracked ones can be a little tricky. You got to yeah. use quarter inch steel plate. I got all my uh, rock and roll ones out in the cabin. Oh wow! Yeah, 45s. My God. I've got so many 45s. Are they getting these yard sales? Oh, yeah. They're, they're 78. And they're like, um, I can't, couldn't play them because they're all 78s. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then there's the kid one, children's books. Oh, yeah. And it's all records. Yeah. <laughs> it goes along with the book. <laughs> When I was when I was growing up, I would have been about oh I don't know about six years old. That's neat, sweet. <laughs> I the house we lived in was actually the biggest house in our community. It sat up on a big hill, huge house, two stories. Victorian style home. And everybody, everybody used to say, "Oh, that's because that's the chief of police," you know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> no. My dad got the place at a really good price, and but we had a big wooden staircase that went up to a landing. Then it turned and went all the way up. Then it went into the hallway upstairs, and at that landing. Sitting there was a the old cabinet standing 78 player crank player and a big assortment of records, 78 records. And I can remember five, six year olds old, just to piss off everybody in the house, I'd sneak down out of my bedroom on the stairs and I'd slowly crank that thing up. Oh, I love those things. You know, oh, those are good. If I wasn't lactose like intolerant. But I, AJCT. I, I cranked that thing up. And now imagine the whole family, six people, sound asleep, middle of the night. Five year old kid goes down there, cranks that old hand crank record player up. And I play, Yes, We Have No Bananas. <laughs> oh my God. My dad would be laughing his ass off. The rest of the family, <laughs> madder than hell. And I mean, to the point where they're saying, "Oh, we should, we should um, break that record, throw it away." Blah blah. Um, my dad used to break our. Then he won't play it, so he would. <laughs> and even my mother was with that. Yeah, we can get rid of that one. And I told them, "Oh, there's worse records than that that I could play in the middle of the night." <laughs> and my dad said, "Exactly, you guys don't." push them because I'll, I will agree with him. If, yes, we have no bananas gets thrown out, the whole record player gets thrown out with it. And he said, and you guys are bitching like mad, and we got a five-year-old that knows more about that record player than any of you, because he's the only one that uses it all the time. Yeah. I'll know more about computers than I did when he was in preschool, because we had 10 computers in preschool. <laughs> We didn't even have a computer yet. <laughs> That's right. Hey, JC, sweetie. My dad used to break our records and throw a tipper tantrum and go in and just whack and just take him and whack. Oh, my God. You know, he used to want, he used like to, he didn't like, like it. Frisbee. Or, uh, records. You know, I, I feel bad. I should kick myself in the ass because I'm sure some of those records were worth something. But we used to take boxes of them out, 
bring our shotguns and use them for clay pigeons. <laughs> we <laughs> pitch them up in the air and shoot them. 78 records, they just shattered. Yeah, they were fun to shoot. We shot hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds of them. The, um, but now, uh, that when I had all the Vogue records, I was amazed. I got this one ugliest damn thing in the world. It was a, like a cream color with red print, red and black print on it. And it was an advertising for some fucking milk company, some dairy. And I got it in a mix of other records I bought. And so I jump online and I start looking at valuation of them. I value somewhere I got all the records, all those, the records about the values of each of my records. <laughs> but um, I come across it, finally found it. Here's the song, bitch, as rare as can be. Rare as can be. I put it on eBay and I got $485 for that one record. Ugliest record I ever saw, picture record I ever saw. <laughs> and it wasn't a full size 78, it was a smaller one. And it was like halfway between a 45 and a 78, the size of it. It was just ugly. $485 worth of ugly. Jeez. You betcha. I sold that song, bitch. I said, you bet. I'll take the 450. But it was my record collecting at the time and record player collecting got out of hand. I, I get a bunch of classic rocks out in, the, out in the cabin that I was listening to. Yeah, I love all the old classics. stereo. You know, I can't just haul it in and out of the house. <laughs> it's a big stereo. <laughs> yeah. I had a 1950... <laughs> I was 1951, um, record player and AM radio set, where you set the record player on top of the AM radio, made out of black, black light, they call it, um, bake light. Like the camera. It's, it's like plastic, but from back in the dark ages. Well, that was the old 45, you know, you hold, six records, you know, play them one after another. And it was in mint condition. We went yeah. in, got, got all the brand new tubes and everything for it. That some bitch played like a brand new off the shelf. And Gosh, I was wondering, what the hell? There you are. <laughs> but, <a> but, the, <laughs> but that record player and the AM radio I paid 800 bucks for it and I stole it because that damn thing's worth about $2,800. Oh, and, and it got destroyed. Oh, man. It got destroyed. I started um, looking at vinyls at like sales and stuff and those secondhand yeah. stores. It was like, I'll never get out of there. <laughs> so, I had offers on that record player too. I wish the hell. Oh my friend got a Superman one. He took pictures up and put up on Instagram. That's a really old Superman one. <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I had I had the old one from the a uh, high school. It had the high school name written on it and its address and everything. And but it's one of those record players back in our day. They had in every classroom. And it had the big speaker in the front and had the big oh, lid lid you took off of it and that thing played on any speed record and get over here i looked and looked for one from the 19 sure. early 1960s yeah. that they had in every school throughout the 60s and it was a bitch to find one i found one and i would i was so fucking happy i got that that one for sixty dollars, I was thrilled. I'm just like, oh my god! I feel like I'm back, kid back in school listening to these <laughs> records. Uh, yeah, I I think about it. You know, I was the other day I was just talking with somebody and reminiscing. They said they they wanted 
wanted me to do a summary of my life. Weird. <laughs> no, I, I didn't get past sixth grade. <laughs> I told him I'm trying to summarize. His legs wrapped around my arm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. He's, he's willing to wrestle. <laughs> but yeah, the, so we're reminiscing. They asked me, they said, what was the first school that you went to like? And I said, it was odd. It, there's this big building, but it's still only a single floor, but it's a full two stories high. Look more like a church and only had 40 desks in it. And yeah, pop, 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 pop. my daughter body needs <laughs> uh, But the very first school I went to, and it was the first month of schooling, it was a one room schoolhouse. It's an old country style one room <laughs> schoolhouse. But they built this big, brand new elementary school right next to it. I mean, it was like only 50 feet away from it. And then they opened the new elementary school. And then I, kindergarten in the one room schoolhouse. And then we, boy, we thought it was modern. We moved into it. It was kind of like that for me too. We moved, into a, we moved into a building that had telephones for Christ's sake. Oh, God, you got to be kidding. Wow. In that old one room school house, there was no telephone in there. <laughs> they couldn't call your parents when you're being bad, you know. <laughs> the new school, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. I thought about that forever. So I <laughs> a classroom for each age group instead of splitting it up. Well, we got six desks for high schoolers. We've got so many for the middle school schoolers and we get so many for the grade schoolers and us kidney kindergartners they put us as far away from those high schoolers as possible i think it was called lincoln, lincoln elementary uh, <laughs> oh my gosh I don't even the names of all the schools i went to i remember <laughs> some of them but not all of them i i went to uh, Elizabeth Gardner, that was elementary. Then Shirley Hills was up to the sixth grade. Then the Mound Junior High, and then the West Honka Senior High. Well, I went to Junior High, the Mount, was that Grandview? Yeah, Grandview Junior High. And then I went to Mount Senior for, that was a weird deal too. Went there for a month and then they moved us all to the new West Tonka Senior High. And one of the most advanced high schools in the state of Minnesota with a delinquency rate of about 45%. <laughs> we were a nasty bunch of kids in that school. And they give us the highest tech school in the state. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is that air conditioner loud? Does that sound loud? No. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering if people were going to complain this afternoon because my ceiling fan's got a squeak to it. Well, can't even hear it. <laughs> uh, it Mine does not. It's not bothering me. I just it's put not, a few I years mean, I, I hear it, but it's not bothering me. I... Next time running water's home, I'm going to get them to put a new ceiling fan in the living room where my hospital bed's at with a remote. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. I want everything remote, and I want it on my hospital table there. I got one of them hospital tables for my bed now, too. I tell you, it's the best goddamn recliner in the world. I would have owned one of them for the last 40 years, man. I tell you, you want the best recliner in the world, you buy yourself a hospital bed, put it in your living room. 
I feel nice with the just the just really good. Yeah, that, <laughs> it's actually not about pulling it out here to sleep in. <laughs> you can't beat it, man. You know, I mean, just me for granted that me and all the cot. <laughs> and this this bed, I got camo sheets on it. You know, fitted sheet, top sheet. I can't bump <laughs> her over the whole thing on so top of that. <laughs> on top of that, I got a huge plush body pillow that I can snuggle up to. And I got camo head pillows too. And, and I've got, I got an American flag, American flag with an eagle. American flag with an eagle draped over two thirds of it. I bet you, you just you get never in. guess there's a hospital bed in there. You look in there and you go, what the hell is that? It's too big to be a recliner. What the hell you is just appear because you got camo jammies on, huh? Exactly. Oh, I can do that too. <laughs> you know <laughs> you. I can do that too. I go. I've got I've got I think <laughs> I've got four camo Pajama jammers, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Throw on a camo t shirt and a pair of them camo <laughs> pajama pants. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be wearing that shit and be outdoors. I could die out there under a bush somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it would take them three weeks to find my ass, you know? The, I, know I know he was here last week, but haven't seen him since. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, that too is yeah. If I wore all cam camo jammies, man, crawled in that bed, I could really scare some fucking people, man. Yeah, yeah. Walk, oh, he ain't here. He ain't here. Listen to their conversation, then jump up and say, "I heard all that shit." You'll have to get the old Nintendo Duck Hunt game out or something from the bed. <laughs> the old Duck Hunt. Old Duck Hunt. Jesus Christ, Duck Hunt. <laughs> that, caused, that caused more fucking... We had so much fun with Duck Hunt, but it also caused it more did. fucking family fights than any other game. <laughs> There's no way you hit that fucking duck. Yes, I did. I hit the duck. I got a bunch of fuck you. Yeah, fight over the duck hunt, man. Yeah. Oh, man, you bring that shit up. Now we're cranking her back. Like, cranking her back. <laughs> the old flurries with Pong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tennis game. Just the little, little thingies that go back and forth. <laughs> yeah. What's embarrassing is the fact that I used to pay to play that down at our, our arcade in town. When the arcade first started, it was just pinball machines, pool tables, and, and, um, the fuck? Um, I'm pissed. Uh, what game are you thinking of? Um, you know, it's like soccer. Um, oh, the ones where you, you foosball. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Foosball machines. I and what why it was pissing me off was I was Minnesota foosball champ. Well, it was a shared title. Um, because we were in teams. And but but yeah, we got a trophy as Minnesota champs in foosball. We we went around to bars all over the state of Minnesota and competed in foosball tournaments and and me and my buddy were really good. Boy, we were good. But then I was the manager for almost a full year of that arcade. So Auntie, how you doing? Happy Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Scum TV's back. Yes. The um, but yeah, man, I can. I just, I, I think, that, boy, that puts me back to 1974. I was the bouncer for that arcade, arcade, and that was a 
nasty freaking place, man. I, as far as I'm concerned, fuck them teenagers. I ain't fuck them. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I walked around with a nightstick and I had a three inch wide belt. At the end of it, it was fringed at the end. At the end of it, it was like a cat of nine tails because I had six steelies drilled out and tied on into those tails. And that was just to keep it peaceful in the place. Man, that nightstick I used every night, man. I was hitting somebody. The place hellacious, man. We had two riots in there where they called in all local of three communities, ours and the two near us, and the full sheriff's department, every spare cop they had, and they brought a school bus down for the people they were taking in the country. <laughs> so here we got this big fucking riot going on in the goddamn arcade. I mean, and I'm out there trying to defend the pinball machines, foosball machines, pool tables, they can live through that shit. Not the pinball machines. They break the glass in those pinball machines. Holy shit. The cleanup and the cost. Oh my God. The, um, and time, it was a, those kids never realized what they had, man. We had a big stage, had a, it had an actual, Twenty-nine thousand dollars back in nineteen seventy-four. Baby grand piano up on the stage. Oh wow! One of the riots and fucking kids busted the legs off of it, and one of them took one of the legs and managed to smash the strings and the tuning brackets on about a third of the piano. It cost you. It cost the owner of the place. What was it, eleven grand to get that table repaired? And I said, and he puts it, has them deliver it back down there. I said, no, get that son of a bitch out of this arcade. You'll yeah. just do it again. He just had one of those. <laughs> You know the problem with those doggy snacks like you're showing off there? <laughs> they look like they're people food. I think they do. They do. They smell good. They, <laughs> I, I got mad at our Walmart and they fixed it right away. They did. You I could tell I could tell they set it up, just set it up. They set it up at the end of one of their checkout aisles. <laughs> I go, no, no. Candy, no, no. candy <laughs> chips and pop. That, oh you know, they got the jerky and stuff there. Yeah, yeah the jerky's <laughs> all there. Beef sticks. I'll, and tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Right next to it, doggy treats. <laughs> and they look like people food packaging. Put a dog on it, a big dog on it or something. But no. Hey, look at the dog on this one. <laughs> Not good enough. It just looks like somebody's dog is stealing there. <laughs> hey, I, I went to the beef jerky aisle in the snack section to get some beef jerky. And I saw this bag. It said turkey jerky. I'm like, oh, wow, they got turkey jerky now. I said, I'm going to get that. I get home. Dog food. It. It's dog treats. Yeah. Son <laughs> of a bitch. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Somebody put this turkey dog. I make chicken jerky. It was a people one. Yeah. Everybody knows my chicken jerky. I was so upset. I bet. I bet. I was like, wow, I'm thinking I'm getting some jerky jerky and nope. <laughs> dog treats. Hey, Mystic Bunny. Good to see ya. Cheers, Mystic Bunny. They're looking at it. <laughs> they're they're looking at it. I didn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, think like I was so late, man. I fell asleep when I got here today. <laughs> I was shocked. Yeah. Fell asleep, woke up. I was like, oh my God, Sty's on. It's like two o'clock. <laughs> oh, don't feel bad. Last week, there was a day I couldn't freaking believe it. Could not freaking believe it. I, I slept 
part of the night, and I woke up, and I'm going, Jesus, sun's not up yet. And I couldn't see the clock. The lights were all off. I said, oh, fuck it. I just grabbed my game controller and I t- <laughs> turned on the PlayStation and started playing a game. When the sun's finally come up, I'm looking at the clock. I'm going, oh, shit. I got to get more than three hours to sleep, man. So I shut it down, go to sleep at 7 o'clock in the freaking morning. And I goddamn woke up at 9.30 that night. Wow. Jeez. I wish and I it, that long. Oh, my God. I haven't slept like that forever. And and guess what? I couldn't sleep. Three weeks ago, a little more than three weeks ago, I couldn't sleep. I was lucky if I was getting two hours a night. And... That's for you. I was, I was so uncomf- so uncomfortable trying to sleep, and it seemed like my CPAP machine was what was screwing me up. So I decided I'm going to try for a night without CPAP, and I didn't use my CPAP machine, and I got eight hours of sleep. Wow. Well, then I decided we'll try two nights. I got seven hours the next night. The third night, I got nine hours. And then I realized, wait a minute, I'm taking a nap in the afternoon for about an hour each of those days, too. And I feel great. So I haven't been using the CPAP machine ever since. (laughs) My doctors, the respiratory doctors, will have a fucking cow over that. But I ain't using it. That's well, somebody because I tried going back on it three nights ago. I got four hours that I just laid in fucking bed awake. I couldn't couldn't get myself to fall asleep wearing that CPAP mask anymore. My son is not used to that. He he was only getting like four hours a night. Suddenly he's, he sleeps like nine. <laughs> I yeah. I, I used to need it. I, I definitely needed it. That was the only thing that was getting me eight hours a night it was that CPAP machine because of the apneas. <laughs> well, all of my apneas woke me up, you know, and <laughs> not one. I haven't had a single apnea without that machine where I wake up going, ah, oh, oh, God, I, almost, I thought I was suffocating. No, none of that shit. And sleep like a million bucks. Water? Nah. <laughs> Take you water too, honey. It's a holiday. I mean, that's next week, so got to prepare. <laughs> holiday weekend next week. I woke Liver's up at 2 o'clock. What the heck day is today? What is this? Delivers on vacation. <laughs> like, oh, it's Sunday. <laughs> Now, what what's a holiday next week? Labor Day. Labor Day. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's when. That's when the uh, um, the peds department's real busy at the hospital, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maternity ward's real busy. Yeah. Labor. <laughs> I'm that labor. Is that? Ain't that the day? I guess, I guess maybe it's not the same day. Okay. That, that's when all the, the that's when all the biological women have babies. <laughs> I've been I've been hitting your Facebook posts with likes and laughs, man. I know. I see it. I see it. <laughs> I can't help myself with some of them. I get. Uh, I guess some. I guess some messages from um, running water. Sometimes oh, yeah. like four or five o'clock in the morning because I'm still awake. <laughs> we were chatting for a little while the other night. So drinking without you, Kawhi. <laughs> <laughs> it might be right onto, onto something there, Kawani. <laughs> yes, in my sleep. <laughs> right, Marie Mom, yes. 
he steals yeah, a lot get, of them from you. <laughs> I get some of my memes from Guani. I get them from like all over the place. Yeah, I noticed because you know when you repost, mm -hmm. which okay. you t you typically don't do it just a quick repost, but but the ones you do, I can see who the original poster was, and I've seen a few yeah. from Guani. You know that you got it from yeah. me i don't give a shit where you get them man you got me laughing my ass off a few times there i'm going i, mean, I love it i love it yeah it, say it, that it, out on the street corner <laughs> in san francisco <laughs> <laughs> the, the ones that i personally make say ghost rider 7-eleven faded in the background in them <laughs> like, like i did with um the arrest in georgia uh-huh I copied i still copied a lot of the images from the live video and i made them into memes yeah running water got in trouble because he was live streaming just like we are right now he was live streaming from his truck and i can't remember which riot it was that he had to drive through with this truck and he's <laughs> live and if she's there's all this carnage and he's driving through that shit fuck i can't wait to get out of here and <laughs> Jeez. fucking youtube took it down for misinformation what what the yeah. heck how can it be how can it be misinformation when it's fucking live <laughs> huh. live real life you can't life. make that shit up i mean it, it's live stream it's not <laughs> He hasn't had a chance to tinker <laughs> with it. Yeah. Well, I think I'm still on Facebook restrictions, though. Are you? Yeah. Better be careful. They'll throw you in jail, you know. Okay. Yeah, Facebook jail. I didn't post it, but I, like, pulled it up like I was going to just so I could copy the image. And be, I didn't press send or anything because I, I deleted it, but I didn't even post it. And Facebook gave me like a 90 day warning. Oh, geez. Hi, good <laughs> Mike. Good to see you, buddy. And I didn't even post the thing. It's pretty bad when they. <laughs> hey, Mike. When they're looking at shit that you haven't even posted. Mm hmm. Uh, I did find out, and this is no shit. I watch a lot of shit on YouTube, you know, and I'll sit here in the middle of the night and I'll be watching shit. Well, I was watching all these shorts on YouTube, and I'm not going to say what topic they were about, but it's a very controversial topic nowadays. And a lot of really strong conservatives, right? Stay safe, Mike. And I'm hitting the like button on all of them. Yeah, hang on there, Mike. Stay safe. Stay safe. Uh, he's got a hurricane heading this way. But I'm hitting the like on all these shorts that were, like I said, they're all a single topic and, and yeah. You don't want to get like that in LA. Yeah. But all of a sudden, nothing is coming up anymore when I pull Facebook or YouTube up and I go down to the shorts. All of it is all liberal stuff. All of it. I scroll down those shorts, it goes flying through them. Liberal, liberal, liberal. Mm -hmm. Not let me see any conservative shit anymore. So if wow. I don't know, if I don't know the the name of the video, mm -hmm. I can't find it. The it's like, oh no, you're gonna watch what we want you to watch. Yeah, you that's know? not happening on my end. <laughs> and it's starting to loosen up, get back to where, where out of five there'll be one conservative thing, and it's like, okay, it's coming back, you know, but. Damn, for about two weeks there, I couldn't find anything conservative at all because I 
just hammered it that one night. And I think it's because the algorithm is really watching for who's hitting the likes, who's hitting the likes, who's hitting the likes. And they targeted me because I showed that I liked every one of them. <laughs> Uh, See what I, I usually do is I, I I'll find one. <laughs> every, everything underneath it will all be like pretty much the same mm-hmm. or related. Lonnie, um, be careful! I'll put you in timeout. Lonnie, woman <laughs> charts. Yeah, I don't like that term charts anymore. Loved it as a kid, you know. Oh, yeah, you 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 thought wrong. You just sharted the hell out of yourself. You know? <laughs> But now with my condition, when I do my chemo for three days, don't say shard around me. Life's tough enough making sure you don't shard. I mean, don't, <laughs> wanna, don't even talk about it. It's, it's, it's what I'm looking and nobody's got one, so I'm going to have to have one made. I want a little plaque to put on the wall in the living room. Why not put it right in the living room? That that um, that references to keep an open path. Keep an open path. Otherwise, you can clean my shorts. Okay. He, he retract. He retracted it. <laughs> he retracted it. Yeah, he did. Oh, he didn't have to. No, he didn't have to. The chart was a typo. I, oh, I'm sure it was. Yeah, no, that was a fucking typo. <laughs> get away with that shit. The, um, everything else is going to hell, but my mind is sound. <laughs> well, it's still intact. It's still intact. Sound, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> when I came right out and told that guy a couple of weeks ago out front of the post office that, or no, at Walmart. You know, the dude with the masks in his car by himself. Yeah, yeah. Himself. When, I, when I told him I also own a 9 millimeter, and you seem to be the biggest asshole in town. I'll, I go get that. I kill you, and I'll be happy. Mm-hmm. Three hots in a cot, and life's life. And I've always said it in just here on the channel, never said it publicly to somebody, and it slipped out. I must have thought I was on YouTube or something. You know, I was at Walmart. You know, that's just like being on YouTube. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen two. I saw a Karen and a Ken in the last week at Walmart. <laughs> Raising hell. Only then, one of each? Yeah. Only one of each. But see, wow. my my trips to Walmart, I know exactly what I want. It's zoom, 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 zoom. Mm-hmm. And he's out of here. The, um, there was this couple in the parking lot the one time I was over there. And they're arguing. And I could hear the gal say to the guy, Jesus Christ, you're so loud, the whole parking lot can hear you. And I thought, I don't know, even think him or her realized she's right. Like, because you're six aisles away from me in your car, and I can hear every word you say it. <laughs> Just yelling at each other. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I can hear this. Boom, 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 boom. And the music getting louder and louder. And then I hear him, hear him scream at her. You all, you told me you didn't want anybody else hearing us. <laughs> 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 yeah, assholes over there cranking the music up on her so we don't have to hear. Her. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. But then you have to yell so everyone hears you anyway. <laughs> right. Right, because I could hear him yelling. I turned it up because you didn't want anybody else hearing us. <laughs> yeah, keep it up. Let's see how loud your radio can actually get. I don't think it'll cover her up because, boy, was she a loud one, too. Yeah. 
the um, it's funny. It's funny. You see these damn fools. I mean, that's like that one woman when I told her, I said, she says, you know, you should mind your own business. I said, Jesus Christ, if I can see it or hear it, it becomes my business. And I said, and I can see your fat ass and hear your fat ass screaming at this other gal. The other gal's standing there like, like a spanked five-year-old <laughs> and you're standing here at 400 pounds screaming and hollering at this woman because she didn't take care of her dog right or some shit and i and she goes i have the right and before she could say anything more i go to be stupid <laughs> he said because you're making a fucking fool out of yourself anybody that sees what you're doing is leaving saying if i ever see that woman again i'm gonna wait until she's gone then i'll go in that store because i said you're making a total fool out of yourself but she didn't know what to say just go blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, put a cheeseburger in your mouth and go home. <laughs> Damn it. Why do you have to get every... And she goes, well, management came up and told her, you, you're going to have to totally shut up or leave. And she goes, well, I don't understand why everybody's mad at me. And I said, isn't that a good point to think about? If everybody in here wants you to either shut up or leave, doesn't that tell you you're in the wrong? Mm -hmm. It's a little obvious. There's nobody in here that disagrees. You need to shut up or leave. I think they should put like an upper deck and serve alcohol like in, in the Walmart stores. You know, I'll sit up there and, like, watch all the, the Karens and Kens. I'll pay just like a movie ticket. Mm hmm And you give me four hours for that day. And I get to go sit up there, but I can get all the snacks and shit. And yeah. Maybe have a beer or two. <laughs> and you don't just have upper deck live right there looking down you got crts for around the store so you can see what you can't yeah. see in that deck you can see the rest of the store too and, oh they make money i gotta i got actually i have a meme like that somewhere but i don't know which one of my folders it's in it's it's like you know oh i'd love to take you out will you go on a date with me well, where, where would you take me? We're going to Walmart to the upper <laughs> deck. Oh, you bet I'm going with you. <laughs> yeah, let's do Walmart. Let's do Walmart dinner tonight. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Um, yeah. yeah. He's always on vacation. That, that's the thing is, have you noticed, too, most of our disasters are when he's at his beach house or he's on vacation. Mm -hmm. Most of the disasters happen when he's out of the White House. And it's only because he's rarely in the White House. And I don't get it. I don't get it. I do not get it. I live with my son and I pay him rent every month, right? That's the only thing, right thing to do. When these kids of mine, my four kids, when they come running back home after they're grown up, they moved out, they got their own place, they're doing their own thing, and then they F up and they call up, Dad, can I come home? <laughs> what do you mean come home? This ain't your home. <laughs> You don't live here anymore. This ain't your home. 
Oh, you know what I mean. I need to come home. Okay, here's the scoop. 250 a month. Oh, which bedroom do I get? They never argue about the rent. Because <laughs> they know they ain't coming if they ain't paying rent. Because this ain't, no, this ain't a flop house. You want to come and visit? Even if it's a day or two or three, cool, because you're still leaving. But if you want to live here, bring your shit here, and use this address, where's the rent? And use the electricity and the water. And right, the right, exactly. So I move into my son's house, and right away I bring up to him, well, how much rent do you need? Well, I can, yeah, that's great. That's what I'm paying at the apartment that I got. I, and I get the same, actually, I get more benefit than that fucking apartment. You know, they, they're paying all the utilities and all that. My rent, here, all the utilities and everything is covered, except there's more covered. The internet's covered by him. I've got a yard that I didn't have an apartment. And I got to use all his fucking toys. <laughs> I was going to drag his mini bike out the other day, but I got distracted. Damn it! The um, but but so if a parent has to live with a kid, pay your kid rent to live there. If your kid's got to live with you and they're an adult, make them pay you some rent. You can give them a deal. You know, knock it twenty five dollars or twenty five dollars. 25% low market rate, you know. If the average apartment's renting for for 800 bucks, let them move into your place for 600 you know. Or if you want to be real kind to them, give it to them for half that. Tell them, yeah, you'll pay 400 bucks to live here. Half of what you would, would have paid anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But you do have to pay the 400 bucks. And if you fall behind more than 30 days, pack your shit. You better plan on it. You just, <laughs> because you, you're not, you're you're a tenant. You you ain't getting away with not paying fucking rent. The, the, uh, yeah, Matt, when he fell asleep in that spot. He's always falling asleep. Oh, that son of a bitch was, he was deep sleeping, man. Sitting there at that table and he just, mm -hmm. said, I've been there. I've been there. But I was <laughs> where nobody could really notice me. And it was an event that I shouldn't have been at in the first fucking place. I was kind of forced to be yeah. there. Probably and, drinking up ice cream cones. That's <laughs> I want to be the fucking president or, or a goddamn <laughs> senator or representative. I mean, president, Sonny. Well, for why, do all, <laughs> why do all these Democrat politicians <laughs> brag about their fucking ice cream? I mean, <laughs> I don't get it. What's her name? Pelosi. She's got that fucking goddamn gourmet ice cream that costs you about $40 a quart. And she's showing it up. This is a nice hot day. Oh, it's nice to have my freezer door open. And I'm going to have some of this fucking ice cream that you'll never afford to buy. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> Shut up. I hope your fucking power goes out and your all your ice cream melts. You son of a bitch. And Not then the there's and Biden looks like some senile. You got dementia. Yeah, he looks like some senile old fart that the family came and we got to get him out of the nursing home for a day. <laughs> and they take him to an ice cream parlor and he's got a big old double scooper and he, he he's licking it. And, 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 and it's like, all right, all right, all right. Now, if you took him back to the nursing home with that ice cream, they'd do him a big favor. They'd take his teeth out and put him in the cup and let him suck on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But no, they take him out in public, and you can see him 
sucking on that ice cream cone with no teeth yeah. in the nurse home. Yeah, put a bib and, on them, though. Yeah, and that too. They should. <laughs> they every time they show him in a restaurant, he should be wearing a big fucking bib. Bib, <laughs> one of those with the big old catch basket in it for the little kids, you know. <laughs> and a little baby baby spoon, the one with the little rubber coating on it. Yeah, and it's hanging from a string, you know. <laughs> You know, and the thing is, is people say you shouldn't be making fun of the old guy like that. I'm not making fun of the old guy like that. I'm making fun of the fact that there are morons out there that think when you reach that kind of condition that you're able to run a country. The only place you can see that shit is in a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. You ain't seeing that in a democratic society. Somebody that obviously doesn't have all of his functions. I mean, he just don't. And I swear to God, I swear to God. I wonder. I bet they're expensive, too, because I'm sure they're custom made. But he's wearing some kind of depends. I know he is. Oh, yeah. I seen a couple of pictures where he was kind of bending over and looked like it had that extra depend bulge, yeah, that extra padding, you know. And and the um they're keeping him in the White House what they expect. Yeah. Yeah, that they don't want him out. Fuck no, yeah. Otherwise, nursing homes would let the patients wander out of the nursing home. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's the if they white in the nursing home. The the other people in the nursing home would probably willingly leave on their own just to get yeah. away from them. Yeah, that too. That too. A lot of a lot of them old. Those old cronies. They still got all their wits, but they just their bodies going to shit. I oh, know. Give me a walker or some fucking thing. I'm going for a long walk. That assholes in the day room, you know, <laughs> trying to get me to vote to vote for him to be president for a fourth term. <laughs> Can you imagine if we didn't have a maximum of two terms? And they kept re-electing that old bastard right up until he died. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Things would go to shit. They would go to shit. The, and that's that's the worst part is even Trump has alluded to it. He, he, he's, he's, he's admitting that he can't fix it for years. You know, it's at it's beyond that point. It's unfixable. I like that new that new guy, Razamani or whatever the fuck his name is. He he might have a goofy name, but I like his approach. I like his approach. He's just trying to save himself. I I think he should. Um, Who gives a shit about? Is that that um, the Vidic guy? He, yeah. Yeah, I I've. Read up, well, not read up. I, I've watched a couple of videos like from Johnny Benson and stuff like that. They kind of like them, but they're not quite sure about them because they kind of got like a bad feeling he might like be a little switch hitter. <laughs> I don't know why? A switch hitter. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. He's going to take a bad swing after he's in. Right. Yeah. Well, see, and that's the thing with all of these newcomers coming up. Um, the governor of Florida was a big one for me. I just, I really like the Santas, man. But there's some things that he slipped with mm -hmm. that I've said, son of a bitch, he'd be really good in this arena. But over in this arena, he'll fuck that up. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm seeing across all, almost all of those candidates, all of them, all the way from Trump, all the way to the guy that didn't qualify. You know, <laughs> I'd, lo I'd love to, 
Wouldn't that be funny, man? Go out there and just pound it, pound it, pound it. Get yourself to the dis de debate stage. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to your turn, they ask you a question. Go off on a tirade. You wouldn't believe what I've done in my life. Man, I ran over the neighbor's cat. It was the ugliest cat you ever seen. I hated <laughs> that son of a bitch. I ran over that son of a bitch. And then they went and had an ugly kid. And I ain't going to fess up, but some, somebody hit that kid, too. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> and I worked for this guy one day, uh, uh, one time. And I, I, I yeah. You know, he was doing really good in his business. And then all of a sudden, one day, he was missing a couple hundred grand. And he folded, had to shut his business down. I don't know how the hell that happened. I do remember, though, when he told me I was fired, I said, oh, thanks. I was going to quit tomorrow anyway. So, and try to get by. Well, I think I can get by just fine for a couple of years. Yeah. I wonder where that 200 grand went. But anyway, Kenneth Beer says Stai for president. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I got some goddamn many skeletons in my fucking closet. Well, the, the Tucker Carlson. I'd love, to, I'd love to have them do an investigation on me. They'd hire a special counsel, do an investigation on me. I guarantee you within 30 days. And they wouldn't even be done with those investigations until four or five years after my second term. There's so much that they could find on me that they'd be so fucking busy just trying to put a case together. They'd say, we can't even think of what his punishment should be. Kippers! Yum, yum. <laughs> num, num, num. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got four four cans up in the cupboard. Hmm. Four cans. That's I usually have six. I got eight. them in different kinds too. I got the um, in the yellow package. I was, yeah. Yellow can. Uh, it's still raining pretty good outside here. A little bit of thunder. But yeah, the Tucker Carlson and Trump interview so far on Twitter it's got like over about 216.45 million views. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. All ourselves, that's what I got up in the cover. Where they am in toes and some oysters. <laughs> oh, oysters. I got it. God damn it. I'm out of oysters. I like to get the jumbo smoked oysters. Because <laughs> if I get the regular smoked oysters, there's just small enough I can put two on a cracker. <laughs> yeah. If I get the jumbo, they're just big enough to put one on a cracker. <laughs> and and that's one thing I got. I got two boxes, full boxes of saltines, and two one pack that's out and one open pack. Can't forget the crackers. I got. Man, crackers, kippers, oysters, oh, shit, yes. And, then, and you mentioned last week, I think it was you, <laughs> mentioned potted meat. Oh, yeah, yep. <laughs> about three days ago or four days ago. <laughs> I was taking around to my stuff, and sure as hell, I still had a can of potted meat. And right, yeah, right so. under it was a can of Vienna sausage. <laughs> so I popped open the Vienna sausage, threw it in the frying pan, got it all browned up, threw some barbecue sauce on them, and, <laughs> and I put those in a bowl. Come in the living room with a pack of crackers and that potted meat and the Vienna sausages, and I'm watching an old John Wayne movie. <laughs> Eat potted meat. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> you talk about somebody would have walked in on me. They would go, What? There's something wrong with that old fucker. That? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to reminisce back in the day. You know? <laughs> I mean, fuck. He used to do that all the time. 
<laughs> Man, potted meat saved me a few times after a bad drop. I mean, yeah. I could sit there and eat potted meat and crackers all day after a bad drunk, and it, yeah, it went down good. And I, 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 I oh, oh I have, I now have, I gotta go I get those. <laughs> I have some smoked clams, I think it is. Clams. Oh. Instead of like natives got oysters, I got the clam one. Ooh, clams pretty I, good. Too. My grandmother used to make oyster stew, and she'd buy these oysters, and, and she'd make her cream, for, you know, it was a white cream based, and she'd throw carrots, corn, like 90 and, degrees here. and potatoes in there, and simmer that for a couple hours until all the veggies were nice and tender, and then she'd add those oysters into it, stir that all up, lots of salt and pepper. And everybody in the family, grandma would say, oh, you want to join me for lunch? I'm having oysters. <laughs> oysters, too. And they're just like, oh, oyster oh, stew. oh my God. Hey, we're not eating that shit. Oh, fuck. I belly right up the table. Come on, grandma. Big bowl. Give me a big bowl. <laughs> I always ate shit that, uh, well, even my mother. When I was a kid, you got, you know, so many people, kids sick, give them chicken soup. My mother didn't give me chicken soup. She gave me cream mush. And I loved that shit so much, I would ask for it for breakfast, especially during the school year. 80 degrees, yeah. <laughs> Light, Light rain or thunder. The, but cream mush, that that that's weird, man. Because you pour so what you do is you pour like half and half cream. You pour cream in a kettle, mm -hmm. and you get it nice, nice and hot. But you don't want it simmering or boiling because you don't want it to burn in the pan. You gotta keep stirring it. And then you start adding flour, sifted flour. And you keep stirring it until it thickens. And, it, and so it's almost at a, almost like a pudding stage. And then you take that. And there's so many ways that we ate it. Heck, we, we eat that with just a with just a slab of butter on it with a little bit of brown sugar sprinkled over it. I like mine with cinnamon, brown sugar, a little bit of nutmeg, and a big slab of butter on it. And holy shit, that stuff was good. And it's only two fucking ingredients. Goddamn milk and flour, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I used to cook my pork chops in cream of mushroom. Oh, yeah, slow cooker, man. I'm still waiting for Justin to send me that beer, beer cheese soup recipe. <laughs> oh, you got a beer cheese soup recipe? It's Justin, he's been supposed to send it to me forever. <laughs> I want it, man. <laughs> we have a restaurant just across the border. <laughs> I go over to Michigan for no other reason than to go to that restaurant and if you ordered their large bowl of soup, that fucker was as big as a dinner plate and about that deep. It sounds strange, but I'll send it to you if he ever sends it to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Copy it to me, would you? Because <laughs> yeah. I yeah. love it. They had the yeah. best beer cheese soup, and then they closed the fucking restaurant. I was so pissed off. Just I ask him how much he, um, he cares about his other leg. You might get it quicker. <laughs> Ask him how much he values his other leg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't say you're going to whack it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, he might, I don't know. I might get it even faster. Uh, tell, yeah. him, tell him you're going to beat him. <laughs> yeah. Just you don't want me to whack off your other leg. 
Say yes. <laughs> I'm not going to be nice about it. <laughs> it's not going to be as pleasurable as you think. <laughs> I had somebody the other day ask me, what the hell? Because we're talking about genetics. They said, give me a definition of a hormone. I said, well, that's pretty easy. They said, it's not that easy. I said, no, it's very easy. After you have paid sex, wipe your dick off on our curtains. And they said, what the hell are you talking about? I said, that'll make a hormone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a genuine moment. I don't have a fake one. <laughs> yeah. Hey. That joke falls right in line with the difference between a nun and a prostitute in the same bathtub. What's the difference between the two? One of them has hope in her soul. <laughs> I'm not going to say what the other one's got. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's it it has something to do with soap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably in a hole. <clears throat> You know I'm doing well when I'm willing to spit some of that shit out, you know. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. That old sty fucker boy. I've heard that sound bitch before. I didn't hear that going around. When I'm dead and gone, they'll go, it's about time that dirty-minded old fart got off. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, um, yeah, I got to I gotta get all my shit in order. I, I told Running Water next time he's home, I, I give him a list of all my passwords, everything I got. And I'll give them lessons on, on how to get on here and run a stream on in the studio here. And so he can come in here and run a stream telling you guys, yeah, the old man's gone. Bye, you guys. You know? And I said, well, you know, we don't want, we don't need to do that shit too soon, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? And he goes, well, no. He says, if you do it now, you won't have to do it later. He says, because I'll lock that shit up in my vault. And he's got a vault in the other room. And I said, oh, I get it. I get it, yeah. He says, and then you can just get rid of it. So nobody, if anybody manages to hack into your machine, they can't find your list of passwords. Yeah, yeah, I can live with that shit. I got the combo to his vault anyway. Uh, does it do any good to steal from him and then spend money on shit that's going to be his when I die? That's <laughs> stupid. Just tell him to buy it, you know. I, then I can stay honest, you know. <laughs> the, Someone, that was something somebody asked me a while back too. Was what's it like living with your old with your son? I said I don't know. He's hardly home. I've I've been here for almost two year, full years. And I, said, I really don't know what it's like to live with him. I said I put up with him five times a year, but I don't live with him. <laughs> you know, he's on the road. Always on the road. In fact, this one, this one deal with Social Security, they got to know 
everything I pay out, everything I bring in, every penny off of YouTube, whatever. And they were asking me, what is provided for that $300 a month when you're, when you rent? I said, everything. And they said, okay, so electric and utilities, heat, and water and sewer. I said, that and everything else. And they go, what do you mean? I said, furniture, TVs, my stu half my studio. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I get everything for my rent. Mm -hmm. I, don't tell me my rent is too high. Don't tell me that that it's not worth it. I know a lot of people that if you're if you're in good physical shape and you slip into this deal with running water, holy shit, you got it made. You got it made because. If I was in better health, all of these Amazon boxes, I think I'm up to 17 in here. And there's 27 in our back porch right now uh, that all have to be broke down and taken to the recycling center. I just watch that pile grow every time running water comes home. I haven't had the energy to break them boxes down. Well, I'll have it next week. I'll break them fuckers down next week. Uh, it's not a lot of work, but it takes a lot of time, you know. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I get them all bundled up, the bundle's going to weigh about 40 pounds. So I got to drag that out to the out to our shed. And our shed is getting so full, too. Everything, just so much shit. I got so much shit. I wish I could get somebody to come over here. Start pulling shit out of my adventure trailer. Put it on tables, and I'll go. This price, price just make a list. It would be what, what I'm willing to sell it for. List it on Mar Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, and just get rid of that shit. And someone asked me, "Well, why aren't you listing it all?" I said, "That's the problem. I got so much of that shit that I should be holding a garage sale, a big yard sale." But to set up a yard sale, fuck, I, I couldn't do it. There's no way I could get it done. Doing it through Facebook and Craigslist, now I got to put up with all the texts and messages and shit. <laughs> yeah. Be here 24 hours a day to show that shit to everybody and then let them pick through the shit and, and dealing with people. It end up being people every day. And that's pain. That's pain in my ass. Yeah, bright lightning there. Yeah, sir. Kind of. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> oh, I heard a rumble. Yeah. I if it, I got my back window open. But it's gonna cloudy. Yeah, I see it lighting up out there once in a while. Got a little reflection off my TV, but okay. Yeah. The. See, that's where my hospital bed's underneath a huge picture window like the one out front here mm -hmm. in the living room. It's right next to that fucking window. Oh, there goes a nice bright light. Yeah. The other day I opened up the curtains because we had thunderstorms going through and I'm just laying back on that hospital bed propped up. Mm -hmm. I muted the fucking TV and watched the goddamn lightning for a of 45 minutes i'm just like i like the bed where it's at man this is sweet i got that huge fucking window. then i'm thinking uh-huh yeah right sitting in this fucking steel bed <laughs> right next to the fucking window watching a lightning storm you're I smart on, i was on somebody's live stream one night during a wicked real bad thunder lightning storm i i shut my overhead light off and, and i had the window open like this and it was like it was like two o'clock in the morning pitch dark out but with all the lightning it looked like it was broad daylight uh-huh 
just lighten that room up, I bet. Nice. Uh, yeah. I like uh, We had one thunderstorm beat the shit out of my tomato plants. And, and so I had to tie them around two of the porch poles, posts. And I said, they're, they're, look at the stems are busted. That They're dead. Fuck no, they keep growing. I said, okay, cool. I love them thunderstorms. I just don't like what they do to my goddamn tomatoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I picked up, I picked up pepper, literally. It's almost the size of a fucking um, softball. That fucker's huge. Big ass green pepper. Just off of my stupid plants out on the front porch. My when I, I had all my grandkids. Did you see that picture I popped up of all the grandkids at my house? I did. <laughs> yeah, on the front porch. Did you yeah, see it, Native? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. Is it on Facebook? Oh, no, it live stream. The um, I'll pop it up for just a second here. Um, from um, his family came over last week. Yeah. What'd you say? You had seating for six, but you had 10 of them show up, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, um, there it is. Oh, why is it showing that? That's fucking goofy. It's not showing me what I want. Oh, that's why. That's why, son of a bitch. Get back up there now. Where are you there? That's not it. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh. Downsize that. There we go. Now I'm getting it. Now I'm getting. I'm getting it. The um. This is nuts. I got two. I I'm being a goddamn mat here. <laughs> I. Uh -oh. <laughs> wow. He'll be back. See you later, Stye. <laughs> Stye didn't have to leave us so soon. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> He's touching stuff. <laughs> cool. He froze up for a minute there on my end. Doing, Bandit? You smell something out there? Like, got his nose up to the air conditioner, and then he's looking out the cameras. I'm back. You're back. <laughs> I got damn lost. I, I mean, I got way too much on. I think money. I'm in the middle of also placing an order for delivery. <laughs> It's not. Let's see. Okay. I see what it is. It's my curio cabinet bag. It's not. It's not giving it to me. God damn it! Uh, <laughs> why? I don't know. This fucking thing. Is it? Is it in your recent, recently viewed folders? Oh, I've got the I've got the picture, but Streamyard's not finding it. Oh, okay. It's just saying, "Let me." Uh, um, yeah, fucking fucking thing. Let's see if that helps. Yep, it did. No, giving me the same shit, no matter what. 
all it's showing is it's it's under one of the window tabs mm -hmm. but um it's not showing up on the stream yard side to share so fuck it <laughs> okay. anyway i had 10 of my family fucking show up last sunday after the stream yeah nine or seven i got that shit all fucked up i had my daughter seven of her kids and one great grandson what a crazy bunch that whole fucking family is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love them to death. And they, <laughs> they make me laugh to be the hell. But yeah, we're sitting there, whole fam family sitting out on the front porch, and my daughter's taking the pictures, and and she's got to take five hundred of the same fucking picture, you know. Just <laughs> yeah. so, oh, guys, da, 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 da. she's just tapping. It. <laughs> and finally, I go. And she's and I go. <laughs> and wait for her to say, oh, "I'm done," you know. Well, then the grandkids are going. Wish we could do what you're doing, Grandpa. I said, "You got my permission." <laughs> All my grandkids. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Good for you. <laughs> my one granddaughter blossom though she um she won't give the finger no matter what so she <laughs> covers her face and she goes like this oh <laughs> now i don't know who's raising her because it's not her mother if her mother was raising her she'd be going blossom <laughs> little She's a sweetheart. The, um, yeah, I was supplied. Now, this is bad. I don't even know how old Blossom is to be positive. Five years, maybe. Yeah, about five years old. And she come in the house. They all come in the house. And she's just shy as can be. And then everybody's saying hello, get all the hugs out of the way, you little fuckers, find somewhere to sit down. And that little one come running up to me. <laughs> She's only is, I mean, her head only comes halfway up my belly, and she grabs me around the waist, and she's just squeezing hard. <laughs> it was appropriate. It was the first time her and I ever met. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I never got to see her as a baby. No, never good. saw her growing up to be five. Uh, it's good that you got to see her. Yeah, no shit. And the, the best part is that means her siblings that have been seeing me have been telling her about me. Mm -hmm. For her, all of a sudden, she's not shy. She's not afraid. Big hug. And then my other granddaughter, Echo, the last time I saw Echo, it literally got to the point where if I just looked at her, she'd run in the house and hide. If I tried to talk to her, she'd scream like a banshee. <laughs> that kid had would have nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me whatsoever. And she's cute as a button. And to try to get her to at least accept me, to not be scared to death or whatever, what do I do? So they come to visit. And I haven't seen her in almost five years. It was about four years ago I saw her. Wow. And, and she was 
even worse than Blossom, man. She come up, give me a big hug, and she comes walking up to me and she says, Grandpa. I said, yeah, what do you need? She goes, Mom said you have candy. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute. Last time I saw you, you would you'd run and hide because I'm looking at you. You'd be screaming right now because I'm talking to you. And you're asking for candy, you little monster. <laughs> I told her, I said, right behind your sister there, you go look behind her. There's a big glass container. It's a huge vase, big one. And it's clear glass and it's full to the top with candy. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> She walks over there and she goes <laughs> across, yells across the room to me, Grandpa, which can I have? I said, you can have any of them you want. She picks a York peppermint patty out of there. I got Yorks, and Kit Kats, and Reese's, and you know, a good mixture of stuff. She takes a York patty, runs across the room. I'm sitting on my hospital bed because they got every other seat in the fucking room. She jumps up, gives me the biggest hug. <laughs> Will you open it for me? I said, sure, I open it for her. And the other kids are all looking around like, and finally one of them goes, why does she get fucking candy? <laughs> <laughs> they, all of a sudden they figured, oh no, only she gets candy. And I thought, I'll let them think that way for a while. It was Echo special. I haven't seen her in so long. So she's special. And I looked, and there's a little Blossom kind of pouting. And I go, hey. I said, Blossom, you saw where she went. Go get some candy. I said, you're so special, you can grab two. <laughs> She picked two out. She's just like, ha, 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 ha. only her and I get candy. Fuck the rest of you. It's then like I, Halloween came early. Yeah, yeah. I told them all. I said, have at it. Enjoy the candy. Over in those bins, there's, and you can tell, one is, the whole thing is. Little Debbie's and Rice Krispie bars, miniature brownies, all that kind of stuff. Snack cakes. I said the next one is all chips. There's probably four or five different bags of chips in there. I said the third, the third container. These containers are one foot square. I said the third container is about two thirds full of other candies. Holy shit, them kids went nuts in that house. All the way up to the older ones. I mean, yeah. I mean, even Owen, I mean, he's a papa. He's got a little baby. He's over there holding the baby, digging through all the candy and shit. <laughs> and my daughter goes, you told them they good. I said, yeah, on purpose. I want them to kind of clean out, you know, and I'll get all new stuff out of don't worry, I'll replace it. And but it was so cool watching all of them kids. Wow, Grandpa is great. He'll give us chocolate cake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, mouth sugared up, didn't you? What's that? Got them all sugared up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wasn't taking them home. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a grandparents. <laughs> it's a three and a half hour drive to Come home. <laughs> the problem was the one granddaughter, she's now decided she wants to live with her dad, which I told my daughter, I said, that's a bad decision. And she goes, you put up with Jasmine, you know. And I said, hey, wait a minute. I said, you got to take the good kids and the bad kids, you know? She goes, Jasmine knows she can come home anytime. I said, good, because she shouldn't be with her dad. Her dad's nuts. Um, I don't want the SOB anywhere near me. And 
she said, so we have to go to this certain town to drop her off at her dad's and then home. I go, that's an extra hour on your damn trip. It's going to be four, four and a half hours. I said, you guys got to get the hell, get the hell out of here and mm. get home. Well, that's an hour later. They finally get in their vehicle and watch them going on the street. It's about 11 o'clock at night and they're going to drive four and a half hours home. And it's a long trip. She texted me the next day and said, we did get home, by the <laughs> way. And we pulled into the house at 4 a.m. Wow. She said, I could have really used your help on the way home. I told her, I said, I responded with, loved your visit. Don't ever plan on spending the night. <laughs> Don't ever, ever plan on spending more than two to four hours. Oh boy. And all will be well. Oh. She was supposed to show up with four kids. There would have been five of them. She doubled <laughs> that. Ten of them showed up. Now, get real. <laughs> I planned on five. I was all set for five. That was great. Uh, but but ten of them come storming in the house. I said, holy the but fuck I know none of those vehicles. Either one of them. You could probably split those ten up between the two vehicles. But the oldest grandson's pickup truck back seat was packed full, so he had no room for an extra person. So there's just two in there. So there's eight people in that minivan. And I know the one seat's taken out of it. So there's no way it's legal for them to go be going down a goddamn road. And with all the little ones she had, even she even had the littlest one, Fawn, with her, uh, the one with the. Uh, White Sutton's disease. And so uh, she had four kids that, by law, should be in car seats. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she ain't got no four car seats. Uh, I told her, with what she spends on vehicles and the way she's wearing them out, she needs a good high mileage. A vehicle that will be there at 300,000 miles. <laughs> and it's got a head. I told her, buy something that fits your family size. She says, well, it would have to carry 16 people. I said, that's why you need to find a used short bus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> You know, you find yourself a short bus for sale. And you buy that son of a bitch. Native, hook, hook him up with Benny Loco. <laughs> she'll get a she'll get a bus for you. Uh, and she said, "Yeah, but they're so hard on gas." I said, "But they're so much easier on your nerves." I said, "Actually, you get yourself a short bus. You take." all but maybe two benches out of it and then you put in a panel it can be half plexiglass for the top half with a door through it and you call it an rv mm -hmm. and you use it as an <laughs> rv and yeah. then then you're not required to have them in seat belts and you just Funnel all them fuckers in the back, and you're alone up front driving. <laughs> Don't give a shit what's going on back there till you get home. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> that poor girl, she just don't think right sometimes, you know? <laughs> I had a family of six, and I bought a fucking bus just because the son of a bitch could be used as an RV, and all the kids could run around without seatbelts on. Yeah, goddamn right.
And I sat all alone up there driving that old bus. Everybody was back there doing shit. I'd yep. look in the mirror once in a while back there and go, I love it up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I miss that old bus. The other day I was thinking about that. It was a 1951 GMC school bus. And it was, uh, um, what was it? It was a 32 passenger. And it was fully converted into an RV. The only problem is, is when they did the conversion, it was in the 70s. Well, they put a fresh engine in it before I bought it. So I was buying it for the mechanical part of it, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make goddamn sure it was going to be what I needed. And that would get us there and back. The interior, we'll worry about that later. Uh, that interior. It was an orange, brown, and gold shag carpeting. The whole floor. The walls. The ceiling. Literally. They gutted that bus and they put shag carpeting on every square inch on the inside of that bus. <laughs> nice. Thank God they didn't do any of that in the driver's <laughs> compartment. They left it stock. And it was all that fucking shag carpeting. Holy <laughs> shit. But we figured it out by the time you broke that. I mean, the. The table in there was the size of a goddamn dinner table. You could put three people in each side of the booth, easy. And two chairs on the outside at that table. That It had a regular full-size refrigerator in it that you'd find in a kitchen, and it was propane. And it had the big counter, all the cupboards, the sink back bedroom, big, huge back bedroom with queen-size bed in it, and it had a bathroom and a big closet. Well, out in that front half of the bus, half two-thirds of the bus, had that big table to eat at. That folded down, turned into a big-ass fucking, like a California king, for God's sakes. And then it had what would work out is like individual bunks down the full length of the one side of the bus. It was all padded seats, but they lifted up and they're all storage underneath. And they're nice wide seats, just perfect for, they're a little narrower than a twin mattress, you know. Um, oh, that damn thing. And it had everything. It had furnace in it, everything. Got it. And I, just think of that bus and the way it looked, and it had no rust in it at all. Um, it originated in Southern California, so by the time it got up to Minneapolis, St. Paul, it had no, it had never seen winters or rust, you know, no salt. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I loved it. I could go underneath it and work on it. And it didn't have a bunch of shit falling on me. No, no rust anywhere, nothing. It was solid. And I thought, if I had that son of a bitch right now today, oh, my God. And it was so easy to drive. And, boy, did that son of a bitch fly. It was pissing these truckers off. Well, it wasn't pissing them off. Some of them grumbled about it, but most of the guys were laughing their butts off. Um, because we're going up the Rocky Mountains and that bus had a 10 speed in it. Wow. I'm going up the Rocky Mountains doing 65 miles an hour and all the trucks are down to 15, 20 miles an hour trying to get up that steep grade. And I'm flying past all these truckers in my fucking hippie bus on the CV yelling at them, get your fucking <laughs> train out of the way. Hey, get out of the way. <laughs> out on the flats 
I'm cruising down the interstate through all the way across Montana, buzzing along at 85, 90 miles an hour in that 1951 school bus. <laughs> and guess what engine it had? It had a little 289 V8 in it. That's all it had in it. Wow. It 289 V8. Little, little guy. Uh, I did like, though, they swapped out the original. You know, it just had a double one, or they put a four barrel on it and a new manifold intake that gave her a little extra boost. Uh, but it's still just a 289 with a four barrel on it. And at least it was uh, semi good on gas, though 17 miles of the gallon running, uh, my running around people. town, and I was getting 21 a gallon on the highway. Wow, my F two fifty with a three hundred straight six only got like nine miles to a gallon. My my F one fifty King Ranch, the best I've gotten out of it was twelve. <laughs> Usually was it's ten or eleven. So when the when these kids from the college are saying, "Yeah, you're polluting the air with that truck," yeah, I am. Yeah, you bet I am. I'm only getting 10 miles a gallon, for Christ's sake. <laughs> you know, you think about that. For me to run up to Bayfield and back, it takes six gallons of gas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm only driving 60 miles round trip. Six gallons of goddamn gas. I told them, I said, the gas I buy for that truck is cost just as much if not more than your car payments do so it's a trade-off i want that truck <laughs> I, and i pay what you pay in car payments i own the truck free and clear but i still got to pay every month what you pay in a car payment because of the fucking gas that thing sucks i don't care i don't care I got a goddamn snowblower that I can run for four hours without putting gas in. It's only got a one gallon tank. Mm -hmm. I got a, I had a generator. It's running waters now. That's some of a bitch will run 18 to 20 hours on two gallons of gas. We got a mini bike that's getting about 40 miles a gallon. Nice. I said, so, yeah, don't say we're not willing to conserve, but we're conserving on all the other things we have so I can have a pickup truck. <laughs> it was funny, too, that one guy from the college was saying, you probably burn as much as we do just to heat our college dorm. I laughed, and I said... I'm not going to tell you who he is, but I've got a family member that knows exactly what it takes to heat your college. And I'll tell you what, that is one of the worst fuel inefficient buildings in the whole city. I said, I guarantee you, nobody's paying the heating costs that that college is paying for those stupid dorms. That old college Half that shit's not insulated. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Ow. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, whiners, you know. And and that's ridiculous. You know, I got my son telling me because he works there. He works for the college. Well, actually, he works for a different firm that's contracted to the college. But he might as well say he works for the college. Um maintenance and custodial and <laughs> some of the shit he tells me I just shake my head I said well their electric costs should be reduced a little bit because they got the, all them fucking solar panels they put up all over the goddamn place out there he says all that does is provide 20% of the electricity for the dean's house. Wow. It doesn't run anywhere except to the dean's house. And <laughs> it's, 
his electric costs were reduced by 20% because of the solar panels. <laughs> wow. You think it would be a little bit more than that? Yeah. It would. And, and I said, well, what about, you know, at least the school's doing all the recycling thing and all that shit and composting and all that. He says, nope. They shut both programs down because on the composting side, nobody would do it. Nobody would do it. I said, make it part of one of their egg curriculum. You know? He says, well, tell them because they no, they, they wanted it to be student volunteer run the compost. And nobody wants to do it. It stinks too much. He says, so instead of them saying they don't want to do it, stop the program, they just quit taking the composting bins, these big fucking four-wheeled, big-ass bins out of the kitchens. And they're letting that shit rot in the kitchen. He says, no matter how clean you get their kitchen, it reeks because of that garbage they keep in the compost bins because nobody's out there working it. So they got rid of the program. Recycling, it was the garbage haulers shut them down, said no more recycling for you. This is what it's going to cost you per year. Throw it all in the same dumpsters, same bins because they were finding recycling bins were half garbage, half recyclables, all mixed together. Plus all the dumpsters are all full of recyclables anyway, where they're not supposed to be. So they said, no, put it all in the dumpsters and it'll all go to a landfill. You're all hypocrites because they still say they have those programs, but they don't. They still advertise that they compost everything and recycle everything. They're not recycling anything and they're not composting at all anymore. Andy, you're getting spoiled tonight already. I know. <laughs> There's times I see him and oh fuck. <laughs> I wish he was a lot older and ready to pass away because then I'd be reincarnated as her next dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you eat that already? Bandit, did you taste it? I don't think he tasted it. <laughs> oh, that look. That yeah, look. You better watch what you're saying, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You that <laughs> it's like, don't you insult me on this fucking show. <laughs> Somebody he knows computer he let, comes right here. He knows. He he wants to walk on the goddamn tablet and delete Matt. Yeah, he <laughs> Block Matt for eternity. He he watches <laughs> us on on the big screen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he can watch the see himself up there. Then he keeps an eye on that to see if Tucker's outside. <laughs> now we're all like frozen up there. It's like, we're not even moving up there. Like <laughs> 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 three minutes behind up there. there Jesus Christ, what the fuck is the temperature here? It's freaking my daughter out the other day because I had her stream with me. Our TV is always like about 10 seconds behind. It's freaking her out because you know, it's like a scary movie looking at yourself moving, but it's like looking in a mirror on a scary movie and the mirror's doing something different than you are. Yeah. <laughs> the TV was like 10 yeah, seconds it's like, it's like me being on a laptop, you know. I can see myself <laughs> in, in real time on the StreamYard side, but then I'll, I'll go flip over to the YouTube side and I'm like still trying to catch up with myself. Yeah. yeah, it's bad. It's bad where you when you forget where you left off. <laughs> you well, just okay, like, I'm just this. okay, now I'm just it's like, 
I'm not in already. I just caught it up. I'm already playing with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know how that happens when it's continuously playing, but it still runs behind somehow. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. YouTube's always on like a 10, 20 second delay. Usually. All right. I got my order all placed. I got assigned a shopper and... We kept you up long enough, Sty. You need to get some dinner. Yeah, I should probably Definitely should. Um, half ago, almost two hours ago or something like that. An hour and yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to keep you up and keep you from dinner. Tough. I eat whenever I want to eat anymore. Yeah, and it's weird because I've had a couple of days where <laughs> I only I only ate maybe four or five hundred calories, you know. I just got and, leftover so eat that. And like yeah. yes, yeah. yesterday I yesterday I only oh had thirteen thirteen hundred calories. But I didn't I'm mean not to keep it just my fault. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that yeah. might be my fault. <laughs> hey, hey pork chop, I hear somebody's waiting for a beer recipe. If you value like your other that. leg. Well, it might be there. I don't know. I haven't looked at Instagram forever. Yeah. There's be some there. people that need that beer beer cheese soup. Everybody wants recipe. a beer cheese soup recipe. Justin. <laughs> uh, um, okay, let me look I, went, I went to one place one time and had their beer cheese soup. And I felt like I was drinking a can of beer out of, out of a spoon. <laughs> I could hardly tell there was cheese there at all. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, I could sit here with a real beer and a goddamn cheese stick. <laughs> you know? That ain't fucking Why beer cheese. cheese soup. It's just pure beer. I'm just, and I'm drinking it with, out of a spoon. I've never been so desperate. As I'm going to tell you what else I said. <laughs> God, it would take forever to get drunk drinking out of a spoon. Something about, you know, your leg and stuff. <laughs> you don't have to bring that up. <laughs> You'll have to go back and watch you. Yeah, yeah. Because she does have a method to get that recipe out of you. Uh, yeah. The, what you would do to your other leg. Mm -hmm. I hope you I hope you value it. Mike and his leg up and stuff. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> oh Jesus. Uh, oh. Oh. oh Justin. Oh, Justin. I want it. Take when I you need to go back to drinking. I don't take my painkillers when I drink. I don't take them. I'll take my kratom, but I won't take my Vicodin. Yeah, I'll just get all the right Doc, Doctor was. That's all I got, anyways. He's kind of juggling. He's not sure if he wants to pull me off the oxy, put me on Vicodin. Take my Vicodin, then I lose it a little bit more quick. <laughs> probably not a good thing sometimes. <laughs> so, um,. He was, just telling, he was just telling me that that I might not want to go through the transition of oxy to to bike it in because the doses change, you know, to get that. He says we gotta make sure to prescribe to you the right dose of Vicodin that it matches the oxy. The Vicodin are lower, but they're also a different type of pain med. Yeah. Oxy. I switched to oxycodone before I, I told the doctor, you know, that the Vicodin wasn't working. But so he switched me over to oxy. And I had to go to town and get the prescriptions then because the tribe don't do not do oxys. And they, they didn't do me any better than Vicodin. So uh, just, just give me back Later, my Vicodin. Mom. No, Enjoy dinner. Top of the tribe doesn't do me any better than Vicodin. 
Yeah. Let's see you, Marine Mom. Like, three vitamin tens at work. Point in time, I was on oxymorphine. <laughs> I take three vitamin tens at work. <laughs> see, and that's that's it. He, my my regular cancer doctor here was really pissed because he didn't see me for. Well. He didn't see me until they did the x-rays at the Mayo Clinic to make sure everything healed up before I could start taking food, right? Mm -hmm. He had no role in what the Mayo was doing. And Glad you were here. He, I'm sorry for timing you out. <laughs> the, but Frozen. Oh, my God. But, but he was pissed at the Mayo. You did. And he said that because I had a lot of trouble with them just getting oxy. And he said the pain levels I was in, he said, damn, you should have talked to me. He said, we would have had you on morphine for three weeks. Oh, my God. He said. Um, morphine never done me any good either. I used to take I love morphine, except, <laughs> except that <laughs> morphine's like me smoking dope, man. <laughs> I get myself a nice sweet high, and I end up going to sleep hungry. <laughs> that pisses me off because I'm just hungry as hell, but I'm sleepy too. And usually the sleep is what takes over. Uh, and yeah. I wake up and I go, Yeah, that's what happens when I smoke. But I, I ain't got them good old fashioned munchies. No. Although I don't but, know now and the stuff that Mother Nature left for a long time ago. She left it in an airtight container, though. Yeah, I was smoking. It didn't make me go to sleep. So I was good and shocked. My grandson, he gave me a bag of edibles. And he said, he's this last visit, he goes, he saw my bag sitting there. And I go, he goes, oh, man, Grandpa, I should, I should warn you before you do any of those edibles. They're, oh, they're good. They'll, they'll screw you <laughs> up. He says, don't take a whole one. Cut it in half at least. That's what I, mean. go, I go, oh, shit. You should have told me that because I'm going to have to go over to Michigan to get a new bag. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I've eaten most of those out of that bag already. <laughs> what? He says, whole ones? And I go, well, one and a half one night, but yeah, always a whole one. Why do they make them as whole ones if you're not supposed to eat the whole one? They would have made them smaller if you're only supposed to eat half a one. I said, that's bullshit. Doesn't say anywhere on the package to eat half. It depends on your tolerance level. <laughs> I tolerate it. You get such a buzz high. off of it. And I said, oh, fuck. I'm. <laughs> I told him, I said, I'm a recovered pothead, man. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's, you don't go back, you don't start from the beginning, man. <laughs> if you restart, you're literally starting at the end where you left off. I said, I'm finding my tolerance is way up there. Well, my young my one boy said with the crop that I got from him, he said, oh, dad, don't take any more than one hit off your pinchy on that. I smoked a whole pinchy. And I'm going, yeah, that's sweet shit. That's, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Then I think one hit, one hit. Oh, my God. I have done shit. What the hell is he talking about? Oh, my God. I'm stoned for three hours on a single hit. And he says, and then I eat, and then I sleep, and then I'm all fucked up for a day, feeling rough. Got to have them oysters. And I told him, I said, I said, the only reason you can handle just a single hit is you're just still a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just being honest, man. I'm just being honest. You're being a pussy. I can understand that with my grandson, 20 years old. 
45 year old son telling me, Oh, you're only going to want to take one hit off of that. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Fuck no. I said, You know, pinching will only hold so much. I said, And I get a kick out of pinches because those are for quick hits and then hide the shit before somebody sees it. You know? Back in my day, you walked around. Sometimes you'd have four or five pipes in your pockets, you know, and the bowls on them fucking pipes would damn near hold a quarter ounce, some of them. Yeah, sure, the weed, the THC count was lower, but we smoked a lot more. Mm -hmm. We smoked, you know, everything's relative, you know. Uh, and that's the thing is a lot of folks, I. Uh, I haven't had to personally watch it deal with with fentanyl or crack, you know, people that are addicted and how ripped they can get. But yeah, we had we had a lot of people doing LSD, all the PCPs, and they, they were fucked up, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't see. I'll be right over, Marima. I don't yeah, see the people. A lot of good meals in chat going on. I know. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> well, not the, me. not the Rockies oysters. Her husband makes them. He makes them pretty strong. So she sent me some for me and Mother Nature. Well, Mother Nature is like really used to all that. She does it all the time. <laughs> Says cut it in half. Make sure you cut it in half because I'm lightweight. I don't do it very often. So yeah. um, I ended up cutting them in quarters because I didn't. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, I was like, blah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing is, too, is if you don't know what the T THC count on it is. No. Makes you're, it better really off cut, you're, you're better off cutting them in quarters and testing. You know, test a quarter. He knows exactly See how they. Goes. She said cut them in half, so I trust her. I'm saying, okay, I'll cut them in half. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. The um, <laughs> Justin talking. He's talking Rocky Mountain oysters. Did you Rocky know? <laughs> did you know that in Cornucopia, Wisconsin, every year we have the testicle festival. <laughs> yeah, testicle festival at the. At, at, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's a Texas fest. It's the testicle festival at Fish Lips Bar and Grill. I want to go to <laughs> in Cornucopia, Wisconsin. Yeah, it all fits together, man. Sure does. <laughs> and. And yeah, you can get them. You can get them braised. You can get them grilled. You can get them deep fried. Yeah, <laughs> all the bulls nuts you want. But yeah, they they got oh and it's a week week long that festival, and they sell more bull nuts than they sell hamburgers <laughs> all year. I I, just, I I go in there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they come over and they go. Ah, you here for the festival platter? <laughs> no, they are, but I'm here to have a to have a mushroom and Swiss burger and order of fries. <laughs> what? You're not gonna have the testicles? Mushroom head and testicles, nice. I said it ain't happening, man. I'm sitting here eating real food, watching everybody suck on somebody else's balls. No, I ain't doing it. I ain't the suck of nobody's balls. I don't give a fuck if he's got four. <laughs> I don't give a shit who it is. No, I ain't sucking their balls. No, ain't happening. Oh, yeah. Hey, Justin, I just hope my third leg didn't get undangled. <laughs> right. You know, this, this old lady... She's in her kitchen preparing dinner. 
Well, she had just lost her husband just a couple days before. Neighbor lady came over to check on her. She goes, oh, my God, because here's the lady. She's got a cutting board. She's got this meat on the cutting board, and she's cutting it into slices. And the neighbor lady goes, I want to know, what is that? And that old lady is slicing away. She goes, that's Hermes Peter. <laughs> she goes, say what? Yeah, I went down to the mortician. She says, I was really upset. He, he charged me $500 to let me cut off Hermes Peter and bring it home. And he said, oh, that's a weird fetish, but for 500 bucks, if nobody's looking, go ahead. So she said, I got his Peter and I brought it home. And she goes, but what are you doing? You're cutting it into slices. She goes, well, of course I am. She says, why? She says, because I'm frying that fucker up with some grilled onions and I'm going to eat it the way I want it. He got it eaten the way he wanted it for 45 <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, nice. Uh oh, that's why I'm being cremated. <laughs> Get me in the oven ASAP before somebody decides they want some parts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you. It's, you better go back and watch, Justin. <laughs> I, I always think of that goddamn movie, um, Nothing But Trouble. Um, it's got Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd. Oh, I can't remember who else in it, but it's a, Chevy Chase is a rich guy. And they end up in this Pennsylvania town that's got a coal fire burning under it. So everybody abandoned town except the Grand Puba, the town there. He's like the judge, the, the provisional judge for the area. And, and he kidnaps these people. <laughs> but he has them for dinner and they got these damn sausages and they all look like peckers. And you find out they're killing people. They're, they stop them for speeding and bring them in, take all their shit, and then they kill them. Well, are they keeping parts? Because look at them sausages. My God. I saw that movie and I'm going, that ain't right. I think they're killing people and eating them. And then you find out later in the movie, yeah, they're killing people. But the mo movie is funnier than hell. Um, it's got a set of twins, this old guy. And one's Bubba and Bilbo, Bilbo, and great big fat guys, and they run around, looks like they're wearing diapers, and they're working in a scrapyard, and both of them are nuts, they're nutty, nuttier than hell, and this chick ends up kind of caught by them, and Jesus H. Christ, they're, oh, they're thrilled except one thinks she's his oh no the other one thinks she's his and they oh fuck it's funnier than hell it's just yeah god damn it no i gotta go watch that fucking movie <laughs> uh, <laughs> marine mom says you know i can't leave to be with you well Welcome back, JCT. JCT. <laughs> Cheers. Are you there all alone, Marine Mom? Uh, <laughs> uh, um, cheers. I can't remember who the hell it was. Yeah, cheers. 
got my cheers on delivery. Oh, she's all alone. Uh, I got to make a cigarette real quick. The... <laughs> Thank God I don't home roll anymore. Fuck, I'd be rolling for the first four hours every day. Yeah, that's about what I do. I roll about four or five at a time. Sometimes when I get energetic and I know I'm in for a long, long night, I might make like a, about like 30 or 40 of them. Yeah, smokes ain't cheap. No. And, that's and, why I buy tobaccos and put them in myself. <laughs> yeah. I, especially, especially when cans get involved, I tend to smoke a lot more cigarettes. <laughs> that you know that when they outlawed smoking in bars, that's the dumbest fucking law in the world, man. It oh is. yeah. Smoking and drinking go together. <laughs> That's it. I cannot sit there and have a drink or drink beer without a smoke. Mm -hmm. And people ask, have been asking me for years, Stai, why don't we see you in the bars anymore, man? You were always in the local bars, even if you weren't out drinking. And so does gambling and smoking. It comes together, too. Yeah, they kind of... See you. I love it here, Bad River Tribe. Big old sign out front. Smoking optional. <laughs> uh -oh. You get to smoke anywhere in your goddamn facility. Yeah, they, they it's, four, so. But it's optional. It's like, like masks optional. You know? It is kind of nice walking the floor without walking through clouds of smoke all the time. <laughs> and yeah. the, the, the tribe... The feds actually tried to force them to go smoke free in their casino. And right, uh, Bad River, they just laugh, man. Bad River never hesitates to go to federal court with something. And they told them, they said, hey, go ahead and try to mandate us because it ain't happening. You'd have to come in physically and armed and shut our casino down. But our tribe's been smoking tobacco and it's traditional to us for generations that we can't count. You aren't going to stop what we practice on our reservation. And they said, well, we can still do it. And they said, do it and we'll see you in federal court. We're ready. Let's go. Because they know here in Wisconsin, this district judge, this federal judge, she'll rule in the tribe's favor. She she always does. She'll rule in the tribe's favor. They'll lose their ass on that one. So, Bad River, yeah, smoking optional. And I said, well, how can it be optional? What if you're a non-smoker and you're playing a machine in between two smokers? I'm well... So your machine is non-smoking while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, and I told him, I said, I totally agree with the smoking and non-smoking issue that in a casino, it's so either smoking or non-smoking. So I went here and you're right over there. <laughs> I, I, I went to a casino in Vegas, and that's where I got where I decided this. But they had a smoking and non smoking section. Yeah. Then I went to a different casino, and they had the same setup. Well, so we're, we're, we're developing a casino for Red Cl the Red Cliff Tribe. And we got a couple of good doers on the console that, oh, no, nobody should be smoking anywhere, you know, period. They should outlaw them completely. And they're saying, they're demanding that we have a non-smoking section. 
in the new casino. And I'm listening to them all arguing back and forth. And I said, <clears throat> can I interject here, folks? I said to the people that wanted the non-smoking section, I said, are you talking that we actually build walls and entrances and separate a section of the casino? Yeah, we used to have plexiglass. And, <laughs> and they, said, they said, no, 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 no. You don't need a physical wall. You just need to cordon off that whole section. And you can't smoke beyond that line in well, that you, area. And I said, okay, okay. I said, I get it. So now you've got this big open room, all full of goddamn slot machines, roulette, all the card tables, everything. And just part of the room is non-smoking. The other part is smoking. I said, I said, do you think people are going to go for that? Well, they'll understand. We'll put signs up, smoking section, non-smoking section. I said then, in a swimming pool, picture this. You have a P section and a no P section. Right, right. Do you have a P section and a no P section in a swimming pool? If someone pisses in that swimming pool, everybody's swimming in it. Everybody. So if I'm smoking over on this side of the building and you're not smoking over there, I'm not getting non-smoking air. You're getting smoking air. You fucking morons. You can't have a non-smoking section unless it's fully enclosed. And you know what we have to do then? If we do that under federal law, we have to put a whole new HAVAC system over on the smoking side. I said, and customers hate them because they're listening to that snap, 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 constantly because those have acts for the smoke and the tar is collecting it and there's an electrical charge that's burning it up. It's like an afterburner. I said, so either make the casino all smoking or make it all non-smoking or we have to go back to the architects and make sure that we can put walls up to provide for this section that you want. Guess what? They went with all smoking. <laughs> I said, I said, yeah. I said, it hurts the, um, it hurts the local bars. It hurts the locals really bad. Because now they get to have a cigarette with their beer. All I got to do is go to a nickel machine and sit there and nurse one nickel at a time and drink beers and smoke cigarettes. I'm in the bar dropping a nickel at a machine. Fuck, I might hit and win 60 or 80 bucks. It paid for my night. Thank you. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they notice in both of our casinos up here. Yeah. Business was good. They were getting new business. And and it was because of that. The no smoking bars, you bet they're going to go out to that casino. All the casinos have a nice bar. Yeah, they go to go get their beer and sit on a machine. And, yeah. At, at uh, least the bars here, we have a lot of like outdoor patio seating. So that, that's where we have our drinks and we can drink outside and smoke outside. See, the pro that's the problem here is we've got only a few that have outdoor space that they do that, which is great. You can just take your beer with you and go out the side door into that area. Because, <laughs> which I think is ridiculous that they make us go through a separate doorway to get to the outdoor smoking area. I think it's ridiculous. But um, when winter hits, it's not good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a bitch. The one place we got, they got these big eight-foot walls, overlapping fence all the way around it. Great windbreak, you know, and they keep the snow cleared out of there real nice. And, and they got these roll-out 
canopies that go out for a roof. <laughs> on. So, but it's still considered open air. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that, Justin. I did that down in Texas. White, <laughs> White Sands, New Mexico. Uh, I, I bought one of those really big baby roofs. <laughs> ones that got a lot of texture yeah and they, <laughs> they stand out better and i found out it was funny because i'm unwrapping that fucker and my cousins went in and i said i said hold on a second he because he said throw it in there throw it in i said no hold on a second we went over to the edge of the pool and there's one of them goddamn safety rings that you throw somebody drowning well, those are nothing. They're styrofoam, for Christ's sake. I took out my pocket knife and I whittled a little bit of styrofoam out of it, shoved a little chunk on each end of that bar, really made it float up on top of the water. <laughs> so yeah, that some bitch was real obvious. And, <laughs> and yeah, we were just walking along and I let it slip out of my left hand into the pool. We kept walking. <laughs> Found a couple of chairs and sat down. Let's see what happens. All of a sudden, you hear somebody say, Oh, shit. And the whole pool's moving. And it, of course, I let it slip out on the shallow end. So you got all these little kids that are even heading to the deep end. And everybody in the deep end of the pool and looking for a way out, a way out of that. Place. And, the little kids can swim. And it was funny because this one, they get, had these two lifeguards there, and the one was telling the other, go get the net and get that thing out of the damn pool. <laughs> I goes, I'm not fishing that shit out of the pool. You fish it out of there. I ain't doing that. <laughs> so they're arguing over has, who has to get the turn out of the pool. <laughs> and that's nice with, if it's a heated pool because the chocolate starts to melt off of it and the peanuts start to show. Oh fuck! It's great, oh it's great. It looked more. It didn't look like penis. It looked like corn. <laughs> it, it was. It was so good. It was so good. <laughs> that that was the best seventy at that time. Seventy five cents for the big can of baby root, and that was the best seventy five cents I spent down in New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing, another thing, here's one for you, Justin. I've done this. This is terrible. <laughs> but you you seen those food colorings in the little plastic bottle? They got the color of the food coloring on the top, that pointed cap. Get the get a pack of those and take the yellow one out and put that in the pocket of you. Yeah, make sure you're wearing swimming trunks. They got a pocket in them. And you stick that in the pocket of your swimming trunks. And what you do is make sure you're wearing dark colored swimming trunks and you go stand in the shallow end about a little more than waist deep, just a little <laughs> more deep, reach in that pocket and squeeze that son of a bit. You get a big yellow fucking mask going around you. It's hilarious, man. It's you know, like everybody, everybody's <laughs> trying to. Red one, red one too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The gals, the gals could get away with using the red one. Yeah. That'd <laughs> be awesome. Guy and the gal, they would go out there together. <laughs> and they're standing there chatting, and all of a sudden, you got the red coming off of the gal, and all of a sudden, you got the yellow coming off the guy. That would just be the die for. But I did it. And I, with the yellow, oh my yellow, God. And fucking people. It was so funny. <laughs> they turn around and they'd see it. It's right by them. And they're going like bad out of hell to get out of that pool. I try to outrun it. It was it was hilarious. You're safe wherever you don't see it, right? But but boy, where do you see it? You gotta get the fuck out of it. And, and and it lasts, it lasts for about, I'd say, a minute and a half, two minutes. It lasts for a long time before it's so diluted it goes away. But then everybody thinks all that piss is in that pool. 
and they think you've got kidney problems or something wrong with your liver because that is some bright yellow piss, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, green would be not good. <laughs> the, um, you know, I like those kind of pranks because they're fun <laughs> and for the most part harmless unless you get somebody that panics and drowns or something. But then they shouldn't have panicked like that. Calm down. It's just pissed, you know. Uh, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> I didn't do it to I didn't do it to kill that guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the fucker went under and drowned. Oh my God. <laughs> now my cousin told me that about three years after that, oh no, it'd be longer than that. He was in college anyway. And him and some of his college buddies, they're at a hotel and it's got this huge, huge hot tub, whirlpool hot tub, right? And he took a he took a baby Ruth with him. And he popped it out of the rap raptor under the water and it boom, and it's floating in there and all the bubbles it's moving are all around. People are freaking out. There's a turd in here. And my cousin said that his buddy reached out, grabbed it, and he Takes a big bite out of it. <laughs> oh yeah, that is shit. <laughs> Two people puked in the hot tub. <laughs> I told them I wish I would have been there. I would have loved it. I would have loved it. I would have loved it. Yeah, take a big bite out of that piece of shit. Yeah. Oh my god, and then say, Oh my god, it is shit. Oh god. Yeah, that would get people puking, right? Yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> well, well that's desperate if you get the guy that drowns. You you hope that the baby Ruth is like in his vicinity and then right. you, and then you say, Wow, he it scared the shit out of him and he died. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I it must scared have, the shit out of him. That must have scared the shit out of him. <laughs> and that's one thing people don't re realize that when a person dies they after they after they are dead, they evacuate mm -hmm. their bladder and their bowels evacuate because there's no muscle control in the sphincter anymore. So they just it just comes out of them. So that's not a bad suggestion, you know. It scared the shit out of him. If you don't think so, pull his pants down. I bet you he's covered with shit. Yeah. He is. <laughs> yeah. Like you just said, literally. <laughs> literally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, literally. Yeah. It's just, you know. Is it a bad thing or is it just having fun? Well, sometimes fun is a little <laughs> on the bad side, you know. It's all right to have the horns pop out a little bit once in a while. You know? Those are what keep my halo straight. That's it. Sometimes the right one, sometimes the left one, they gotta pop out to straighten out the halo, right? The, it's it's like they say you, you got the the an angel on one shoulder the devil on the other shoulder, and I'm deaf in one ear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can listen to. <laughs> Taking an X lax and melatonin to see what hits first nowadays. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, Lord, yes, that's oh right. my God. Can you imagine? You yeah. gotta, you gotta fall asleep. You just gotta, you gotta, but you know you're gonna. <laughs> If you do, you're gonna shit your pants. You know it. You know it. I cannot fall asleep. No, 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 no. The um, <laughs> that's that, that was, the old put shaving cream in a person's hand to tickle their nose with a feather, and they'll, you know, wipe that shit. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Buddy of mine, chocolate pudding <laughs> in the hand. Oh, my God. <laughs> that guy wiped his face. <laughs> Looked like he had shit all over his face. And everybody's snapping pictures of him. Yeah. Look at I that. See, I see a lot of those prank videos, either shorts on YouTube or a lot of them on, like, um, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of the pranks are pretty damn funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of them you go, whoa, I don't know if that's quite legal. <laughs> like, like, like the guy walking through, the, walking through the beach up and down the stairs and a crowd of people and he's got one of them art machines. Uh huh. I, when I was in high school, this kid, he, <laughs> he had a, one of those fart pillows mm -hmm. and he put it in his pants on the back cushion. of his pants, <laughs> like a whoopee cushion. Yeah. So every time he sat down, that some bitch go off, you know, <laughs> and, and he also had these nasty ass the stink, stink bombs. Yeah. The the yeah. You just, you snap <laughs> them and then you get rid of it. Don't, you don't want it on you. you snap it and throw it. And it just stinks the place right up. And the ones he had literally smelled like shit. I mean, like, like the real thing. Like mm -hmm. there. It was a bowel movement for sure. <laughs> he walks into the fucking lunchroom, sits down, and just it just rips. <laughs> and he snapped one of those and threw it on the floor right where he was sitting. And he gets up and he goes, Oh no! And he puts both hands on one on each cheek and pinches and runs like he's going to the bathroom. <laughs> Everybody in that place, oh my God! He sharded the hell out of himself, man. He's covered with shit. That's always why I, I like farting in the cheese sec section and say, "Wow, this cheese smells great." Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. God, which cheese is it that smells so good? <laughs> is it the Gouda? I, the... <laughs> a, man, one is really standing out to me. <laughs> Lady, come over here. Can you smell that cheese? Tell me which one it is. <laughs> oh, my God. That's terrible. Oh, I think it smells delicious. <laughs> I mean... I'm so bad. This is no shit. This is a fact. And I got two employees at Walmart that will vouch for it. One day, I just, I, I'll, I'll go into Walmart feeling mischievous. Well, I go to the ladies' department. And I'll take a bra off of the rack and I'll grab the back strap and put my thumb in the middle of the cups and I go, and sure as shit, there'll be some gal. I want to make sure there's a few gals in there. One of them will say, what are you doing? I said, I'm just testing out this double barrel slingshot. <laughs> and then I'll look in the panties, the ones they got on the hangers, for the biggest pairs they got. I find the biggest pairs they got. And I take them off the hanger and I'll hold them up and I'll go, Stretch them right out. The waistband is part of it. Some, sometimes four feet. And they'll go, yeah, it also fit her. <laughs> <laughs> See the looks on these people's faces when you do that. I was in the pet, I was in the pet department one day. Well, both my dogs are gone. I got no pet. Uh, but I was close to it, and I'm walking by it. So I walked in there. I'm looking around, and I go, hmm. This looks pretty good. I bought a small bag of gravy train. I bought a, I bought a um, can of Elpo, the canned food, you know, and threw that in the cart. And then I skedaddled over to the grocery department and I got me some brown gravy mix. It had to be great value, you know, make sure it's the cheap stuff. And I head for the checkout and I get up there. I got to go to a regular checkout for this to work. And I get to the checkout and the gals, oh, getting your dog some food. I 
boy, you played right into it, lady. You should have kept your mouth shut. I was the one that's going to try to get introduce you to a new kind of conversation. And I go, dog food? What are you talking about? She And she holds up the gravy train, and I go, oh, that shit is so good. Oh, my God. All you got to do is pour that shit in a bowl. You add some water and stir it all up. Slide it in the microwave. Oh, warm it up for about a minute, minute and a half. It's the best fucking stew you've ever had. Man, that shit is good. And, and look how cheap it is. I said, you can't make us. You can't go buy all the ingredients and make a stew like that. That shit's just like eating a fresh, <laughs> fresh beef stew. And I said, and that, that meat in a can, that makes some of the most awesome meatloaf you ever tasted. Crunch up some soda crackers, throw an egg or two in there, mix it all together, put it in the pan, stick it in the oven, make, and that's what the gravy mix is for. Make yourself up a bunch of gravy. Maybe make <laughs> up some taters. It's the best meatloaf you'll ever have. It's awesome. This one, check out. She goes, excuse me. And she ran off. Huh? <laughs> she had to run to the can because she was going to puke. I did that to a diff different checkout one day. And, and, you know, it costs you about six, eight bucks for this prank. But that's cheap. <laughs> and I, I have friends with dogs. I give that shit to them. You know, and I keep the grade. But this other gal, she goes, where you found this can here of this meat that you make meatloaf with? If you look around, if you go down to the end of the aisle and go up the next aisle, you'll find canned salmon. She says you can make salmon loaf out of that. <laughs> I said, you got to be kidding. I should look down that aisle. That'd be great. That'd be great. I said I bought a couple of couple of boxes of cereal in that aisle, and that some of it tasted. The one box tasted like liver, for Christ's sakes. But the other box had it was in little X's. That that one that one wasn't too bad, but it can kind of had a fishy background to it. I don't know. So this I don't buy the cereal from that aisle anymore. She was playing right along. Mm -hmm. It was the people in line behind me that were busting a the gut. They were busting a gut. That old fucker's eating that shit. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? You think I'm actually eating it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. The, um, I One time at the checkout, I asked the cashier, can you break a thousand dollar bill? She goes, Oh, I don't know. I'll have to get management over here and find out if I can or not. I go, I go, Well, I sure hope you can. So she called the manager over and the manager comes up. She goes, Can we break a thousand dollar bill? I had. Less than ten bucks for this shit, and the manager goes. The manager goes. There are no thousand dollar bills. We do not accept anything over a one hundred dollar bill. <laughs> no, she says no. Anybody asks you, the answer is no. We don't take thousand dollar bills. And she goes, sorry, sir, but we don't take thousand dollar bills. And I'm holding out that. A ten dollar bill, and I go. Well, that's okay. I got a ten. I just want to know if you could take them or not. Thousand dollars. <laughs> that, that manager's eyeballing me up and down like that fucker was going to go home and counterfeit a bunch of thousand dollar bills and try to spend them here. <laughs> Maybe oh if you would have said, "Well, yeah, we can break a thousand dollar bill." I tell you, well, I'll be back. So I got, oh, I found a 10 in here. Take a 10. 
son of a bitch, I'd be back the next day with a couple thousand dollar bills and buy you know, everything I want, all new shit, and and go home with the change too. Right. And then the, the bank would have fun with them. Yeah. You accepted a thousand dollar bill. <laughs> The guy spending it, you know, kudos to him. He's got guts and he knows how dumb you can be. <laughs> bill. Yeah, you just can't do that shit. You can't do it. You know, now, they, now they got all that little fancy pen that they got to mark everything. Yeah. And then you watch. They'll mark this guy's, but they don't mark that guy's. Then they'll mark the next three. Then they don't mark the next guy. And <laughs> it's like, you're taking a chance, man. Yeah, one of those that you didn't mark. That's probably the one you should have, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I hated that at the Dollar Tree when we had to start marking 20s. You know? Yeah. Hundreds and 50s, I understood. 20s, nah. They they mark 20s here also. Yeah, 20s are just not worth enough to, you know, if somebody comes and they buy four hundred dollars worth of shit and all they got are twenty dollar bills, that's fishy. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> that's a lot of twenties. <laughs> Oh, yeah, was it was terrible. it two hours ago? Uh, yeah. Six hours. yeah, it was. After Holy eight. shit. <laughs> Over six hours. Isn't that insane? I told you guys I was feeling pretty good today. <laughs> those fucking steroids they gave me really did the trick. And it's nice because those steroids are only for the four I days. Bad. I didn't know he was going to stop and then I came up here. I had everything turned down so I could go up and spend some. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even, well, <laughs> I didn't even realize it. When yeah. she came up, I said, well, down, so I now, would, now that you now that you're here, I'll stay for a, a little no over a half hour. Uh, you know, I'll take it to the top of the hour. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the beginning of your stream, you had a pretty full panel and I was busy back and forth throughout my house, so I, I couldn't yeah. join at the beginning. Yeah, I, I was surprised. A lot of I just woke yeah. up at the clock, so I'm like, oh my god, I missed I missed like two hours already. Damn it. <laughs> well that happens when I put the light. I mean, on. I was listening to it, but I was doing a lot of stuff and I couldn't <laughs> devote my time in front of it. I, I didn't even lay down, man. I sat here and I set my alarm and I was like, just in case I fall asleep and I was watching my supernatural and <laughs> I do. I do that. What time is it? Every damn day, at least once. But usually, two I'll be sitting there watching something. Get all set up. I'll even set the alarm, like you did. I think Stein died. Ah, he's just taking another nap. But, but yeah. I, the other day, rolling around in the damn horse manure. Shit. <laughs> See, I can, <laughs> I can <laughs> sit, and, sit and interact for hours, but yeah. to watch TV for six hours, block that ain't happening, man. I'll fall asleep twice. <laughs> I yeah. can actually, I can watch Supernatural for hours, and I can watch Supernatural morning till night. Yeah. No, I tend to watch well, a lot got of got me all season, so I'm, I'm on season eleven now. Oh, wow! <laughs> like steady See, that's the thing is, I haven't, I haven't hit Supernatural yet. Um, it's on my list, but I haven't hit Supernatural yet. The, I watched the whole Grim. I watched the whole Grim season, all their seasons, and then I watch right now. What the fuck am I? Oh, House! I still got one, one season of House left to watch. The I watch that some of a bitch, and I go. Jesus Christ. I always thought they were pretty accurate. You know? My son just made a whole box set. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm on season 11 now. That's as many as I have. So from now on, it's brand new to me. <laughs> 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 I'm very excited now. 
<laughs> me devil gets bored within an hour <laughs> you know the thing is too is is i had a little headphone Love seeing like my headphone i know what's going on but yeah the next seasons are all brand new to me so i'm gonna be sitting yeah. here i'm gonna be glued right here <laughs> yeah because you've never seen them but but <laughs> Yeah, I had a little windfall, and I I went on a John Wayne binge, and oh, yes. I bought I bought all, almost all of his fucking movies, and but then I had it on my bucket list to watch all of John Wayne's movies, not knowing how many he made. I just called watch all of his movies. Uh, wow. And then I found out he made over 150 movies. Fuck that shit. I ain't watching that shit. I could go through Clint Eastwood. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I got that. I, oh, fuck. I got, how old he is. He is freaking sexy. I got at least a dozen of Clint oh, Eastwood that I own. And then all of those I don't own. <laughs> in fact, in fact no, I'll do that tonight. I just started right at the beginning. Gauntlet, you remember Gauntlet? <laughs> Gauntlet, Gauntlet, Clint Eastwood is pretty good. Any Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry, freaking uh, Western, something like that. The Outlaw Josie Wells, that's my very favorite. He's sexy as hell in that. <laughs> Josie Wells is great. <laughs> my favorite. Two Mules for Sister Sarah was awesome. That's a good one, too. Oh, God. That's a really good one. I like that. And I love the good, the bad, and running water. <laughs> good, bad, and running water. Yeah. I, I think I've been drinking a little too much now, Sty. Which <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I drink, I don't even know. Six, seven, eight, I don't know. That's I, it, me, Dibble. I'm the same way. With interaction, I can go so much longer than I can just watch on a TV. Um, anyway, oh, yeah. Any, oh, yeah, both. What is it? Two or three? Any which way but loose. Um, Clyde, hey, I love it. Clyde, right turn. <laughs> I love it. Big ass monkey. I uh, the, like else, uh, the Tori, Tori, uh, Torino. Yeah, I love that one. Oh, that was amazing. I love that one. Yeah, uh, Torino's great. Yeah, I think about that El Torino, and you know what? My back when El Torinos were popular, they had those as police cars. Yeah, my my dad bought one from from the uh, police station when they were done yeah. with them. And yeah, that was whole. And we were locked in the back whenever we got in the back. It was like, God damn it, an old police car. It's like we yeah. were locked in the back whenever we rode in it. Oh, God no damn. getting out of the back seat from the inside. <laughs> yeah. It's like, get away for somebody to open the door. <laughs> God, my, dad. My, my dad's last squad car <laughs> was so, so unlike any other squad car out there. In 1960, let's see, it was 1969 that he bought. Um, was it 69? No, 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 no. 67. It was a 67 Chevy Impala with a custom built V8 in it, big block V8 in it. You it. Headers, headers squashed in rear end with these big freaking drag meats under it in the back that freaking car he had a whole new dash cluster put in and the i'm riding in the car with him we're out in the country big long old country blacktop road you could see for miles and there's nobody on it my dad says hang on and off we went and that's what when he first bought the car and uh yeah 427 and <laughs> and anyway he says boy get on over here and check out how fast we're going well 
come to think of it, those were back in the days we weren't wearing no fucking seatbelts. Nobody wore seatbelts. And I'm just like a 10-year-old kid, you know, 9, 10 years old. I crawl across the seat and I look at this at the speedometer and I'm going, oh, wow. Is that how fast airplanes go? <laughs> we were doing about 140. That's it? Oh, he had more to go. It was still going. It was climbing when he told me to get over here and look. <laughs> and I just got back in my seat and he kept his foot in it. His bitch just kept climbing and climbing. If you sat there and relaxed, your head went right back to that headrest. <laughs> Yeah, it's, that car had so much fucking ass kicking power to it. The best thing was what I always liked was that that red lever he had on the dashboard. There you go. All right. The red lever on his dashboard. He pulled that lever. All of a sudden, that car went from sounding like a brand new car off the lot to sounding like a goddamn track dragster. Straight pipes. The minute he pulled that lever on that dash, he's running straight pipes on it. And boy, that was a bitch of a squad car, man. And when he died, they were going to shut down the police department in our town after he passed away. They said, we can't replace him. We don't know how, how we'll ever replace him. And they said we can get a contract with the neighboring town to police our town. So they decided to do that. Well, the neighboring town said they'd agree to the contract, but they want his squad car. So they had to buy the squad car from us. And that squad car was used in many parades and shown off at city events and shit. And then it ended up stored away in a garage in Mound, Minnesota for ages. Just sat there. Um, I don't even know where the squad is anymore, if they even kept it. But that would have been a sweet squad to restore and then domestic license it, get you had to pull the siren off of it and make the reds on it. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. And that was the first squad car he ever had in his whole career that had a bar of lights instead of a big cherry on it. Yeah, all of his other squads had the big cherries on them. I remember as a four-year-old kid when my sister got her foot ran over by my dad in his 19, 1956 Buick squad car with big ass cherry on that car, big ass cherry on the roof of that car. 56 Buick, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. God, that's hard to believe. But our driveway had this retaining wall, and when all of us kids are sitting on the retaining wall, there's about eight of us neighbor kids who are over there, too. And here comes my dad pulling in with the squad car and all the kids are running up to the car. My sister runs up in front of the front tire and her foot's right in line to get run. And sure as shit, he run right over her foot. And the old man gets out and she starts yelling, you ran over my foot. He goes, no, you tried tripping my squad car. <laughs> you tried to trip my squad car. Don't try to blame me, you know. Um, yeah, take a picture quick. Yeah, it's not often you see me with just water. Careful with that, you know. They say two tablespoons can drown you. I know. It might be too much for you. It might be too much. You might drown, man. Come on, I can't wait for my cans to show up. It's come true. Uh -huh. they, they should be. They should. They should be here in about ten minutes, or a little under ten minutes. The uh, yeah, I think we're gonna have to wrap her up, guys. Yes. Yeah, I, 
I, I just yeah. can't adjust enough anymore. You keep you up so long. <laughs> it may keep you from eating so long. Well, that's the thing. Is now I go and figure out what I'm going to eat, get it all together, bring it in. One thing you guys can't do is I just crawl up in that bed, slide that dinner in front of me, jack the back of that bed, tray, <laughs> put my feet up, eat my dinner right there, mm -hmm. watch, watch my TV, and, and then so, after bring dinner I'll take, a, I'll take a late even late night nap. Just push the table away. Yeah, I'm go sleep. Hit the what button and anyway, it's all on for an hour or two. Be streaming yeah. and just like lay down right here and go sleep during my stream. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about when I have to stream from that bed, though. Yeah. Is when I get bed ridden and I got to stream from the damn thing. Those how are many, awesome. How many stream am I streams are am I gonna sleep through? I don't know. But, <laughs> No. Okay. Holy shit! I had a ten-hour stream last night. Yeah, I don't. I only remember the first hour, but, but I had a ten-hour stream. I there hope everybody had fun. There are some people that actually do sleep streams. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do. yeah. Isn't that nuts? Isn't that stream? nuts? I mean, I'm just waiting for. A, I'm just waiting for a girl to like roll over the wrong way and not realize it. You know. You're not afraid that you're not going to talk in your sleep or fart or something you know, in your sleep? Yeah, I, I, those people are goofy. <laughs> they're, they're goofy. I, I watched this one, this gal. She's constantly streaming like, herself, and sleeping. Yeah. And I mean, it goes all night. Mm -hmm. and Intentionally go to sleep in your stream? Yeah. yeah. But her, boyfriend, her boyfriend kept telling her to quit doing that shit. It's so <laughs> stupid. It's so stupid. Everybody sees you sleep and flip flopping around, and, and then you get up. Then you get up, chatting around and shit. And everybody knows you went to the can because they hear it flush, and you, you come think, back and you crawl some back. People, and you some sack. people do it for the watch hours, though. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah. And so he thought he'll fix her. So in the middle of the freaking night, he sneaks in there. She's sound asleep and it's filming and you can see him. He sneaks in there and he grabs her, lets out a yell. Holy shit. Like a cat, <laughs> like a cat on acid, man. She comes <laughs> swinging on him. He is swinging like mad and she damn near crawled the fucking wall. And he goes, There, now your audience had something to watch. <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> yes. Finally, something dramatic happened on him. You know, I figure you, if you're doing sleep streams, you just don't want the drama. <laughs> right. But, you know, people will chat and there'll still be drama. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I did. I think it was this gal that, that she had to, ch after her husband did that scare thing, she disabled her chat and her views dropped by 75%. And and so she quit doing them, but doctor. But why would why somebody <laughs> want to watch that kind of chip if they can't chat? You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, finally, Doctor Smith. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, so somebody says I, that too. I try to go back you know now and then try to figure out who I'm up to, but I'm not. I have somebody, a somebody says this guy's having a heart attack. Does anybody know a doctor? Well I know one, but <laughs> I, I've known him for years, but I don't know how the fuck to get a hold of him because <laughs> don't know yeah. if he'd actually get there in time. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> he'd, pro he'd probably say, oh, I'll come and help. And then two or three years from now, I'd go, oh, shit, that's right. I got to run down there and help that guy. <laughs> uh, no, he's in the ground out at the cemetery. He didn't quite make it. <laughs> 67 days on Twitch. 
won't be I, enough. <laughs> do you mean 24 hours a day they're streaming? Yeah. What? The, I've seen guys do, you know, I, I think the longest one that I just well, kind of tabs on. 78 hours or something like that. People actually uh -huh. go and check around with each other and stuff while people are sleeping. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I've seen people do like a, a 24 or a 36 hour straight stream yard stream, but it was more or less because they were all, you know, partying and trying to like <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. You know, I've I've done a lot of eights and tens, you know, but twenty seven or twenty four twenty twenty four seven, and the followers pay to extend the time. Oh, okay. So basically, if you want it to keep going, pay them, and they'll keep it going. I get it. I get it. So they're paying them to keep it running 24-7. Yeah. player going in for get something to eat or something. Yeah. The, um, what the fuck was that movie where they're keeping an eye on that guy? They got him in a dome. Cheers, doctor. Yeah, my new record player. I can play all my 78s now. Yep, okay. that's awesome. I got so many 78s I want to play too. <laughs> like, yeah, me devil. The Truman <laughs> Show. You're right. Cheers, Bolton. Let me sober. Let me eat and sober. Let me open it up. Get, get that picture, doctor. Water. <laughs> yeah, the Truman Show. That's what some of these goofballs are doing. This guy that me devil talking about. That's like the Truman no, Show. Doctor, really bad. I really, really, I'm a doctor, really, really bad. The. Sit on his back. Can you imagine that shit? Uh -huh. I mean. Oh, yeah. Boy, take it up a notch and you take the camera with you in the oh, can. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, take it up a notch, like, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I said this about. <laughs> Two and a half hours ago, but this time I'm not saying, well, yes, yes. we'll I go it. on for a bit. I think we need to wrap it up, guys. I'm, I'm uh, just waiting for you to dance with the little girl. That's it, that that gal in the fur coat. Boys. Good night, everybody. The, Cheers. As long as, as long as this gal out on the porch doesn't get rabies, I'll keep dancing with her. So, you'll you'll hey, keep her around for a while. Lo love you all. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out. It's been a great afternoon, evening, and now we're in the night. Uh, so yeah. it's been pretty awesome, six and a half hours. And I'll be back next Sunday at 2 o'clock p.m. Um, Central Time. Live from the Style Channel. Good night, everybody.